you very much, Dash. Hello, cats and kittens. I'm Riving to Vision the Third, and alongside Lion Tamer, Sam Kobe Hartman Kensler. That's just a hobby, though, Riv. Today's all business. Let's cast some League of Legends. I'm ready. Do you want to introduce <laughs> the game? Yeah, it's going to be Cloud9 versus Enemy Esports for our first matchup. Got it. Winning this match would be a huge fall for teams trying to now reach seventh place in the grand scheme of things, while a loss would almost certainly close the window and mean a trip to the Spring Promotion Tournament. Yeah, I mean, Enemy, though, they've lost six of their last seven games, only getting a win against the last place team, TDK. And their schedule only gets tougher, so this is a must-win situation for those guys. Yep, and for Cloud9, reaching seventh place would mean they could cash in on those championship points, 70 of them from the spring split for a possible run through the gauntlet and a shot at Worlds, which is, which is what they are really hoping for now. Yeah, they would love to get back to Worlds, but it's definitely a long shot for them. Yeah. Last week, we saw when Cloud9 Cloud9 took down Team Dignitas, though, that was the fastest game of the entire split. So they still can execute. If Cloud9 are able to get that early lead, they can close. That's right. And in the struggle between individual skill and strong team coordination, High says teamwork will win every time. I think the team with the better strategy and game plan wins game. Even if those five players are on paper technically worse than the other people, they still win the game, and that's what matters, right? So I think people just care too much about stats and, like, the hype for a player, and it's just that, that that doesn't matter at all. It just matters how well as a team you play. Well, Cloud9 has shown a bit of that as well, not having really the communication that they needed for a few games. Brought that back with High in the Jungle, and were able to come up with a pretty big win recently. So. Yeah, and this one is going to be a crucial game for both teams. Yeah, it will. Starting on, or let's check out the starting lineups, I should say. Starting on the blue side, it is going to be Cloud9. That's Balls in the top lane. High still in the jungle for the team. Incarnation in mid. Sneaky Daddy Carry. Lemonation at support. And today, Bubba Duck stepping in as coach from the Tempest team. Yep, and on the red side, it's enemy esports. Up top is Flares in the jungle. Trashy. Mid in Ox. AD Carry. Otter. Support. Body drop and on stage uh, is Fragnatic. Now, uh, both these teams have brought in new coaches for yeah. this week. Fragnatic, he is a solo queue, high ELO solo queue guy, he's played a bunch of roles, uh, bounced around the challenge you've seen for a while, so he's going to be helping out Enemy. And then, as you said, Bubba Dub, uh, he's not replacing Char Charlie's not benched. He Charlie's just going to be working more with right. Cloud9 Tempest, their challenger team. Yep, and in, in the end of the champion select as well, or I should say last say, usually goes to Lemon Nation in the first place. So a new right. mindset, and Cloud9's actually been kind of moving towards that, a mindset of some new in the jungle, a mindset of someone new now on stage. Yeah, they have gone back to the Lemon Nation notebook. Yep. He, uh, he does have the final say once again. Yep. All right, so right off the bat, Interesting bands here because uh, this is now uh, 513, the patch yeah, that we're on. We have moved on. It, and I would say Nidalee is by far the <laughs> best jungler in the game on this patch. Uh, probably going to be repeating that story for the rest of the day, but she just got a huge buff with the stats added to Runeglaive, and yeah. Rek'Sai was taken down. In this patch, there's a nerf that a lot of people haven't even talked about that much. Uh, the range on her knockup was taken down significantly mm -hmm. uh, by 40 range, and it will really hamper her ability to uh, really have big impact in team fights because it reduces the area that she can knock up multiple people. I think we see where Cloud9 focuses their priority as well off of these bands right away. Three bands to the jungle immediately. I talked about strategy. He's new to the jungle, doesn't have a very deep champion <laughs> pool, uh, so he's going to take off the top three. You know, regardless of buffs or nerfs to the top tier of junglers, they're going to get everybody off of the table and then not first pick a jungler either. So, nope. I just wanted to make sure Trashy does not have a. Uh, Wow, highest felt yes, highest list. seem to feel comfortable on things that aren't really being played all across the board. That exactly. Rengar last week, so you why not? You don't have not? to pick, first pick that. Yeah. Nobody's going to steal Rengar <laughs> away from you in North America. That Kalista, however, not really making it through the picks and bans for quite some time, being banned by either team. Now going to make it through. Yeah. So um, you can uh, produce some results with it. Yeah, usually we also see Sivir, very, very high priority. That's great for point. fighting comps, great for grouping up, catching people in uh, rotations. It's definitely something that would be a great tool against Cloud9 because they like to play the map so much. They like to, uh, you know, call for split pushing and objective trading so often yep. that if you have a speed boost in Sivir and you try and cut them off, uh, brings a lot of counterplay to Cloud9 style. Alistar, of course, very high priority still as well. Number one tank support. Yeah. 
Shen's, so, Shen's coming up, though. Wolf making some ridiculous plays in the SKT coup game on that Alistar, and you can usually do that. <laughs> a lot of confidence if you get a few good plays in the early game. You just keep going. You're a mad cow. We'll see if Body Drop can get to that point. Usually a pretty calm bottom lane from enemy to start things off for them. Maokai coming in to make sure, as you said, got a bit of a tank line here. Cloud9 making sure they waste their time. Or not waste their time, use their time to give enemy a hard time when they go to pick their champions. Yeah, this is something that we've pointed out for years, actually, with Cloud9 and Champ Select, is their insta lock-in and their double lock-in, so they give you, you know, less time in right. Champion Select to, to react to what they're choosing. Let's see here, discussion still going on for the rest of the team. The front line is pretty much all they're looking at right now. It doesn't give away too much from enemy. Uh, enemy already do have very good team fighting, though. It's going to answer some front line with uh, front line here. Braum support. That's been a Lemonation favorite. Uh, they also get that Song of Ice and Fire combination. <laughs> Uh, they can uh, lay down on you. Now, that actually was a little bit nerfed on this patch because you cannot no longer stack slows. It's just the strongest slow takes priority. Right. And the whatever your whatever additional slows that are you know, of lower value are just ignored now. Still makes it pretty good. That Rylai's build as well, kind of favoring him. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. So the, Rylai's are uh, hunting guys yeah. to Leandries. Yeah, there you go. Say. The Leandries, huge buff for Rumble. <laughs> right. Um, the Rylai's that people are talking about, I don't see it actually mm -hmm. right. working with Rumble because because the thing that we just went over, the slows not stacking anymore. Yeah. Two of his three damaging abilities already have slows that are almost forty <laughs> percent or this you know forty percent. So this is very true. Rylai's on Rumble, meh. All that aside, Cloud, Na Cloud Nation, Cloud9 has grabbed themselves a team now that is comfortable in what they've had in the past. Balls gets that rumble, unfortunately, three losses in his last plays after being undefeated in professional <laughs> yeah. play. So that could still be shaky. Going back to things they know, though, seems to be the key for them here in this champion select. Yeah. Looking on the side of enemy, Otter on that Corky, things we have seen before, can produce a safe laning uh, phase and then get out to the fight with the team. But we'll see how trash he can do on Evelyn here. Yeah, I think the one thing is clear for all Rumble players now is you definitely are going to rush your haunted guys. And build the Andrews. Get a Dargon. So this is something um, that's very, very easy to play in the jungle, Shivana. She's all about power farming, smashing through neutral monsters. Um, he can either go Devour or Cinder Hulk. I actually still really like Cinder Hulk Shivana coming from the jungle. It's just like a top lane Shivana, uh, because you can get almost as much money out of the jungle as you can in the top lane with her because her clear is so ridiculously good with burnout. Um, now, Hai has been favoring the Devour Shivana in his solo queue and in his recent practice. So this is probably a Devour Shivana, uh, but I actually do uh, think that Cinder Hulk Shivana is extremely powerful too. We'll see which one he chooses. Uh, going against Evelyn here, he shouldn't have a problem if Shivana ever runs into Evelyn or, uh, you know, counter ganks her, he'll easily be able to chase her off. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, Surprise. once again, when you run a jungler like Shivana, the thing you're lacking is crowd control. Hot damn! Oh, we're gonna get the power jungler! <laughs> yes! <laughs> okay, so, 513. It's happening. Devour. The moons a, have a line. A ton of junglers have talked about how they don't like hard farming. They're not a fan of Devour jungle. If there's a region for Devour to shine in, though, it is North America because of the well, slower game did. pace. Right? Ah, oh, shoot. All right, you guy. I got super excited. It's okay. okay. Anyways, it's That's a, okay. a Yeemid. You, you, we hear the passion. <laughs> the passion is there. Right. All right, we may <laughs> still get one Devour. Uh, thank you for rating me back in. Uh, I forgot about the Evelyn pick. They already have that one locked. Uh, so it's going to be the Master Yi Faker style here for Inox. We'll see if he can replicate. Wow. So Inox, you know, it's too, just hearkening back to his birthday game, he was very, very, very nervous. Just on a birthday game because he had lost recently. This is a lot of pressure to be bringing out Yi here in the mid lane, I feel, that he would take upon himself. But it seems like he's going to put that to the wayside and do what he can here to make some plays from the mid lane. Enox bringing out Master Yi. Enemy needs all the wins they can get here at the end of the split. Four and 10, yeah. tied with Cloud9 in this team. Well, remember the thing I was just talking about with Shivana. The thing that you sacrifice when you run jungle Shivana, you know, she's best clear speed, mm -hmm. you know, really good scaling. She has no CC. Master Yi loves teams with no CC. He loves playing against those Got types him. of teams. To try and get pick up. So take a minute now and let us know who you think has the inside track for this one. Tweet at, at LOL Esports with either the hashtag C9 win or the hashtag NME win. We're gonna, it's good, good play here coming in 
to week eight. Interesting champion picks as we make our way to 513. And we are gonna be on to the rift. Let's see what C9 has for enemy and enemy for C9. All right, yeah, let's take a look here. <sighs> Opening should be fairly safe for them. Everybody just gonna fan out and it looks like there will be defensive positioning. Welcome to Summoner's Rift. Ah, yes. Now, the thing that Hai was talking about in his uh, little video feature about, you know, strategy always coming out on top, doesn't matter about individual players, that only works to a point, mm -hmm. right? I mean, there's always a break point where if they're that much better as individual players, you can just crush an enemy team no matter how good their strategy is. So right now, though, as you said, standard opening for everybody. Yeah. Even have a little baby going down in the bush. Uh, let's see if uh, Maokai sets up a sapling start for Yi. Because you can get a sapling explosion and one alpha strike to grab. Easy kill on uh, the raptor babies for an experience advantage. Cold lead in the jungle. It's the other uh, bonus of Shivana. Twin Bite not only is an auto attack reset, but it counts for two hits itself. Yep. Instant ward clears. Minions have spawned. And High's on the board with CS already. Huge CS lead for Shivana. Yeah. Pretty strong clip right there he's going at. Now, uh, it does put the onus of, you know, game changing plays and early ganks here on Trashy. When you're facing Shivana, uh, you do feel a bit of pressure to try and affect the lanes because you know that she will have. Uh, such a, a small effect if she does right. visit, you know, just a speed boost to try and get her up there for a couple auto attacks. And a, apparently a big effect for the team fight, Ty taking exhaust as well with his ignite. Yeah. In the jungle there. Be nice for uh, Inox slowing him down when the fight's coming. That's, uh, that's personal choice. Yeah. Um, you can still run Shivana, you know, with Flash just like normal junglers. Uh, it also allows her for more aggressive counter jungling even than normal. Yeah, it's true. Uh, because she is really strong in counter jungling, and having Flash means that if you do get caught out, you'll have an escape. But Ty going for the combat effectiveness. Uh, don't worry, everybody. That's just the, the normal duo jungling now. <laughs> Top laner. Tanks all the damage so that the jungler Love gets it. to save their health potions since top laner will be going back to base anyway. Uh, and we did have the lane swap call, by the way, uh, during that entire time. Yeah. We were talking about junglers. Um, Got the 2v2 matchup in the top lane. Maokai not doing too bad against Rumble and the uh, other way around, so they should just be on an island for now, farming up until we get that first objective fight towards Dragon. High is, however, into the jungle here. Could get Trashy on the backside of his path. Oh, Trashy runs away. He has no idea. He just saved himself from going down. Yeah, I don't know. I, I didn't quite see how quickly they changed the vision there, but I'm pretty sure Trashy did see High moving into that bush uh, just because he leveled up W instantly and used W for speed boost to run away. True. Uh, True. So I think he might have uh, you know, maybe caught scent up high. But speaking of that counter jungling, he's off to it early here on Shivana. She can bully anybody out uh, in one versus one, just a heads up duel. Uh, but you do always have to worry about collapsing from the lanes. And that's the biggest mm -hmm. issue here. Cloud9's top lane, the duo lane, shoved in early. They have control of the top lane. They can collapse very easily. Incarnation as well on Ari, already shoved in Inox. Yeah. So there was not going to be any help from either of the lanes for Trashy. And he just had to pull out give up his red, and he's actually trying to answer here, but he's going to come up empty-handed. Most of this quadrant of jungle has already been cleared out, and he's going to yeah. have to grab Krugs if he gets anything for his time spent down here. Well, they just warded towards the top. They could actually put uh -oh. damage, maybe blow a flash on the balls. Yeah, talk about early lane presence here. There's the twisted advance. Smash was actually pretty quick there. Balls knows the gank is going to come in. He is forced to flash towards the end of the turret there. But has the pressure on the bottom from the jungler. What can Cloud9 do to work with this? Yeah, he was thinking about trying to save his flash and just soak the damage, but started building up too yeah. much there. Had to blow it in the end. Not too big of a deal because uh, the wave is already pushed up towards his turret and he'll be able to CS at it. Yeah. And our guy point. with a bunch of AoE always constantly shoving the wave as well, so. Not too big a deal for Balls, who, by the way, did start with the Amp Tome just to try and rush into the haunting guys and. Uh, Leandre's build even yeah. quicker. I like that start a lot. Makes you feel pretty powerful in lane. Sometimes turn around those gank situations. Not that one, though. 
A good hit by enemy, blows the flash in the bot lane, they'll keep a timer on that. Looking back at mids, double Dorans for both sides on their first back. So they know they're gonna be dealing a bit of damage to each other while hanging out in that lane for some time. Yeah, Inox also has picked up these boots. I do like the early boot pickup against Ari because she's so heavily skill shot reliant. You can avoid quite a yeah. lot of damage with just movement speed if Inox is able to dodge. Oh, help us drag. Fancy move. Oh, the dance from Incarnate. Uh, that's actually the key sign of a good E player. Uh, what differentiates the meh solo Q Yees from the actual, uh-oh. As you say. Uh, the ability to use count, uh, Alpha Strike to dodge abilities. That is the main thing. The secondary the thing. the right ability. Exactly. The secondary thing that I look for are auto attack resets using your meditate. Um, that also can be a very clutch move that isn't used uh, fairly often, but uh, in some situations can come out ahead. Also, you can use your Alpha Strike to reset tower aggro. He is a fairly snowball champion, though, especially for that mid lane. They want to get him to his first Ooh. item as quickly as possible. Body drop a little too close. Walked in front of the minions. Lemonation was setting up rush control for some time there. Sneaky, very low, able to flash from the teleport. That will actually be for nothing. And bottom lane pressure going to balls here. Let's see if players can make anything happen. It makes his way back down the fight in the mid lane. Inox. Very low, trashy, for hovering e. on the side. He's got to know this is a trick by now. Nobody would stay there like that, but High was coming in as well. The double bait. And now they can bully him. He's even oh, got oh, the flash from Incarnation! The, or the orb comes back, it misses. Able to pick up the kill from a Foxfire. High is going to go down eventually. Incarnation stays alive as Flares does not fully come down. He stays in the tri brush. They're still going for top lane. Pops the Ventral Maelstrom and they take down Sneaky. Now the teleport from Balls. Oh. What an equalizer across the entire team in the tri choke point. They're going to get Otter too here if they can hit the Harpoon. Overheating by Balls. He's going to need that to keep Incarnation going. Incarnation could come up too. There's a the rotation as you say it. Incarnation starts to move. Ball's very low. A few more auto attacks. Lemonation doing what he can to keep him there. Incarnation now set to pick up a few kills for himself. Lemonation a few last hits. This one is going the long haul. Flares under the turret. A charm over. It doesn't hit from Incarnation. No assist. The kill goes over to Balls. What a fight across the board. A bloodbath rib. Everybody going down in the top lane. And because they were able to get that kill early and gain control of mid lane, Cloud9 do not come out behind. They were in danger of losing that skirmish, coming out behind in kills, but because of the mid lane power there, Incarnation able to come up, head off their escape, and grab the extra kill for Cloud9 in the end. So they do come out with a cold lead at the eight minute mark here. Whew, action packed so yeah. far. <laughs> Could say so. Almost and on minute. top of it, it, we will get that devour. So first say to devour. Yeah. Um, in the North American LCS in the first game that it's available. High gonna pick that one up on Shivana. And try to stack his way up. All right. Well, bot lane antics now. It looks like we're gonna have Inox coming down, but they stop, head back up towards mid lane. Just pressure on Dragon for now. Make sure that does not go easily over to either team. Now that the bot lanes, or I should say the dual lanes have switched the bot. All right, let's take another. Yeah. This is the beginning of it. So Sneaky looks like an easy target. They s kill him very quickly. Balls, his teleport was not used in the last Jeez. Uh, skirmish right. up top because it was on cooldown for him using it to try to get back to lane. So it was back up here. And the equalizer was a... Uh, I don't know what that pink ward was, actually. I think that was a misclick there for the pink ward. So Cloud9 get an extra 100 gold worth out of this skirmish, but uh, you know, as we said, in our, or, uh, Incarnation Wizard will come up and close them out. The players had nowhere to go, so yeah. I'm just gonna give the kill over two balls instead. Seeing uh, situations happen, like double lift attack wards, I'm always up for throwing down a ward okay. type fight like that. If it's a really, really close war, uh, yeah. fight like that, I mean, there's a chance. Um, I would be down with sacrificing a trinket ward or yeah, maybe a green the pink, ward. You're right, yeah. <laughs> I just, I'm very stingy with my pink wards. <laughs> uh, but yeah, in the end here, Cloud9 come out with the early game lead, 1,000 gold. Um, and while we're talking about, you know, Zeta Devourer yeah. and Devourer Junglers, new on this patch, Little uh, I really do want to emphasize the buffs in Rune Slave. Because I was very outspoken about, you know, not being very happy with how efficient it was when it was first released. But these buffs are very, very big for 10 AP as well as increasing the basic, basically the sheen and power.
part of the item. Mm -hmm. um, gives you a lot more burst damage and a lot more value out of the item. So Evelyn actually got a giant buff in this patch as well. Um, and she's she's got a very, very strong early game presence. So far, though, um, because of all the laner interactions, mm -hmm. the uh, advantage has gone to Cloud9. But there's the Rune Grave completion uh, from Trashy. In fact, we like now that it's been buffed. We value it higher than Warrior now. Look how far up Incarnation is playing. This not usual play for him. Feeling very safe, kind of knowing, he's, as you said, hardly any crowd control to come through on this team. Easy escape on Ari. Playing this one much more aggressive than usual, keeping in the face of Inox and doing as much damage as he can there. Missing a quick charm, but has a much bigger advantage on the turret damage there. <laughs> People love Shivana Insta Ward clears. <laughs> He doesn't have the cooldown on it. Oh, okay, he'll just do it. It's a triple kill! <laughs> All right. Oh, boy. The hat trick and wards can cost Lemonation his life. Oh, the Glacial Fisher goes back. Just the end actually hits Alistar. Flash over from Trashy. Good alt for Flash there. It'll work out in the end. They're going to get some aggro onto the Dragon area now. A little overheat here by Balls. Doesn't look like he's winning this one straight up. On the side for Flares, there's the Rumble ultimate going down. Flares very low, is going to try to get through the minions. Grapevine can't do it. Goes down right in the middle of the pack. A turret going down in the mid lane as well. This is going to create forward wards and more pressure for Cloud9. Yeah. Flares not happy about uh, the teleport from Balls that got him a kill and two assists to get him to this really early haunting guy's Merc Tread point. And Ball's definitely taking advantage here. I think he left alone oh. under the turret, though. Goes down very quickly. High's looking to collapse. There's Balls once again. No oh. ultimate, though. He is everywhere right now. You can see High just coming down from the river. A little bit of a fight between Incarnation and Inox, making sure Inox can't come all the way down. He's doing his own thing in a 1v1. Mission Impossible oh, here. He cleansed oh, off. he goes for the flash. That's going to be the ultimate as well. Islander goes down, and it's going to give Inox enough time to get away. Incarnation blows the Spirit Rush. The bottom fight had also broken apart once the communication was there that the mid laners could not make it. I guess Incarnation didn't have his charm back up when he went for that flash. It seemed it, yeah. Um, but yeah, Inox is still able to escape there. On the Master Yi Alpha Strike, two minions. Uh, so much action in this game, River got sidetracked. Oh yeah, I was gonna start <laughs> talking about Seda Devourer with that scuttle crap because that was big. Were. When they when they forced uh, they took that support fight and they forced body drop back into the jungle and Trashy had to flash over this little wall. Mm -hmm. High claiming that scuttle crab is huge for him. Two stacks uh, from it on the Seda uh, or towards his Seda Devourer. Is that nine? It's actually really important for Shivana to be able to transform it. Some champions, yeah. not quite as much. All right, well, more action. Flair's going to get stunned up with the Braum passive. After this, got a Satan question. Remind me. We'll hit it. Flair's looks like he could be going down. He just got oh, back to lane. His teleport's down from just coming back, and now he's back in the ground. Very unfortunate situation as he wants to get big for the team. As I was talking about Satan, looking at, you know, kind of any champion. What's a good average that we should see Sated become, a, or that become a Sated Devourer? Well, it all depends on Dragon's Rib. Enemy looking to take <laughs> the first Dragon off the field right now. Rumble Ultimate, beautiful once again. Trashy almost dies to it. Oh, he is gonna die. The Dragon protecting his gold. High goes in. Looks like he's gonna go down very fast. A little overzealous in this fight from Cloud9. Maybe they thought they were a bit too powerful that a lot of that armor, or damage rather, Mitigated by Body Drop's ultimate to stay in the fight. They come up big. They were able to stop the Dragon, yep. plus Sneaky and Lemonation were able to shove all the way through the turret up to the secondary here. So Cloud9 really keeping up that pressure. And the ultimate there from Ball is able to ensure them a kill and stop the Dragon. Keeping that Dragon up on the field, that is the biggest oh, part. Man. You know, Skeletal Crabs give you a two, but Dragon's going to give you five Ooh. towards your completion. And High is going all in on the damage build for Shivana. Now, <laughs> Rushing into Blade of the Rune King straight after Devourer leaves you extremely squishy for the early game. Some people will put one tank item in between the completion of those two, mm -hmm. uh, just to build up some health for the mid game for the skirmishes. Um, but he's going to go for full power. It also means that your clear is insanely fast. He can solo Dragon really easily, if just given a few seconds window as well but it does leave him vulnerable in team fights. So he's gonna have to play a little bit differently because uh, he's a more squishy Shivana than you're used to. Once again, they'll return to that crab. 
Uh, so the thing, the best thing, best two users of Devour are Kale and Shivana because they have so much on hit damage. Almost Kale's whole kit is on hit damage. So that's obviously why she's number one. But Shivana, very close behind because of the buff where her burnout yep. applies on hit as well. And then we'll be able to secure the dragon in the end. So sacrificing those lives earlier does pay off for Cloud9 and High. There, something that definitely changed when High came on the team and the communication started to get better is their risk reward and how much that paid off. Doing things like that and not losing Dragon, not losing more turrets, they will they were able to gain things off of dying. And that's the strategy part, I guess, right? You have yeah. a strategy, you're gonna come through. Plus being able to um, react very fluidly during the game. Uh, they were able to call uh, the all-in after seeing how effective the Rumble Ultimate was. Initially, the Rumble Ultimate just thrown to get them off Dragon, yeah. but taking down Trashy to 200 HP uh, spurred high to commit fully to it. <laughs> and you know, then a little the exchange, drum. they did come out down in kills, but we're able to make sure. Yeah, Dragon overall, up 3K, 3.3. Look at the amount of wards that they committed to it. Double upgraded yellow trinkets uh, on top of the Lemon Nation uh, sites, though, means that that blue quadrant was just lit up. I'm gonna chase Trashy off again. Let's see if Trashy can hang around on Evelyn and actually smite steal this away. Oh, he doesn't have smite, so actually, we're gonna try and chase him off. He didn't like that too much. Yeah, as we said, <laughs> really squishy on the full damage Shivana, so he's gonna okay. not hesitate to pop his ult, get out of there. Good call from High to abandon the Scuttler. Falls is going to be huge for this team. He's almost all ready to the Leandri's completion. Right now, though, he's the target. This could be the play for them. Trashy. Oh, Inox, a little too aggressive there. Pushing him off for Trashy to get in. Could not close that gap. His ultimate down here for Master E, so the kill on Balls very unlikely under this turret. Yeah. Uh, because now they can actually slow Inox. There's the mini right. wave down. Balls is actually anyway. looking for a lot of turret damage right away. Oh, they're, they're going to get the teleport okay. in the last minute to keep it alive. Trashy's still the tank, though. Somebody could definitely come up to get a kill on this one, but they get each other in and out nicely. Too much of a gap on the map, and Cloud9 is serving the same thing on the bot lane. Yeah, they were able to bring the teleport to the kill as well. So the only reason they're able to grab that is because that comes in. It's able to save the minion that the turret mm -hmm. was on. So they weren't. They didn't have to take turret hits a lot earlier. However, in exchange, they have to give up that bottom turret plus a lot of damage on this one, and the teleport cooldown for players will be known to Cloud9. So we'll see if Balls can make a teleport play for himself. Seven to seven here, but Cloud9 ahead on gold, two turrets up, and of course they have the dragon timer as well. They're working with what they already have. Moving those wards a little bit deeper in that side of the jungle already from having it from Dragon. Why not stay in the area you have the advantage? Picking up a thousand more gold at least in their favor here. That kill score is still tied though, and you can expect it to go much higher once these teams start packing in to a turret dive. 31 to 26,000 right now, 3 to 1 in turrets. Cloud9, their early game is much better now. See if they can continue to the late game where they were still having troubles throughout the season. Yeah, remember, you know, it was last week where they got the early lead and they were able to power it all the way through for yeah. our quickest victory of the North American LCS, the split. Um, High is definitely on track to become uh, extremely powerful. He's going to have that sub 20 minute devour transformation, which is the goal. That's when you know you're doing really well. Uh, 20 minutes is like pretty much average um, since they did get that one dragon. He can't hit that mark. There he goes. Transformation complete. 19 minutes in. Very quick pace for him. Uh, and it's at the same time he completes his Blade of the Rune King, which is also on hit. Now, as we said, though, she's still fairly squishy. He'll transition in a full tank build after this now, uh, so he can stay in the fight and actually get auto attacks off. The biggest weakness that Shivana has is uh, when she's kited, if the other team has enough CC to control her. She is just, uh, she does just have that one jump with her ultimate. Mm -hmm. Heading top right now though, and they want to try and kill Inox. That's gonna be fairly difficult because, you know, combined with Cleanse and his ultimate, it's multiple ways to shrug off slows. Right. Flashes up as well, so I don't think he's gonna be moving up. Maybe High was just pushing up for a counter gank and they expected Evelyn up there. Now they see Evelyn down bottom though, and they teleport to answer. 
Oh, teleport to the ghost. I like it for Balls, trying to get in sneakily, but he is the first focus oh, here. Crap. He does actually have Merc Treads along with his Leandries. The crowd control not keeping Balls down for that long. Able to quickly move, and big kills coming up from Sneaky now with the extra damage. Incarnation onto Otter. Wits the rush, misses the, or the missile coming out of Otter there. The dodge is coming in left and right, gets the heal on, he's not gonna go down. One last hit from a Foxfire and an auto attack, finally gets the shutdown. As you can see on Otter, the sword shoved into the ground there between the images. Incarnation has given Cloud9 so much control of the mid lane this game. The Master Yi has been a target early on and a vulnerability for the enemy squad. The mid lane, they haven't had control all game of it. Incarnation's done a good job. Uh, keeping that up, they've also got plenty of wards to replace the turret that they took there. And they started up Baron here. Inox going to try and answer, though. Can he make a hero play? Negative. No chance. Unfortunately, he cannot get into time. That's huge for Cloud9. Starting to put their foot down. Let's see how they use the super mini waves now to keep pressuring forward. Dragon's going to be in 19. Let's take a look at this again. All right, so remember all the while this is happening as well, High is just shoving in up top, so they're gaining control of the top uh, part of the map as well. Nice little T here from the Braum and Rumble ultimates. Trashy doesn't get to do anything in these team fights. Because of the effectiveness of these Rumble ultimates, Trashy's been chunked out so early, he doesn't add any damage, and it's basically a mismatch here. Sneaky also Ooh. with a nice Callista Spear over the top. See what incarnation. Oh, we missed his little dodging <laughs> of the missile, flashing back in for the kill. But again, the Sated Devourer, oh Tivana with Blade of the Ruin King, annihilates. Oh Baron, boy. As well as Dragon. Winter's Bite actually hits Inox. It forces the fight. High is going to go down very fast. This could be bad for Cloud9. Fate's Call pulls out, pulls out Lemonation. They're back onto Inox. He gets out with a sliver of health. And that's pretty much the story for all of enemies. Cloud9 now has the trifecta on the back line, still delivering damage. Sneaky Incarnation and Lemon staying alive through the fight and able to push off enemy out of Dragon area. Don't know if they can get too much more out of this. Like we said, it was going to get bloody. I don't know if there's going to be enough people standing to keep pushing down turrets after these fights for some time. Thank you, the uh, Incarnation will look to finish the mid one here. They should have the wave. Yeah, they'll get in time, so that'll work for them. Inox does not have home guard, so I think it will go down. Baron buff there. Just one. Nice and easy. Cloud9's going to back off. Now extending that gold lead to just about 8,000. Very nicely done. Yeah, we did see how quickly 9, High can go down if you focus him, though in that last fight. It's just that while they were taking down high, they grouped up and were AoE, so everybody right. was taken low during the time it took to kill high. Just look at any neutral objective is trivial for this champion, though. All right, so they dive in actually on the back nice line at the equalized. same time that they blow them up. And again, as you say, the Leandri's Rush Equalizer is a terror on this patch. Even so, they're able to melt the back line. So front line of enemy, Classic. They're left out there to dry, committed to the fight already, and the backline had to pull out because of the AoE magic damage. That's Leandre's Merc Treads, remember. Still painful. Still painful. So, things looking good for Cloud9. Incarnation 501, 236 CS in that mid lane. Oh, easy pickings here. Got it. All right. Another one. Well, Cloud9 complete control of the bottom side here. Uh, I think the Baron timed out already on everybody who had it, so that may slow down the siege here uh, as they're sieging options. TP. Uh oh. Yeah. Flares using that TP. The rest of Cloud9 is going to know it. High actually. Uh, yeah. oh Incarnation my in a good position to get into this. He dives right into the middle. Flares is able to lock him down. Incarnation may be a bad decision here. The Ignite's on. He's going to stay alive. And body drops going down. Three members now down for enemy as Cloud9 is just able to figure out the fight that much faster and start dropping the members of enemy. They've only lost Lemon Nation. And now they're on the second tier in bot lane. Guys, caution against fighting against Rumble in jungle corridors, but fighting, yeah. fighting against Rumble and Braum, who can lock out any <laughs> pathway through the jungle, very, very difficult. Again, by the time Trashy can get into the team fight, somebody's already dead because yeah. of those two slow, slow fields controlling the zones inside the jungle for Cloud9. That will give them the easy opening to knock down another inhibitor here, and Cloud9 Looking to have back-to-back -back really, really fast games here. Yeah.
the North American LCS. I think that last fight kind of proves what you were saying in Champion Select is that there is not much crowd control on the enemy team. For, uh, for well, Incarnation was, to get out well, like that was crazy. So what I was talking about in Champion Select was that Cloud9 have, have little cloud, uh, cloud control with Shivana. Oh, he doesn't bring yeah, it a lot. Yeah, yeah. Enemy actually has substantial crowd control with Alistar and um, Maokai. I mean, it's a, I'd say it's you know decent average Good amount. Good enough. Yeah. Not enough to kill in credit. I always value Alistar as enough crowd control for an entire team, <laughs> <laughs> just because how effective multi-man knockup combos can be. You know, you can fall that way. Yeah, and just an advance is enough to get things started for players if they were ahead. But they are sadly not ahead and unable to make this catch work. Yeah, so this, uh, they were down. Oh, so they used everything right there. Body drop also just uh, smashed into the ground. So there was no pulverize available for Alistar in this fight. He was just auto attacking the whole time. Trashy trying to run across Ooh. the low fields there. Thank you, Dangerous really much done. And Inox jumping, or uh, Incarnation. Jumping in and out of the fight uh, effectively on Ari. 7 0 3 for Incarnation. Also trying to utilize one of the new or the one of the changed items here and get that AoE slow 40% with the right yeah. eyes working there for Ari for even more slow zones. What will Cloud9 decide to do next? Anything is an option at this point. Just about a minute and 20 seconds on both Dragon and Baron. Consider that to be theirs. Enemy might just have to give these up with the damage. These balls himself can put out these choke points. Maybe a fight at the inhibitor turrets would be the best thing. It's still going to be difficult. One's already down. You can expect that split push coming in from C9 here as they are starting to deny all the vision in enemy's jungle. It's what Cloud9 has needed here at the end of the split. A few changes here and there. A lot of teams are actually making the changes. It's getting tighter and tighter and only four more games to go. It seems that Cloud9 is correcting the right thing so far. Definitely much better performances in the last two games. Yeah. Pi also getting more accustomed to the jungle. More comfortable. Looking for the... Sneak attack here, but well, it's not going to happen. Enemy do not want to face check anything. They do have scrying orb upgraded and available as well. So enemy just going to try and clear waves. So until uh, they get an opening from Cloud9. Yep. Uh, that's an opening for C9 to go in from the side. An equalizer doesn't hit too many. Do they have flares enough to take him down? A lot of slows on slows that can come from Cloud9. Inox trying to go into the fight on a sneaky. He's just not big enough yet throughout the game to take him down. Also, the peel from the rest of the team and Cloud9 are just on point right now. Incarnation, a bit of a <laughs> frown as Trashy walks yeah. away. Cannot take it. Minions will finish it for him, though. The no, he's going to live. He's got 16 HP. Elimination with the Winter's Bite. It. Misses. It's all oh, put oh, the shield up for the movement speed, but he can't get in. Let to hit it. Trashy. An unfortunate situation, but the victory <laughs> still comes on the end of that. It's going to be all right for the Cloud9 fans. 28-20 on the clock. And 20 to 10 in kills, definitely a bloodbath we had here to start off week eight. Cloud9 take down enemy. Back to back victories for Cloud9. Starting to get some wins back for themselves. An enemy knocked down once again. Have to start worrying. The Master Yi not definitely not working out for them. As well as the uh, a little skirmish up top there where Balls got a bunch of early kills and accelerated that build path into the Leandries, enabling him to get a solo kill on Flares. That, that was definitely a rough game for NME. Looking at the damage charts in general, uh, Inox actually did quite a significant less damage than Braum did, by like a thousand. <laughs> So there was, there was no fights that enemy could get themselves into. Credit to the Glacial Fisher and the Equalizer, because that pretty much deleted everybody in the fight. Now, looking forward for these teams, Cloud9 definitely still has some hard games in Common Logic Gaming and Team Solo Mid as well. CLG tomorrow and TSM in Week 9. Enemy, their schedule also does not get any easier. Liquid, TSM, and Dignitas to follow, so. Yeah, and they're four and 10. Or 4 and 11 now. 4 and 11 now, yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah, they're sweating a little bit. 
Cloud9 move up to five and 10. Also, as we said, kind of banking on the championship points, making sure they can get a good spot and run that gauntlet. Yeah, the another big thing here that Cloud9 have shown is incarnation back on an assassin. Yeah, that's uh, true. Something that people were clamoring for when he came over initially. You know, now with the Rylai's buff, he's decided to go without the Ari once again. And as I said, complete control over the mid yeah. lane and the middle of the map here. Something that uh, talked about by Sneaky was kind of the pressure in the mid lane didn't allow Incarnation to feel safe in his ganks. That's why he kind of felt like he'd stay back. He didn't want to be the one to die. They had a plethora of warts, and High was always in Trashy's face. Incarnation, he had so much information that it almost made him push that late. He, he couldn't do anything else, so. And the team is falling in line with that. What happens when they are pressured, though? They like to play. We'll see if it happens here in our next matchup. Let's check out the starting lineups. On the blue side, it's going to be Tim Impulse. That is Impact in the top lane. Rush in the jungle. Xiao Wei Zhao in mid. Apollo at 80 carry. And Adrian at support with Coach Fly. And on the red side, it's TSM. Up top is Dyrus in the jungle. Santorin, mid, Bjergsen, 80 carry, Wild Turtle. Support, Les Boy, Coach Loco Doko. So Impulse themselves had a few kind of back and forth, a bit of a troublesome time where Champion Select wasn't working out for them. We saw in the beginning of the split, they were saying, you know, the break just has not allowed us to keep up our same play, and we don't know what happened. Mm -hmm. I think that by far the most important single champion in this matchup is Nidalee. Yeah. Nidalee is so good right now with the buffs of Runeglaive. She got even better. It is Santorin's main solo queue champion. It is Rush's current main champion now that mm -hmm. Lee Sin is kind of his secondary choice just because of how good she is. Uh, now the second most important champion is that Sivir that you mentioned. And whenever you're playing against Team Impulse, I would suggest denying them that speed boost. Nidalee not finding herself on the ban list early. Rise, though, also extremely powerful here, still from the top. Yeah. Obviously, uh, we went over the changes, you know, to how they were able to reduce the perma root situation, but increase the damage. So, still a very strong late game powerhouse. They don't want impact to go all carry mode all over them. Still could happen because it's that crazy. Sivir does rear her ugly head. Yeah, the there will the be the bands. Gorky has been uh, what Apollo has selected, or Graves besides this. We'll see what kind of composition they put together. Usually, if it can't be around that Sivir, it's completely around something else. They still don't try to go for that crazy comp. Yeah, I mean, uh, Impulse have showed very strong team play with multiple teleport teleports in their right. team comp. Right. Uh, Xiao Xiao has picked up his TF once again, so that is always an option. TSM do have the guaranteed counter pick on red side, though. Um, Alistar going to be the last one. That enables a lot of impulse diving. So three fairly strong bands here for TSM. I think they're daring impulse to take away the Nidalee early. Um, Santorin definitely would be happy to take the champion as well. So maybe they'll get it yeah, for sure. in the backswing on their first round. What are impulse willing to first pick in the 5.13 match here. I think Rush has the control to be able to do it. The Gragas right, is up, and that's what they're going to be left with on TSM. Why not? You don't even have to first pick it now. We'll see what TSM tries to go for now that they do see that Nidalee picked up say, for Rush. I, I mean, it was a bold move here for TSM to leave that up, but I just consider that champion right now, and c combined with the player, with Rush, that is very dangerous. You're getting Super Saiyan. That, yeah, that's dangerous for TSM <laughs> to let that go. Uh, in exchange well, for Corky Shen. Hopefully, Dyrus can be alting the right person that's about to get exploded. Yeah, or Rush. Lust Boy. <laughs> or Lust Boy, you're right. Yeah, we actually have seen him do it a few times recently. Teammate, they had that loss, and the loss against Liquid as well. Actually, those are the first ones, so they haven't fared well with that Shen in the bot lane. Yeah, well, third time's a charm. Third time's a charm, Kobe. <laughs> we'll see if they can get it. That Corky, however, as I said, I mentioned, Apollo has been playing that lately, so Wild Turtle takes that, may force him out of the grades. Maybe something else. As a champion, though, uh, I do agree with a Shen pickup. You know, whatever lane you decide to put him in against He's Team Impulse. He's pretty great, right? It's so good against Team Impulse. Plus, since TSM have identified that they have a tendency to play reactively, yeah. that is the reactive ch play champion to have is Shen. So uh, when Impulse do go for one of their yeah. plays, you're uh, playing and try against and dive a guy somebody. or a team that wants to fight, have a guy that can teleport to that fight all the time. 
So we have a Maokai and a Janna picked up now. Adrian's going to be trying his hand on that. Back in CLG Week 6 victory, he played that as well. So see what they can get in. Still keeping the Janna, usually with the Silver Comp. Still a good support nonetheless. Maokai picked up here for a bit of late game fight just to be as tanky as that Shen. They do pick up the Gragas, so they can counter pick Bjergsen in that, or they can get the counter pick, I should say, for Bjergsen in the mid lane. Let's see if TSM has shaken off the cobwebs here that have been plaguing them for the past week or so. Yeah. All right, well, Gragas does provide some disengage. Um, interesting, though, they're staring in Italy in the face, uh, which means that there will be poke. Uh, whether Impulse want to double down on the poke and also get a poke mid laner has yet to be seen. But TSM have to already think about yep. that option and start thinking about ways to get around. You know, Janet Nidalee already has a good, you know, poke and defense disengage there. Greg is going to be locked in, who, you know, is very versatile. Can, right. Can disengage for himself or try and follow up on an anti stun to get a perfect cask so he can separate the enemy team and knock some people forward. Corky has really been rising in popularity very quickly, actually. Um, with the recent patches. We'll see if uh, Turtle's able to make good use of that champion, try and rush up to his Trinity Force. Provides some poke of his own as well. Apollo not saying much here. Very quiet. Yeah, interesting. What does he want to run here? What does the team want him to run? All right, there's a talk. I mean, it's been Graves. We got it. Oh. Or Kogma constantly. Uh, in previous weeks okay. when the Sivir yeah. is banned. Nope. You're right. Apollo has gone back to that Kog'Maw. Shawe Shaw's Oriana was actually pretty effective in the mid lane recently, so he goes back to that. We'll uh, see what they can do. A much more... Yasuo on the side of TSM. They're just showing it off. Much more That's standard that. team here from Team Impulse. And, you know, it is worth mentioning that in the last couple of weeks, mm -hmm. they have shown multiple styles, new faces for them. They had that yeah. comeback win. Um, they also had the poke op. They've had, you know, double teleports. So, pulls have been branching out a little bit. Right now, they've got the standard Maokai plus Oriana combo. Yeah. You know, a little bit of poke from uh, Nidalee, as well as some from an AD Kogma. It's definitely nowhere near mid lane. Bjergsen is just giving up his champion pool right now. Stop it, man. <laughs> Bjergsen's champion pool probably consists of every champion. He would love to show love. <laughs> love to love. But it's a love-hate relationship, ladies and gentlemen. Give them it's a taste of the their own medicine. Day. Double teleports from TSM. Yep. So nicely done. This is, as, we, as Kobe was saying, that other composition. If, if Impulse doesn't get Sivir, that sometimes they run with. Team Solo Mid has put it in their hands here to globally run around the map. We'll see if Impulse can keep control of that. And it might be kept under control by Rush's early game. And that is key, Riv, uh, because TSM are going to have to stick to global plays, cross-map plays, um, you know, controlling objectives that way, trying to gain uh, advantage by moving quicker across the map because Impulse have the stronger team fight here. They, if they're allowed uh, to build up, they have quite the AoE they've got. Yeah. And we'll, see, uh, the rush, we'll see what the rush factor is, though. If Rush is able to attack either of the solo laners who both have teleports and could help each other out. The last few words from the coaches as they head to the middle fly and Loco Doco, we just heard from them how they feel about the teams and each other. Actually, Fly talking a little bit about strategy, which we'll get into in the game. Interesting that he didn't plan specifically for Team Solo Mid. We'll talk about it a little bit. Time for you at home, however, to weigh in on this match. Tweet at LOL Esports with the hashtag TIP win or the hashtag TSM win. We'll mash your vote with all the others and update the fan polling just a bit as usual. A lot of TSM chance coming into this matchup. A lot of eyes are going to be on Rush. A lot of eyes on Santorin as well. The pick and ban phase, something that people are looking at for TSM. It seems to have gone away that they can work with here. And they haven't really tripped over their own feet. See what both teams have for each other with all this talk about junglers. We do hear Bjergsen saying that Rush's early moves can make or break Team Impulse. 
Well, I think one of the bigger things about TIP is just rush early aggression because I feel like it really either it puts them ahead or it puts them behind because he's going to take risks where he can potentially get caught or get chunked and have to back and lose a lot of pressure in his own jungle. But rush often dictates the game with his play style, and that's why he's he's so high in solo queue ladder on NA and Korea is because he plays very aggressive and sometimes it has huge payoffs. That's something we need to watch out for. Yeah, I think that's you know no surprise to anybody Ooh. that. <laughs> Rush is definitely number one on Bjergsen's mind, as is Bjergsen yeah. on the entire team of Team Impulse. Uh, they, both these teams have very clear leaders to point to yeah. and playmakers to point to. Always wondering if Rush is going to be there if he goes all in on Xiao Wei Xiao. That's what we heard from him. Well, Twisted Fate, luckily enough, has an ability where he, she, he will reveal the <laughs> position of every other Team Impulse member. Rush right now is setting up for the double camp start. Gromp into the three traps that are just waiting for the blue buff mm. minions to walk over. So he's going to start that side. Looks like we will have the lane swap. Apollo and Adrian going to be safe up in yeah. the top lane. Two versus one. <laughs> Let's see how the double jungling goes. Maokai has been able to set up Xiao Wei Xiao as well for an early experience lead with his saplings. So Xiao Wei Xiao. Small experience lead for Oriana. Should come fairly easily here. Oh, missed one. Got him. Also like to start here by Bjergsen in the mid lane. Boots, biscuits as well. Keep himself in the right spot. Also to avoid some sneaky ganks from Rush, possibly. Play some dodgeball, Rip. Play that dodgeball. It's going to be difficult. Rush is eagle eye with those spears. And as well, ring and biscuits on the other side for Xiao Wei Xiao there. So they look to stay a bit sustained. As they trade back farm and damage in the mid lane. Double jungles, as you said, Kobe, gonna make their way around. Let's see where the action starts off. Look at supports mirroring each other here for wards as well. Yep, very standard looking for uh, mm -hmm. to fish out the enemy double jungle. Get what uh, they need. Gain information on where they started. That lets them know that they can come into the strong side, red buff quadrant here for Santorin as well as Dyrus. And it looks like it is going to be the standard um, three-man push on the turret while the jungler keeps on jungling to grab the rest of the camps. And then they leave the top laner there to grab a few extra minions on the wave as they bounce after Ooh. the turret goes down. A bit earlier pressure here from Impulse on the bottom turret. And uh, Bjergsen taking yeah. a significant amount of harass. Also... Shao Shao missing that minion, but he still has plenty more to clean up and put him in the lead. He should be able to get mm -hmm. lead off of this. Yerkson putting himself in range just so he can clear that and get back. Shao Shao can't do much after a few of those combos. Quite mana heavy. Down to the bot lane. Looks like Santorin keeping eyes on that side of the map. Making sure he gets himself some more jungle as well as he clears it out. So, mirrored both sides, Kobe, as you start this one off, things should just kind of be slow rolling as we make our way through the early part of the game. And just that 21 to 12 CS lead in the mid lane. It's about the gold difference that you're seeing up on the chart right yeah. now. And that is in the face of the Twisted Fate of passive. Right, that's true. Extra gold. Right. You always got to be, be wary, Rush is there, as they called it. Turret goes down on the bot side. No play to be made. They're saying if we can go for something, we will. But both are going to. Actually, no. Dyrus stays, so he did decide to keep himself there. All right. So, yeah, well, he's just trying to soak up the minions. Right. Oh, you're right. Oh, the uh, duo lane headed down bottom here for both teams, and they will match up without a bottom lane turret for Impulse. Corky. Still does need to get to level six before uh, he gets the super strong lane phase. So should be a fairly standard thing. Oh, Adrian, though, is nowhere to be found. So Apollo's going to have to play Man, he is hide and seek here down so the bottom Kogma. He's just trying to hover around and soak experience behind the wall mm -hmm. while he waits for Adrian to arrive. Dyrus was able to soak some more experience down bottom before returning up top. Looks like uh, Impact is able to freeze the lane up top, though. So Maokai can position this lane right in front of his turret, keep it there until yep. PSM force either force a play across map, which it looks like they are going to do. And 
they're not going to try and uh, break that freeze by pushing it in. I wonder if TSM knows that keeping it safe could put Tip on tilt. They want to fight all the time. Well, so far this game, Pulse able to stay calm. Yeah. Now they're going to have to deal with the bottom lane, though. Minions pushing away from them. No turrets. Oh, boy. And Rush is keeping guard of the bottom lane. All right, here's and that hard, push though. up that could come back to bite them. Teleport comes in a pretty good spot, able to divide the fight onto Wild Turtle first. Valkyrie's down, and also his flash has been used. Lost Boy is able to just walk out. Do they get enough pressure onto the bottom side of that map? TP goes to the top. <laughs> Dyra says, turret time. Are they going to be able to say Dragon? I don't think so with Santorin still there. Yeah, well, he's able to break the freeze by drawing out the teleport with a play down bottom uh, and then answering it with one of his own. But it looks like Impulse want to go for that dive. Oh, boy. They're getting their fight that they want. Six and a half minutes in. They start the first one. First blood going on to Wild Turtle. Impact gets out. Making a good one that with the rest of the team. First kill goes to him. I love it when we see tanking by the range champions first for the team. Adrian takes as much as he possibly can before getting out of tower aggro and having it transfer it down to impact. Able to, assist to safely execute the 4v3 dive, which is not always the most safe. But good juggling there, and they come out with the first blood, unscathed for Team Impulse. Yep. Shao Shao even able to rotate up top and ensure that Dyrus was unable to get any extra damage down on that turret. Shao Shao, by the way, still holding that lead yeah. for now. He's been running little from lane to lane. Top. Bjergsen pretty much backing every siege that's been crashing into the turret. Already home guard lucidity's built up for him. Yeah, he's and definitely a whole gonna, lot of wards. Definitely gonna have his eyes on bottom lane as still they are looking to take advantage of that downed turret with TF teleports. Shen though, not gonna be level six for quite a while as Dyrus uh, in the lane swap, not able to get the experience needed. Nope. Quick pause going into the game. We'll see what happened for that right now. It's ten thousand. 600 gold to 9.8 right now. So just that small lead and a good fight in the bottom lane here coming in for Impulse gives them a bit of what they need. TSM, usually a team to have a bit of a gold lead at the start of a game, but it looks like Impulse is going to try to take that, away from, take that away from them here at the 10 minute mark. Yeah, and so if we're looking at this um, gold lead, it is all concentrated mm -hmm. on impact and rush. The Bash Brothers uh, combo for Team Impulse this is a lot of where their early game playmaking comes from. Rush has been able to farm much quicker with Nidalee uh, than Centaurin has and been able to um, play defense for his team. Mm -hmm. So the double early ward buy for him working out and being able to earn his own gold lead, then impact with the first blood money, boosted him up above Dyrus as well as that uh, freeze he was able to hold, even if it was only for 20 seconds. Got a substantial amount of minions from it. So we'll yep. see if that does come into play here. As we said, both top players are not going to be level 6 for a while, and their teleports are both down. So they're going to have to match up with each other. Yeah. Go toe-to-toe. -to -toe, see if Impact can get any bullying done. That's what needs to happen. We heard when back in the day when Liquid fought uh, against Impulse. Quas said again about Impact. It's, you have to pretty much play to what he does. The guy's always moving. The guy's always making plays. So it's almost very hard to do what he's doing if he gets a lead. Dyrus, a little bit of pressure on his shoulders now. The Shen teleports, however, can definitely change things in the favor of TSM here once they get these TPs to the right area. It's something we really haven't seen. The gate, the globals being used by TSM yet. Still a lot to see in this game as we almost get back in. We're just restarting Santorin's client, making sure that the camera is not locked. I'm sure we've all felt the plague of that at least <laughs> once or twice, but it is quite have. easily fixable, and it has been fixed. We're going to be hopping back into the matchup. Thank you for bearing with us. Seven and a half minutes in. Remember that first blood just came from the bottom lane, so a little bit of momentum to impulse. See if they still hold that after the pause. Yeah, that number, by the way, is about seven, 570 gold there. Mm -hmm. um, 600 now for impact as Dyrus has to play fairly defensive. He's respecting the lead as well as his lack of vision um, and his lack of uh, turret. <laughs> so he's got to play very safe here. You can see he's just hovering on experience range. Doesn't want to get in range of Twisted Advance. 
for Impact to be able to set up a kill with Nidalee, since he has so few wards available yep. to him. Nidalee's down bottom, though. That's what they're thinking. They're afraid. They actually want to take out Rush. You can see him kind of conversion down here. Bjergsen making sure he's on the bottom side of his lane to stay safe, or at least get the TP to a distance he can reach. That is an advantage to the team. And it looks like they back off of this. Still pressure being warded around that dragon, and that's just about it. Buffs are going to be grabs. Yep. You may see a little bit more action here in the mid. Not only is it a gold advantage for Rush, by the way, over Santorin, but a very big experience advantage as well. However, uh, you know, Santorin focusing on the objectives here. The golden experience disadvantage he has with Rush is going to balloon right now because he doesn't get much from Dragon. But gaining that first buff for his team is huge, yeah. as well as neutral objective on a double teleport team is always quite important because they want to try and draw impulse across the map and pick them off, uh, make use of their number as advantage with those teleports. Dyrus just hitting six, by the way, so you got to yep. watch out for one of those plays. Here comes a room from Lust Boy as well into his own jungle. Trying to get some vision back for Dyrus. Level seven to level five, but Rush does not know what's on the other side of that Annie either. Not enough deep vision. He is big though. Quite a CS lead right now over Santorin. 44 to 29 in the jungle, and he is just continuously hard farming it out right now for his team. Quick pickups around the map. Trailblazers for both junglers coming into this one. Early home guard rush for Bjergsen as well. Mm -hmm. That was very, very early. One of those first buys before the Sheen. The city boots, pretty common now uh, as he wants to get off more t uh, teleports. And uh, the Sheen, he will have high impact gank with his teleport. Here comes the duo roam up top, and they find themselves a ward for their troubles, but that also signals impact will play defensively now. And the roam will not gain them anything. Mm -hmm. So it seems like with obviously the proactive gank in the bot lane, it's a little reactive here to impulse already. Things have slowed down with their TPs not being up, and TSM's the one kind of making the, the moves. Yeah, and remember, I did talk about, you know, Impulse showing some new plays uh, yeah. in the last couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. Plus, due to the composition that they have, where it's a much more standard team uh, versus a double teleport, you have to be very, very cautious when that playing against the uh, double solo laners, both able to answer any cross map move. Can't just be running around all willy nilly. Yeah, exactly. So this is something that I commended Rush for last week, and we can do so again this week. He has been able to adjust priorities mm -hmm. and not just mindlessly go look for fights. He's been able to earn a lead by farming. Yep. The hard farm jungler, which is Santorin, who usually earns his leads that way. Rush taking a page out of his book. Obviously, Nidalee is extremely well-equipped to do that yeah. and can clear really fast, but Rush is making it work for him. Two levels up still. Got to look at the bigger picture of things. May not be having 50 kills, but he's setting the team up gold quite a bit. Gold is gold. Gold is gold. There you Where go. Comes from? Heard it from Kobe. Confirmed on stream. 700 of that is in the favor of Impulse right now. Those first few turrets are the only real action we've seen go down along with that kill in the bot lane. 12 minutes on the clock here. Looks like Wild Turtle's gonna be quite focused on this turret. As the duos are gonna go back to the top lane here. A little bit of a long laning phase. <laughs> yeah, let's see if this uh, Gragas movement up top will result in any action. Because Bjergsen is itching to use his teleport. Oh. Zhao Zhao wants to scratch that itch for you. Wow, that was a great play by him. The combo almost taking down Bjergsen. Wild Turtle flashing forward. The Valk, Turtle goes hard on this one. The rest of the team has the chance to follow, but they were knocked up by the Howling Gale. Turtle being too far forward, using all of his escapes to enter, gets himself killed. Shao Wei Shao now, remember the ultimate's down, but Rush has the gap closed. The double kill coming in for the Poke Apollo. Now Santorin could be the one going down, and it all looks so good, but it all is so wrong now. You've activated the Impulse Trap card, TSM. <laughs> and Dyrus is going to pay oh, for it as well. Dyrus as well. Three members of Impulse coming up. This kills the Shen. 
And actually, he might get out. This does not kill the Shen. Rush leaping forward for a last kill. They know the boundaries of their champion. Uh -oh. Bjergsen coming in. There's still a heal that can come out from Rush here to give himself a save. Pick a card is up. Gate is up. They could be going back onto Bjergsen now. It's a 4v1. He's able to peel off stage left and get himself out of a bad situation. Impulse 5-0 after the entire fight. Yeah. TSM a little bit too itchy there, really wanted to force the play in two places at once. And it was all because of the Xiao Wei Xiao huge chunk on mid lane. He takes Bjergsen into the danger zone, 300 life left, and he draws out the Shen ultimate. So Dyrus, I actually lost track of him because I think he used the Shen ultimate as well as teleport in there to bounce all over the map, try and save everybody. but wasn't able to save either side, and things go bad for TSM in top lane and mid lane. Team Impulse able to clean up, and actually, they are the ones to play reactively to the double teleport comp. They have been able to adjust. Oh, that play went down with TSM thinking they were gonna have so much more pressure from Bjergsen's gate just up the river. Instead, he faced Xiao exactly. Wei Xiao. As I said, it's all about that Xiao Wei Xiao chunk. He went aggressive at the That's right crazy. time, taking a chunk out of Bjergsen as the call is being made. It's, they pulled a, one of the wheels off right when it went made. So it's, yeah, Darius does tell, you Shen ultimate. Oh, to he used that tele ultimate onto Bjergsen to save him, then teleport up to the top lane. But it's too late. His impact already used his teleport up to the top lane. And this is without Rush even there at the beginning of the fight. Turtle deep in enemy territory, and everything starts to crumble. Yeah. And he doesn't even get up. The <laughs> Stunned there. Rush arrives to clean everything up. Wow and it just explodes on top of the fact that Rush has been hard farming. He just gets one kill and three assists for keeping himself on the rip and in the right spot at the right time. Apollo now feeling confident. He has the teammates around him to keep poking a bit in the mid lane. But things are great after that back for him falls. The Triforce is completed for Kog'Ma. Athene's almost into what seems to be a Zanya's coming in now for Xiao Wei Xiao. And as we see, the Shroud, Spectre's Cowl, there we go. Things are hard sometimes. <laughs> On to Impact, along with that Catalyst, he's gonna be going for most likely that Righteous Glory, but not right away. Impulse yeah, definitely a team to be feared. Death on a huge hot streak, whereas TSM starting to crumble. Now, yeah. Reggie did talk about also that they just care about improving in the next couple of weeks because they're confident in their playoff position. Mm -hmm. uh, they feel they can get into playoffs very easily, and they want to try and make their improvements during the normal season now before heading to playoffs. However, there's been so much talk about um, all the drama and the mentality of the players uh, when they start to struggle a little bit because there's so much pressure on a team like Team Soul Mid we're so used to being the number one team in North America. Yeah. Anything but first, it's a bit disappointing. And the pressure on them to keep up that first place spot is starting to wear a little bit. What is this? Like. It's, been a, it's been a large pressure from themselves over time and as well from the fans, because they expect now almost more than TSM themselves who want the win, obviously. It just becomes more and more difficult. The teams around them leveling up very fast, being able to control these games, patches to patch. Yeah, Impulse definitely one of those teams. Yeah. Great improvements this season. Again, though, I still have to question what champion you give Rush. <laughs> yeah. Again, it seems like they have allowed a team, like uh, they allowed Liquid Phoenix to get a Seer. Rush uh -oh. gets Nidalee on this one. You have a ultimate goes used, out. and it reveals that Xiao Wei Xiao is in place. So Bjergsen holds on to it. Good yeah. call there. Reserve, reserved play here from TSM, and they're just going to gain some positioning on mid turret. Krug's buff on Santorin. He needs to get one auto attack off for the extra damage. Not worth it. He decides too dangerous to go in there. Yep. And he doesn't get the extra damage. Rip. Playing it safe, why not? 5-0 right now, you don't want to give anything back. This also means there's going to be some nice shutdowns on these kills if TSM does get it. There's a good bit of gold well, rolled up in that. They're actually spread out really evenly over the Impulse team, uh, the last hit, so your shutdowns. That's true. Not the kills themselves, yeah. Yeah. 
Um, Won't get too much of a surge in gold. But that being said, I think it's, it really does have to do with the play here. Team Impulse surprising TSM a bit. Uh, TSM really just expecting Impulse to play their normal style. You know, all very aggressive, all inning, trying to have fights everywhere. And so yeah. they pick these double teleports, but then Impulse able to recognize it and play accordingly. I think they may have even expected more from Rush, even as we heard from Bjergsen in the beginning. He's the guy that can make, he makes or breaks the game with his style of play. And this time he wasn't pushing himself forward to break it's, anything. It's he was making all game. Beautiful thing about jungling in League of Legends, uh, manipulating your opponents by, you know, showing a pattern <laughs> and yeah, breaking it. That's right. Uh, yes, last weekend, Rush had one of his first games where he went hard farm mode instead of early aggressive gank, mm -hmm. and it did throw off the enemy. It's working again here. And you can no longer expect the single play style from Oh, boy. Him. All right, Apollo's uh, right next to Dyrus, but Dyrus has no backup, so he decides to abort mission. He's so he, even he's under level because of the lane swap. Solo lane. That's a good point. Shen actually yeah. under level for that Kogma, and he does not want that fight. Oh, wow. They, that's a lot of want oh, for one man, kill. They that's really a lot want of want for one kill. Impact's going to try to turn into the fight. Is the rest of the team? No, they're not. It's going to be bottom tier turret here. Shall base race there. Pressure, but yeah, a bit of a base race. Turret race, at least. Outside the base race. <laughs> <laughs> Almost inside. You know this what? This is when they're just kicking down the pink flamingos on your lawn. You don't really worry. They're not at the front door just yet. And it looks You're like impulse. On the cops. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody call the cops quick because impulse are going to get two turrets out of this. TSM only got one turret out of the exchange. Yes, they got the kill, but TSM used both global ultimates. Yeah. Two summoner true. spells on Bjergsen. Summoner spell on Lustboy. No flash from Annie left there. Five members committed. The exit, and exit resources. Impulse get two turrets for only one given away to TSM. Mm -hmm. Yes, they got the kill, but so much expended for that. TSM really reaching for the stars here because yep. Impulse have played reactively and have... Yeah, yeah because they played reactively, that's just it. Because they played reactively, TSM starting to uh, get a little over-anxious and reaching for the stars here. Yeah. Could be a big pain in the butt as well if anything happens with those inhibitor turrets now, especially being on the bottom side of the map. See if Impulse pressures it. He, he, was, he knew what he was doing. Just giving everybody else a heart attack. 40 seconds on Dragon. The blue was stolen on the way out. Not that it's absolutely huge for Bjergsen, but I'm sure Wild Turtle would actually love to have that continuously, and he's been now denied again. Yeah. It's a little bit hard to get up on these turrets. They've only done a bit of damage, you can see, to the mid already. 21 minutes in, and TSM are only looking at one last outer turret in the top side of the map. 17 seconds on Dragon is boarded up semi by both teams right now. So let's exactly. see. Let's focus on Baron. It's, it's so impressive that Impulse have been able to gain the turret lead and the map lead on the double teleport squad. Because both times that TSM have made calls to go all in, yeah. committed, Team Impulse have reacted perfectly mm -hmm. and cleaned up on the exit. Usually, like you say, you see a team fight the teleport team where they're at. Because if you're at the other spot, you're going to get engaged on real no, hard. Exactly. So they're I've just been throwing TSM actually, every which way. I've actually been saying that for three years. <laughs> go to the source of the Ever since the LCS existed, go to the source of the global. But that's the change, the wrinkle in the plan. <laughs> when there's double teleports on both solo laners, you, uh, the source is everywhere. I tail it out of there. <laughs> oh, very good play across the board here from Impulse. You saw the first kill that even happened, or I should say death was on impact and it cost quite a few ultimates and summoner spells to get it. TSM is looking to get these kills to just get themselves inching back into the game. Here a dragon can help through stats, which are necessary, or what's your goal in the end. So yeah. it works, it works. This is consolation prize for TSM. This is the spider ring. Because, and it's not even, the, yeah, exactly. It's not even a good one. It's not even like a, what's the ring that has actually a lollipop? That you just said it. Is that what it's called? The lollipop <laughs> ring? I feel like it has a cooler Again, name. Again, impact. The one that gets hit. One ultimate. Is there another one to come in? He's going to TP out. Not actually going to be able to make it there with a bit of getting jostled around. 
And uh, oh. it's, however, going to give them a run for their money. All right, so it's not just the spider ring. It's not just the dragon. They get the, the ring pop riv. They get a kill pop. on top of it. But they lose the turret in exchange. Impulse constantly keeping up the pressure right. when TSM use their teleports. It, they've done so well with not going into panic mode, which often happens when you have multiple globals on the enemy team mm -hmm. and they, they global, uh, they double global you and they attack one point. Impulse counterattack has been perfect this game. It's all about the impulse counterattack this game. And they do it once again, all outer turrets down for them. Giving up second dragon is almost nothing to them. All they want is the 6%. CSM already had one. Dragon number two means yeah. very little. And they're able to get a huge gold lead. Giant ward coverage in the red buff quadrant of TSM to prep them for Baron. This is all going according to plan for Team Impulse. Maybe there was a small hiccup there with Impact. Yeah. He's not quite on board with the full plan, but... <laughs> Everything else going swimmingly. And there seems to be, you know, you kind of see the shift in not having one strategy in this game. We heard Fly say that we don't have a particular strategy for TSM. We have multiple strategies and we'll pull from the one we need. Yeah. And it seems like they can do that in a game as well, using the passive early. Once they got that kill, they did not let go. We uh, Changing gave, into proactive. Gave Fly a lot of credit last split uh, when they had their big swing. I think he still deserves a lot of credit this split as well. Yeah, for sure. Helping Impulse diversify. Making sure it works. A convincing game as well to not have Sivir on. Usually that's their bread and butter in the way they're making plays here, and they're still making things work off the ball. Just making sure the teleports don't get them down. TSM still with the chance to make a big play. If they have the wards to catch somebody out, not impact all the time, then they'll be all right here. Just Dyrus and Impact going back and forth in the wet noodle fight in the bot lane. You can see the team was actually pulling down, but now Tip is actually just going to stay halfway through here and make sure Baron doesn't become an option for TSM. Yeah. If Impact is able to gain control of the one versus one with Dyrus, yeah. which it still looks pretty even, so I'm not quite giving him that edge yet. As Dyrus has been able to give That's very just as good as he can get Both so far. Both heal after a while, so oh, it not though. All right, so, yeah, those are, they're still pretty even, <laughs> uh, but when that split push does turn, like it goes on forever. It will be a pretty big point in the game. Yeah. Um, oh, you always have to think about Not yours. the Twisted Fate teleporting in again on top of you. Imp Impulse have reacted to that really well so far, though. Right now, they're shoving up mid, and they've gained position. Fortunately, don't have the minion wave just yet, and a ward placed over the wall, you can see there by Lost Boy. gets taken out right quick. Seems like they're teeter-tottering on what to do here. Don't really have any minion waves in their favor to be dancing around this area, but maybe looking for a mistake. Nice job. A present now for Dyrus. Impact being a nice guy. Impulse here have let their vision around Baron lapse. That's true. And Quite this, is, dark. this could be a big play for TSM. To say if you have that Kogma, you have a Nidalee, and your face check and brush is not the right, you're not walking into the right situation. So Bjergsen able to grab that one does not go to Wild Turtle actually. They want those cards from Bjergsen to control the fights. Yeah, TSM are doing a good job of pulling uh, pulling the map here as they've got top wave shoving, side wave control is pretty yeah. well, is pretty strong here. Uh, Dyrus as well is stuck down in bottom. So they were able to spread the minions, but Impulse just sticking together. Checking the brush with their abilities and calling impact over. I've been able to hold without giving up too much around that Baron. Let's see what it would take for TSM to actually get a blackout on the Baron pit. They've got two upgraded sweepers, one still not upgraded for Bjergsen, and then only one pink ward in inventory. So it's a decent amount of vision denial that they have available. Oh man, but not complete. These fights could start getting there for TSM. Locket of the Iron Solari is finished, and the Aegis for uh, Adrian is actually quite far off. He's only sitting about 500 gold right now, and he's two uh, 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 recipe items. Yeah, I get it. I'm a huge fan of rushing. Uh oh, here we go. Here's Impact. the teleport play. He's the guy. Every time they're going on the tree, trying to cut it down, he is still very big, though. Eventual Maelstrom on. 
able to mitigate a percent of that damage coming into him. Yeah, and I think he'll just recall, heal the fountain, and then try and catch the wave that Dyrus is split pushing here. So that twist of fate ultimate didn't have the biggest effects, Man. and they've also given up position on mid lane once again as Impulse shove up. It's like a big tug of war right now. Wild Turtle gonna try and clear by himself in the Shen ulti comes in super early. Impulse gonna back out here. Maybe that was some miscommunication. Mm. Could have uh, been an engage with how TSM was coming back from the jungle, but just too if, far off. Yeah, if Bjergsen had still had his Twisted Fate ultimate, then I can see that working. Yeah, they would have no confidence. Um, but maybe they didn't communicate that they just missed the last one. He also Abyssal and Lich Bane, so the Zanya's plays from him can't be too effective just yet. He's still quite a ways off there. Ooh. They're gonna try to start up on this Baron, knowing the TP is down for Dyrus. He's gonna have to come to a ward somewhere, and they feel they have that ward coverage as well. Now that there's one in the Baron pit, they may be a little deterred. That's gonna be the hit. It was still the channel. Oh, wow. Wow. He gets off, does the ball move into the right spot here from Xiaowei Xiao. Watch where the damage is coming from the back line. Rush now entering from the bottom side of the fight. Too many disengage. minutes for him to really do any good work. But like you said, good disengage. TSM make it out quite unscathed, just a few summoners. Yeah, that was a good disengage there from Santorin and mm -hmm. crew, because I thought that Xiao Xiao Shockwave was going to gain them more than it did. Yeah. Dragon, though, going to be a little bit less scary for the team to start up, and less point flashes. Impact can't get hit up that many times. He is again the focus. They take the tank down. Looking at the rest of the team, that's a very squishy impulse. And they can start dying to this TSM team They're now. Cornered. They are jockeying back and forth position. Dyrus Gate has, goes down and they decide not to take it. Dyrus is out of teleports. He already used his <laughs> ultimate as well as the summoner spell. So TSM give up on the chase. One kill for the dragon and position on mid lane. Pretty good mid game yeah. wow. fight there for TSM. They definitely needed some more gold to work with. And they got just that, as well as being able to clear out the pink ward uh, in Baron Pit will be pretty significant. What? They, they were like doing 100 miles an hour, and then they took the, the bottom turret and the middle turret, and it seemed like Impulse didn't know where to go. TSM almost took control of the game there, and that was only at 26 minutes. Four minutes ago, Impulse was pretty much controlling this game. And it yeah. seems like without having those minions to push, being in the mid lane twice with no minion wave, TSM has just kind of been able to ward up and get back. You always have to be cautious against the double teleport teams, especially when you get this late in the game. Doesn't matter how many early game counterattacks you are able to pull off to get yourself that lead. Yeah. Uh, if you start giving away uh, the global gold back and the map coverage to TSM, one strong cross-map double teleport play can you know, get you a huge, huge swing in money. If TSM are able to make that play and pick someone off, enabling yeah. them to get Baron, there's a lot of money left standing in the outer turrets. They could grab some global gold from the last two outer turrets. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. Almost at it again. They're going to rush this one. Shen ultimate backup, though. Dyrus is ready to come in. Wild Turtle gets his chance on a Corky steal here. If he has the big one up, he's actually on the right side getting ready to fight. Dyrus comes in. That's going to be a stand United teleport in. Cleanse onto Apollo. He wants to get the chase. And they want Still Bjergsen. chasing him. They, they want to hunt him Bjergsen. down. Oh, boy. That's all that's on the menu. Minion line just coming into favor. Bjergsen on that one. Rush takes damage. They're going to be able to take down Burger King. But now the push is in the mid lane, dictated by Team Solo mid, and they do have a minion wave this time, and no return can be walked Tippers in. Tip's going to have to teleport back, and only a few home guards on base. So they're going to get a turret for Bjergsen's death. 30 seconds left after that. They've started up the Baron. Whoa, you can back. retreat into it. Yes, Impulse team. Impulse do have ward lines here, but they're just taking unnecessary damage. Yeah. Uh, they're yeah. gonna collapse, actually. It's a pincer movement. They're staying on Baron well, while TSM come. Beautiful job by Impact and Xiao Wei Xiao to kind of deter them, creating a wall of champions that they couldn't get through right away. TSM didn't want that they're fight. They're still staying you, on it. This is absolutely crazy. Banking a lot of up in 10, he has ultimate. That play to the Rune King, as well as what Rush can put out. They actually Talisman of Ascension out of this one. TSM looks like they want the fight. A bit of low HP and low mana bars could equal something that they want. They're only doing it for pressure right now, and both teams are going to stop the engage. And the crack's starting to show, and the pressure of the cross-map plays from TSM starting to force Impulse into more and more difficult decisions. Take a lot of damage from that Baron, really wanting to try and gain something more from the Bjergsen kill, but they're unable to do so, and TSM climbing back into this one.
one of the outer turrets taken for them in exchange for the kill. You have to be so careful anytime you kill one of these solo laners because the yep. global teleports come back up so quickly for them. Starting that Baron is really, really dangerous. Yeah. All right, a little bit of a breather. Whew. Is right. 33 minutes in, only six to three. How are we so excited right now? <laughs> because it's just a because good game, there's that's so, why. There's so much pressure. You, many players have been in this situation where you're playing against teams with teleports like this, and you get into the high pressure situation of the late Such game calls. High pressure. Calling between inhibitor exchanges and Baron <laughs> may be the most difficult thing. And you know, barring the Nexus for that's Baron. That's the thing I love. You can go zero zero on the board. Died. And sometimes it's one of the best games you have seen. Yeah. It's it's just because it's so hard to judge. You know, you have to take so many things into account. It's the DPS output of both teams. Yeah. The mobility of both teams. This is, by the way, a Janna who rushed the, not the talisman. Blocking, yeah, the talisman is the name of it now, um, which is on a ridiculously short cooldown. This item is so, so effective. Um, anyways, it's a beautiful item, but it also provides a lot more uncertainty for both teams. Um, even though Team Impulse do not have you know, TF4 Shen, they do yeah. have a lot of mobility with this Janna who's able to speed boost the entire team, you know, like every 30 seconds, basically. Right, yeah. Um, so it's very, it's, it, there's so many things you have to take into account from DPS to movement speed to, you know, positioning here that uh, those are the situations that we really enjoy. The high, high intensity late game exchanges of yep. objectives. All right, now I'm interested to see who can find their way into a fight. Probably not Xiao Wei Xiao right now. He's actually got about 1,700 gold to spend, so he'll want to do that. Wild Turtle banking on quite a bit of cash in his pocket as well, even at 0 2, two. He's going to want to get that spent before these teams match up one more time. So that on the mind, it's going to be a bit before we see a fight. Three to 4,000 gold lead that Impulse has been able to get. Wild Turtle actually almost finding himself in a very scary situation. And this Baron is pretty much what's going to be which way that tug of war goes that we've been seeing for the past 10 minutes. Yeah. And now it seems like TSM has kind of not lost their oomph, but that drive they just had, giving them the few turrets. Impulse has now been able to stave that off. So now we're at that stalemate. Look at Bjergsen. He was he's trying to pull his sneaky play coming in behind the minion line behind Dyrus to mm -hmm. be able to pull off a two versus one surprise but a very, very smart ward from Impulse and Impact down in the bottom side. Saw Bjergsen come up. He knows that he's versus two people here, and they've finally shown themselves at the turret. Gonna be able to brute force it down, and Impulse are forced to start up the Baron to try and draw the double teleport up. I think it's a good call from TSM. This is the distance. There's the TP coming in. Lust Boy's gonna be right on top. The Shen comes in on the Lust Boy. Impact in the middle. A nice arcane smash to get everything popped up. A great monsoon keeping Dyrus out of the top from anybody. The DPS on the back line of Impulse has a chance to fire, which means TSM is starting to retreat from the fight. The initial engage did not go the way they, they wanted. They restart it. They, they are gonna restart it. They haven't stopped since they've been trying, Kobe. Santorin now trying to get in. He gets hit. That's vision of the entire TSM team along with some wards. Impact being the one to still hit. Righteous Glory goes off. He's on to Bjergsen, a big hit. This oh. target goes down and he actually dodges out a lot of damage. Bjergsen now free with a low mana bar though. Can he provide what the team needs? Back onto him. That's the only eyes that Impulse had was that priority target. Rush, oh! Wild Turtle dives into the fight. His team had no chance of saving him and Impulse has been waiting for this, chopping at the bit. Now for 36 minutes on the Baron. What a beautiful team fight from Team Impulse. Multiple points of re-engage there. I'll wait for the replay, but that was exquisite execution from Team Impulse there. And they're gonna earn themselves the Baron for it. TSM do strike back with the Dragon to get number three, but this is going to give Impulse the pushing power that they want to start the siege. What a fight coming out there, and what a way to end it as well. Turtle jumping into it, it, kills coming in for the rest of the tip, and it just got much bigger for them. It was the flash re-engage at multiple points from Impulse. Impact goes in to snag Bjergsen as he moves up, and look how rush. low they are to even win this fight. Exactly, okay, so let's take a look at here. This is the initial engage. So they go on to Bjergsen, try and burn some risk from That was a beautiful Zonias to burn the shockwave, but look at the re-engage. Rush, rush and Impact are on the oh same wavelength. Rush goes in, he Zonias, draws attention from everybody, down to the bottom side, allowing Impact even on low health to flash in and snag Bjergsen. It's because these guys 
are play the game the same way and they're so aggressive and they want they're they're on the exact same you called it wavelength here so we heard able to pay off i was saying in the beginning rush me impact we have that same play style and we'll just get the bottom lane to follow all right well <laughs> we could do that with a talisman of ascension Inhibitor number two gonna follow here Even for impulse don't have the sivir great bit of mid to late game there from Impulse. Just on a knife's edge the entire time, back and forth at the Baron, losing a few of their inner turrets. Now the fight from Santorin, going for broke in their own base. It looks like Impulse actually wants this fight still. Nobody can help Santorin as he dives in. Just too much control and too healthy of an Impulse team. All right, Apollo and crew looking oh to finish it gosh. off as they melt Dyrus. Huge chunks onto the tankiest person right now coming out of Team Solo Mid. Dyrus is forced back to the base. There are home guards, home guards on the member of Team Solo Mid right now, but it doesn't look like they're doing much. Uh -oh. The Sombrero coming out from uh, Xiao Wei Xiao as he throws it out just for a bit of a highlight play. And they're going to be on to the Nexus turret. They see they don't even need the Shockwave right now with the strength they're putting out and the way they are able to take these fights. Wild Turtle doing what he can for a few last bits of damage. Lust Boy as well to try his hand at the fight. 12 to 4, 39 minutes in. Bjergsen goes down on the fountain. That's an ace on TSM as Team Impulse takes down TSM. What a game. A new look from Team Impulse showing that last weekend yeah. was not a fluke. They are far more Great versatile stuff. than people give them credit to. Fly being able to diversify <laughs> the strategies for those guys and TSM prepped for the impulse of old. And it was not to be. Continuing their slide, the yeah. loss streak for TSM grows and they start to worry. So TSM coming into this one got a composition that they could work with. It looked like something they regularly had, but again, Allowing the other team to get such a high priority champion in one of the positions it seems to be plaguing them across the board. I mentioned Phoenix getting a Zier earlier in their TL matchup. A huge pick there. Rush having the comfort and control on that Nidalee as well. Yeah, I mean, you can look at picks at, for a part of it. Well, for sure. Yeah, it's definitely not 100%. Yeah, a lot of gameplay as well mm -hmm. to be looked at for them. And those guys right there got to be really happy. And this is basically... The, the perfect time for them to make a move like this. Yeah, strong showing here right before playoffs. They definitely want to make a trip to Worlds. It does not get any easier for Tip down the road. They'll have TDK to end this week out. Should still be a win with the momentum they have, but week nine spells out Gravity and Liquid. Those are going to be tough matches. Very, very tough matches for him. Team three, Counter Logic Gaming versus Team Liquid. And you just saw a flashback of the last time these teams faced off in week five and that huge one man quadra kill by Phoenix. I like how we yeah, that excited you. That'll do oh, it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like how I had the flashback filter on it. Just so you know, that wasn't happening live. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Phoenix has been a huge playmaker for Team Liquid, though, claiming our OP mid lane honors three weeks in a row. And he's up against Poe Belter, who came into the split with a lot of hype as CLG's new mid laner. And he had a large impact in their first few games, but then they started putting him on support mids. And then he became a relatively non-factor in their games. Yeah, and honestly, Liquid has won five of their last six games. They've only lost to first place Gravity. And this is one of the big tests that they have as they try and hold on a second place. The CLG that looks like they're on a little bit of an upward trend, whether or not Team Liquid can maintain their now four game winning streak looking to extend. You talk about that upward trend. CLG ended last week 2 0 after going on a four game losing streak, but they may not be out of the woods just yet because those wins were against eighth place enemy and 10th place team Dragon Knights. Yeah, and it's crazy because there may not actually be some magical pattern to COD's record, like they're slumping and now they're on the way back because. Maybe it's just a gauge of how good CLG actually is against other teams. They lost to some of the teams that are better than them in the standings. Team Liquid, TSM, Gravity, and Team Impulse. That was their decline. And now they've beaten some teams who honestly are worse than CLG. They played NME and TDK last week. Now will be the real test to whether they're going to continue to lose to the top teams or not. There might be one little pattern, though, and it's that CLG were running a single threat strategy that was focused around double lift carrying when mm -hmm. they did have those losses. And when we saw them pick up those two victories last week, it's when Zion, Spartan, was, and Pobelt were both put on threats as well. So you couldn't just focus and pile on to double lift, and you won the game. Yeah, I also don't think we're going to be seeing much more Lulu from Pobelt there. Yes. Yeah. Right. Well, hopefully we'll, we'll see if putting more threats on the map can clean up the game for CLG. As we send it over to our casters for the play-by-play, -play, Aframu says two wins doesn't mean CLG can get comfortable.
It's really about staying on the right track of improvement, and which is what we did this week. I finally, you know, I guess got frustrated, and usually I know what our mistakes are. I see them every game. Even when we're doing well, I just, you know, get pretty angry and upset if people do something wrong that's not perfect. So I'm a perfectionist at heart. And going into this next week, we have another week to be on the right track of improvement. And as long as I stay on top of getting on people's cases and shutting down, you know, bad habits and certain behaviors, how they talk in certain situations, what kind of communication is bad, we'll be okay. Afro Moon going to lay down the law. It seems like a lot of hats to wear there. While you can be the one to be a perfectionist at that, hopefully the skills are perfected at relaying that information as well because that can be some murky territory between teammates if you're always telling people what to do. Let's check out the starting lineups. On the blue side, it's Counter Logic Gaming. Zion Spartan in the top lane, Enix Smithy in the jungle, Poe Belter mid, double lifted AD carry, and Afro Moon calling the shots at support. And on the red side, it's Team Liquid. Up top is Quas in the jungle. I will dominate. Mid, Phoenix, AD Carry, Piglet, Support, X Special, and Coach Peter. So Team Liquid has been feeling very good. As Janet said, five out of the last six with that loss being to top team gravity. The picks and bans really haven't seemed to phase them. Good, strong in-game play. CLG kind of just coming off their mid-season lull, but happier ha ha it happened early than late this time. Yeah. They've been able to repair it. Yeah, I mean, uh, they, they even brought out Jungle Nautilus last yeah, time around. they did. And we'll took home the victory some, with that. So. See if they do some crazy stuff in this one. We also saw from Counterlogic Gaming putting Zion Spartan on that Fizz a yep. bit more lately. Not necessarily Fizz, just a champion that over has more over. of that carry impact and not just a tank. Let's see what they have for each other as we enter into Picks and Bands, our game three of the day. Phoenix will not get his ear this time. No more plays coming from Shurima. No talks about that. The Sivir is also banned away. Both teams on this one. Uh, there's the Nidalee. Not going to be in this game, so probably another Gragas Rek'Sai game. Let's see if there's another uh, AD carry focus here. Oh, okay, so yeah, there they do double up on AD carries. Target double lift, take out the Kalista as well. This is really weird because double lift has taken Tristana over and over. Right. Uh, and he's really been playing a lot of that champion, putting a lot of time in on it. So unless Team Liquid want to take it away, which I don't think they do, I would probably, I mean, it's either Tristana or Corky, but uh, first time Gragas means that Rek'Sai will probably be the champion dominate plays. I think they might go with the Corky. Yeah. Piglet does enjoy a bit of Baron stealing and play on that. We remember from the other game, True. keeping them yeah. in the game versus Team Solo mid and helping to get the victory in that as well. Still the picks here. Team Liquid definitely taking their time. Seeing the jungle pick as priority here for Xmithy on the Gragas. What can it be? Not a lot of junglers focused besides Nidalee here, so they don't have to really go for that too hard. John Akorki will there be the pick up. The Baron steal was very instrumental in their yep. victory last weekend. CLG and many Quick other answer. teams have been putting that Janna with a Gragas as well, so good takeaway from Liquid. Quick answer though, Aphromoo on his favorite champion, the Alistar. Yeah, always. And Double Left, as I said, playing a lot of Tristana lately. We'll get the real move this Happy time. to pick that up. This is also a pretty high kill pressure lane, Alistar uh, yep. Tristana. A lot of all-in potential with that duo. Uh, we'll see where the lanes match up if they go two versus two. Now, a well-played Janna can put all of that to shame and stop your combo uh, yeah. in its tracks. You can knock up Alistar during his combo. Um, let's see if Remember back pull in the it day, off. it used to fly him up into the air. You know, you see people fly off the screen if you could time it during the headbutt. It was, it was hilarious. I don't think it happens anymore. That's fixed up. But we could see that disengage from Special being very big in this game. The Victor and Rek'Sai quickly picked up on the side of TL, locked in at the same time to make CLG kind of not panic, but have to now ready their last two yeah. against those picks. No surprise with the Rek'Sai, it was just a matter of time before yeah. that one came in. Easy peasy choice. Victor all around. Mid laner has pretty much taken over recently. I want to see what uh, Phoenix actually will run into the Victor now that Zira's off the table. All right, Pobelter. Yeah. Assassins maybe, uh, or yeah, Pobelter. Excuse me. Everything will come down and watch, it'll be a Lulu. She'll be like, no! They have had him on sport champions. Mm -hmm. They have a lot of tank right now, though. Fairly well. frequently. 
Could be huh. Ezreal the Fizz. Three games in a row for Zion Spartan in the top. Yeah. Feels like he can provide a lot with that champion out of his lane. And we're going to get the Ezreal in the mid lane. First one we've seen here coming into week eight now, for the NALs. They did remove um, the spell effects on 513 from Runeglaive. So probably won't rush into Ludens after his Runeglaive. Mm -hmm. Just go Death Cap standard. Still a lot of power there. Um, pretty much even power, actually. So, not too much of a change, and basically he'll just benefit from the buffs to the stats of the Runeglaive. But, once again, we've seen so many times the early game of Ezreal punished, especially in North America. This time around, though, they've got a good bodyguard in Alstar, some more disengage in Gragas, um, as well as some very mobile threats with yep. Tristan and Fizz. I like the Shen pickup right now. Kind of just an easy pickup that's still in the basket if nobody's banned him out. And it looks like it may be the final one that Quas will go with this time. Oh, switches over at the last second. The Hecarim, something we haven't seen in a bit. It is still being played in other regions, scarcely, but we'll get it back in the NALCS here for Quas in the top lane. Yeah, kind of hard for Shen to dive really deep into the team uh, without somebody else who's going to get there immediately. Mm -hmm. Rek'Sai, Dash, eh, decent distance, but not quite the delivery they want. Quas going to look for some teleport home guard plays to even out the map. Pretty standard squads for both teams here, actually. CLG running a lot of this, as well as Team Liquid. Let's see how Poe Belter does on the Ezreal, and if CLG yeah. can get him up to his two item huge power point. Yeah, when he get, gets Rune Glaive, then he becomes, you know, medium-sized champion <laughs> when he gets the two item. That's where they really want to start poking. We'll see what Counter Logic Gaming can do. They do still have that Tristana going over the double lift, which means they can drop turrets very fast in their past few games. Enemy and TDK have been quicker than usual for Counter Logic Gaming, kind of putting their foot down to see if they can get to that Nexus faster than usual. We'll see if they can do it again this time. As we load onto the Rift, be sure to cast your votes for this matchup by tweeting hashtag CLGWin or hashtag TLWin. And we will see which way you think this, the wind is blowing once we hit the rift. We're about to be on it. Good okay. matchups coming from both sides. There were bans against the junglers, bans against the mid laners, and the teams now ready to face off against each other. We're going to be on the rift in just a second. It's Counterlogic Gaming versus Team Liquid. And these guys are on the rift. I like, oh, a little fanatic respect on the Gragas. Bringing out the, the skins. I love to sign that. And uh, Ode to Suche, actually. Back in the that season too. one days, yeah. uh, Gragas was a mid laner. That's true. And it is Suche's champion. That Cosplay dance. and all. Yeah, I believe the Cyanides is the Jar Man. That's right. You're right. How things change in League of Legends over yeah. the years. Oh, God. No, not the Ezreal spam. It's so annoying. No. Ah. <laughs> checking. Got him. Checking the power level of all surrounding opponents. 30 seconds until minions oh. Get him. Get him. Who's going to strike first? <laughs> oh. Oh. God. Could you imagine <laughs> just walking down the road and you lock eyes with a guy and the first thing he does is slap you in the face with his belly? Speaking of Sushi, he did that on, on stream out of match. That he did, yeah. Uh, Dropped him right to the floor. I forgot who that was. I forget who it was, too. It was too. really I think, funny. Yeah. I mean, right. D-Man just lost it. Oh, everybody lost it. It was a good time. Minions has spawned. Oh, no, oh. no pink age here from Double Lift. He's actually got blue-haired Tristana. No love for the hot shot there. All right, so looks like we will have um, lane swap. As Double Lift and Afro head into the Baron Pit, they will wait there for 20 minutes until it spawns. God, now I can't think. Stop thinking of Chuche just doing the belly dance after <laughs> they won. That was weird. All right, no, yeah. He was he was true to the cosplay. Oh wow, Third they're invading the duo. Invade here to stop the duo jungle. This is an interesting twist. What's up, bros? Kyle moves in, headbutt back, and Double Lift picked this one up. Dominate already smited. it. Two, oh, no, he two. didn't. He didn't already smite. He gets the... Oh, oh, oh. Good turn. Oh, what a shot. Oh, it's not going to kill him. Sorry, guys. So he <laughs> saved his smite, uh, which is quite um, rare. Oh, actually, it's not that rare. So 
there's two options you can go with. If you if you're if you want to save more life over the duration of your jungling experience in your first clear, then the smiting the Krugs is good to get the stun. Um, and you actually save more life than you do by smiting the red. But if you're playing more safe, or if you want to go for an early gank, you want that HP off of smiting the red. So it looks like Dominate was planning on smiting the red for the uh, health to get back off of it. Yeah. Um, and yeah, despite there, so it allowed them to save the Krugs. Not a tremendously big deal, but CLG delayed in the end. The invade does not help them out. There, slightly, ever so slightly behind. Yeah, they have the chance to still go to that top side after they clear this, over to Baron, over to Red, and then they should have everybody towards the top. Double lift, as I said, on this Tristonic and start explosive charging the turret when they want. Right now, it looks like they're just denying as much as possible. Yep, just gonna work on that. Continue the double jungle. Team Liquid do the same, continuing their double jungle. Stopping for the Scuttler as well. We'll be a bit behind as far as turret damage is going. Mm -hmm. Even though with the Janna you get a lot more damage. Tristana also very effective at taking down the turrets early. That's true. They both have their little advantages to make it happen. Mid lane still very safe and still very close in CS at this point between those two. Phoenix and Pole Belter getting champions they feel comfortable on. It'll be the first time we've kind of seen Phoenix nod on something. TF, Yasuo, and Raziri lately. Back in week five when he played w Victor against that gravity loss. So, we'll see if it fares better here against Counter Logic Gaming. Pole Belter on the Ezreal. As the team always said, once we get to the fights, Pole Belter can provide the damage, and that's champion. He can still do that on. I think as well, it's worth noting that Team Liquid did not uh, get their red, so. A three buff start for COG, and they got some mm -hmm. extra gold and experience there. Because uh, they were able to deal away the whole camp. And uh, Smithy, after a good start for himself yep. on Gragas. They had more camps to work with. And that's the added benefit of the double lift Afro invade. Even though double lift and Afro lost, I think it was two minions in their lane. Um, oh, during their little excursion? Yeah. yeah. They were able to buy an extra camp for their jungler duo with those. He checked it. Yeah. You know, this is a big moment. Everybody walks past that brush. <laughs> he checked it. We will remember this Afro day. Afro Moo, the golden god. <laughs> if Wait, watch how you say that. It might make people angry. Five minutes in, if Paul Belter has the wave just over even right now. And he's kind of in the face of Phoenix. Oh. Don't take a bit of damage for it. Zigzag, you guys, zig and zag. <laughs> Did not do enough of either. He walks straight away from the line. Not what you do. Fastest way away from it, but it doesn't help in that sense. Yep. Gotta bot dodge it. Yeah, bot lane looking pretty safe. 34 to 32. Quick pickaxe by here from Double Lift. And once they went back and came back to the bottom lane and matched up here. And it's the double long swords looking for that phage in for Piglet. Pretty safe, though. Doesn't look like there'll be any added pressure from the junglers here. Santor, or rather, yes, Xmithy, I should say. Going to be on that bottom side. And we have a roam here from Pobelter as well. I don't think he's going to go too far. Yeah. Pobelter, fairly quiet early game for him. Very happy to go farm. Farm for farm with Phoenix. <laughs> Over there in the mid lane. Both of them just trying to farm up. Double Finafro in the duo after swapping back here. Constantly trying to shove in and buy time for the teleport. Gank. CLG have played that multiple times. Looks like that one was stopped. Quas got the knockback, I believe, on Zion. So that was a good call. That was a very quick call from CLG that they were interrupted on the teleports. Mm -hmm. It did cost a, cost Quas a lot of health, though. I think that's why Zion went for the teleport in vision. Yeah. Cost a little bit of lane, too. 35 to 10 isn't the greatest situation you want to be in here. Level 5 to 4. Trying to kind of flex his muscles and say, I got someone coming. And he does. He's right. Oh, yeah. Just a little ways off, and it may be oh, too little, yeah. too late. Quas gets hit. Zion's farting under the turret. It's definitely going to go down for his troubles, but he is able to pick up first blood in the game. That next goes over to Dominate with an assist. Why is Pope out there so far back in lane? Maybe he just recalled again. Um, but he's not really going to be able to punish that. Uh, well, yeah, he actually is. He, he had, just, he had just recalled. Ah, uh, so he had just recalled. So that's why. Uh, 
Pogo Alter had given up mid lane positioning. So Zion, by going for that kill, there was no way he was coming out of that alive. So yeah. he had to be successful in his mission. He was, and he got the first blood. So he was at least able to get the first blood bonus, which is basically made up for by the assist bonus since it was an assisted team liquid kill. Right. Dragon started up by COG. In answer, though, with everybody going top to pick that kill up. Woo! That explosive charge damage, nothing to be messed with. Pole Belter smite. smites it away. No worries for Xmithy there. His smite was down. And they're able to come up big on it. Good communication from CLG and quick movement. Gets them just a step ahead of TL for the Dragon Control. Yeah, so it's that chain of events with Zion drawing everyone up top, mm -hmm. um, forcing them to commit resources in order to answer the kill. Does earn CLG that small window. They were able to take Dragon down. Didn't see how many minions died mid, but several. <laughs> Good clear. Getting that coverage back. Not giving any wards, however, or maybe doesn't have any wards right now for Piglet. They want to put out that pink is there, but they would not be able to control it. So he's going to go back, playing it safe, take a sip of his drink and ready up and get back in the lane. Not really any gold lead here in favor of CLG. Just those dragon stats, they're going to help a little bit. Look at this matchup, though. I mean, Sion is just waiting to beat him down again. Mm -hmm. That be it came, maybe became very difficult for Quas. Be interesting to see how he finds his way out of this. He did. He got ripped off in the lane swap. <laughs> is what happened. The double jungle being interrupted and forcing dominate back meant that Quas's junk double jungle was then hindered. He couldn't do much because he had to wait for dominate yeah, to go back and heal. The big and picture is really coming into play now that, of what that happened. Then by the time he was able to get to the lane, he's already behind. Oh, he's only going to have a shield. No monsoon. The Howling Gale does come out. That's about all a special can offer as he hightails it out of there. Unfortunate playing in a false sense of security actually cost Kwas's life. Good play. CLG had the right number of people there as well. I think that actually could have been thwarted if it was only two. But they bring three to the table. Yeah. Sis and whatnot getting around. Nice job. See if they can keep this up. Liquid's keeping the wards up, though, making sure that this doesn't start folding over to the jungle. CLG, when they were having so much of their success last split as well, it had a lot to do with their lane swaps and their level ones and everyone else being a bit behind and having to catch up to them. This one, I actually want to go back and look at that, uh, the early stages of the game once again, because the ramifications for Quas been huge. Special, a bold invade there, and a lot of missed skills from everybody. Music <laughs> walks away. It's like everybody stays safe for now. They're in the I don't want to be the one to make a mistake mode. And this causes very, very safe play. It's hard to get some aggression out of this. Which one do you want? Scuttle or Pink Ward? All right. Both. Rip, can I have both? You could choose both. Kate can eat it too. Actually, looks like he might. Yep. That was actually a pretty sick play. He kept the Scuttle Crab from regenerating by smacking it with the Prey Seeker while yep. killing the Pink Ward. I love efficiency. Saved probably two seconds there for himself. There you go. Two seconds in some sports is a hell of a lot of time. In League of Legends, two seconds can mean quite a bit as well. Liquid now pushing the top turret. They're going to be able to take this one down. Same amount of pressure you're feeling from CLG in the bot lane, however. Should trade these nicely. A bit of an invade as well by Nick Smithy in the jungle here to make sure he can get some deep boards. Alpharu is also in the face of Quas, making sure he's getting as little as possible. Not even these jungle camps and the wolves can be Quas's. It's a tough game for him. Yeah, and CLG's uh, gold lead about to balloon here as they answer turrets 2 to 2. Double is going to get the local. Avarice Blade the entire time ticking for him as well on the Tristana. Let's see, he got 100, only 154, so it wasn't his first purchase. But he got some mileage out of it. Yep. And he will continue to do so as he works towards his Infinity Edge. Ooh. All those wards placed deep. See, dominate even tunneling out of the wolves over to his top side of the map. This is going to start providing a lot of necessary information for CLG. Pole Belter pushing mid every time he's got that true shot barrage up. You can see it just on cooldown. 
Phoenix cheating with his CS there, grabbing all the small one laser birds out of the rafters. One laser over the wall. I mean, it's good money, too, for the mid laner. It's just that you're actually legitimately just taking that money out of your jungler's pocket. You're not, you're not speeding anything up for your team. Rek'Sai kills those just by auto-attacking the front one. <laughs> So no time saved or anything. Just gold transfer. Note to self, don't steal Kobe's jungle. <laughs> now, the biggest part of this game is how far CLG have kept Quas down yeah. after that earlier jungle invade. Big glaring. Biggest problem for Team Liquid right now, and they're trying to figure out how to work around this. Piglet, uh was a really bold move because he doesn't have any backup. Zan's probably thinking, that guy, oh. must, that guy must have somebody in the area because why the hell would he just Valkyrie at my face? <laughs> if, Zion, if Zion only knew that Piglet was by himself, <laughs> he would have easily just 100 percent Piglet for that move. Oh, yeah. Piglet doesn't even have any boots right now, so I'm unsure that's while Valking how he dodged that anyways. That's that poker face, dude. <laughs> You think I won't Valk in your face? Okay, he flashed. I'm, I'm looking now. Summoner spell. So uh -oh. he definitely had to use some uh, outside spells to get himself into a safe situation. Not just the regular kit. Probably a misclick there. I don't think he was trying to <laughs> Valk the minions. Hey, man, if you are really that hard up for CS, you want every one. Sometimes you got to go above and beyond. You'll Valk that CS down. Dominating the rest of the team, pressuring onto Dragon here. We haven't had any movement yet yeah. from that top lane horse. So, oh boy! For Belter, super. I don't want to be in the Dragon Pit alone by myself right now. <laughs> Jeez. Team Liquid, I heard you need a little help in this game with Quas being so hurt. Dragon's got your back. Gets the last hit for Phoenix there. And Poe Belter walks a little too close to the sun. I think this only continues to strengthen the fact that Ezreal does, in fact, need a map. Oh! But, um, but, um, two turrets, both sides now. No real pressure has actually been added to the map. Just a few dragons back and forth. Teams to be kind of equaling out in this tug of war that we have going on in this game. Double lift to farm up. CS one in his lane. Phoenix, however, has taken control of that lane over Pobelter. And as we continue to say, Zion Spartan, third game on Fizz in a row. The lane swap, he is continuing to snowball the effect they had on Quas and continue to keep him down in CS. So good play so far. CLG goes to move up some boards. Double sweep. Does he get the double? Oh, he didn't go for it. Greg, it's not too light on his feet. Nah. Get it. It's all right. Yeah. I mean, one death is not the end of the world for Poe Belter. He's still looking to try and build up to his... I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it is the end of the world he's done for. It's over. He's still getting his items. He's got his Trailblazer all fixed up. Room Glaive as well. You see, as you were saying earlier, just not that super fast Ludens rush anymore without the spell effects coming off at the end. Triforce now finished up for Zion Spartan. Next move, yeah. Chronologic Gaming. Really, wherever they decide it, they have the trust to take down turrets. Just waiting for Quas to get big so, could be a danger. You said, yeah. I mean, this is the patch. This is 513, um, where the bug fix for Runeglaive applying spell effects is yeah. in. But he's got an amp tome. I'm curious what he's going to build into it. I thought for sure he would go Runeglaive into death tap. Now I am curious. Yeah. What is that? Maybe he just likes a good read. We will see sooner or later. Here it is, finally stepping up on a turret. Let's see what they got. Making sure the minion wave that does come in line actually doesn't have any potential to stop oh, it. Riv, they also chained the build path for a death cap. It, that is, that does build into death cap. Oh, the recipe items, yeah, Coach. Uh, I wonder what you were saying. I totally, I, I was totally like, it lost could be a death cap. <laughs> I thought you were just saying it might be. I forgot I forgot they changed uh indeed. All the AP build paths here. You can always get Continue. a few more I had a moment to spike in. <laughs> always a few more items. That's alright. That's good. Definitely a lot of things people haven't gotten their hands on yet. The 5.13 patch. You're not really an AP jungler at heart, Kobe, so it's okay. <laughs> we'll give it to you. 
18 minutes coming up on the clock now. The Infinity Edge built, built up for double lift to the Triforce of Piglet now. Very confident on that Corky over the past few plays. Doesn't look like they're going to be able to do much to stop this turret, even with that Corky poke. He has already kind of gone towards the bot lane. Doesn't have any minions to push there, however, as it is pushing out. So Team Liquid have to give that one up. They won't want to put themselves in too scary of a situation with how strong CLG is at this point in the game. Kind of spiking a little bit for them, and TL knows it. Yeah, the Trinity Force done on Fizz. Zion Sport is the power of CLG right now. Mm -hmm. And let's see what he can do with it. He's still on that split push path. He still has yet to make a big teleport play. The ward coverage is fairly decent, actually, inside the blue buff quadrant here for Team Liquid. So he's got a bit of protection. But, uh... Doesn't want to give away his lead. He's spiking so hard right now, too. Yeah. At level 11, on top of his training force. In that second ulti. He's the only... Well, I don't think, yeah, I don't think anybody could one versus one him right now uh, from Team Liquid, so... They would have to bring multiple people Ooh. or expend a teleport to try and take him out. We see a small double lift in his favorite environment of free farming up on the top side of the map. Yeah, back in. Zion drawing so much attention down bottom with his split push allows CLG to spread out and farm all three lanes. So because of the power of Zion, uh, CLG have been able to get away with a three lane shove here. Plus, you know, the fact that Tristana does have her own escape enables double lift to try and shove again and they've switched him down bottom so they're just swapping zion and double lift now they're keeping the one three one but swapping places interesting how they want double to go head to head with quas well it seems to me like zion would be able to kill quas if they met heads up right over double is going to catch the late the the more safe wave though easy peasy meeting up in the mid they actually have a 1v1 with Piglet here. If they match up, that ward and the tri brush could see Piglet. He actually backs off without having too much uh, vision of down the lane. He's got enough inside the jungle to push up, but they are playing it very safe right now. Communication across Team Liquid says, our side of the river is the safe side of the river. They have not crossed it yet. Yeah. This is so huge for CLG to be able to use this early power to keep Team Liquid contained while yep. Ezreal builds up. Now he just needs the blasting wand portion of his death cap to be able to complete it. And Pole Belter will be ready to fight fairly soon here. Mm -hmm. I'm sure Zion's ready. He's having a field day. The whole team's pushed up. He only has a short path now to walk through the jungle from those second tier turrets. Taking down Quas in the top, moving towards the mid lane. CLG is playing this one very methodically. They can oh, see that coming in. Three. Let's see if they keep themselves secure here. They're not going to actually fight it. Just Vision wanted from Dominate as he gets the ultimate from Rek'Sai off to get there. Yeah, big word coverage already on the up and up here from CLG. They're going to grab this down. No pressure coming in from Team Liquid, but what could Zion Spartan here? If they cut him off on the backside, here's the ping from Zion. All oh, goes through. Pretty close. That's a bit of Vision. Especially gets hit once. And I don't think they're going to be able to follow up. Not enough catch potential, but they still tried CLG. Looking to put their foot down here. I think that was wise of Team Liquid not mm -hmm. to try and fight that. They have to wait for Quas to become relevant. Oh, he just dinged level six, or level 11, excuse me. He just dinged level 11, so that's- gonna be quite afraid. That's definitely a boost <laughs> for him. However, still sitting on just pieces of items yeah. before he really wants to make uh, an appearance. He's gonna have a very hard time one-shotting Poe Belter in the back line, which is his goal, so got to be very careful how they play this team fight because CLG have a lot of disengage for Pobelter with the Gragas and Alistar, two of the best. What a weird Whoa. spread. That was that was from the beginning, an odd dance for both teams. Liquid kind of walked into a composition of CLG right where they Their were fingers. ready to fight. In and out, a lot of trickery being played with right now, but those are the escapes and invulnerabilities necessary to make this fight work in your favor. Team Liquid backs off as Zion Spartan gets himself into a pretty good situation to start a fight. Yeah, wow. Can't believe Phoenix got out of that unscathed. Yeah. A mere tap to his health bar there. 
He was in a very vulnerable position. Ezreal ultimate down, though, is a huge part for CLG. That's a big portion of the poke that they want to land. Zan going in for the dive. What? Nope, just getting into a... What is he? <laughs> what is... All right. They, they are going to go in. They kind of want to do a little bit of miscommunication here. A missed ulti as well from Zion Spartan. And I think a few people were way on the ready list and a few were on the wait list for that one on CLG's Engage. Hmm. Yeah. An odd mismatched tower dive there. And uh, no Alistar ultimate left means they have to retreat. Definitely hard to get past the Jana, but you're expecting that as you go for the tower dive. Zion Spartan was on his own for that. Getting out safely, though, reflecting on it. CLG attempting a teleport play. Come up short on the liquid dive. They were ready for it. This gives time for Piglet to head back to the bottom lane, start grabbing some CS, and the Team Liquid get a bit of breathing room finally after staving that off. Yeah. They, they have been able to, you know, take evasive maneuvers and play mm -hmm. defense fairly well, but I'm still very skeptical of how Team Liquid are going to ever take out the Ezreal without sustaining a massive amount of poke. Because Quas, if he doesn't have teleport, a home guard teleport, it's going to be very difficult for him to get in. While Hecarim can get very fast, he has no surprise factor about him, no flash. So there's no way for him to jump to the back line. Right. And it makes it very easy for Alistar to headbutt him out. Whenever he comes in, whenever he charges up uh, with the speed boost, Afro can try and uh, headbutt him back. It's going to have to be a either a home guard teleport or maybe an ultimate, an onslaught of shadows over a wall. You can get that far back, but onslaught of shadows by itself, yeah. not usually enough for him to get all the way back. And along with that, it's going to be even harder if the wards can be placed as well. Coming up by counter logic gaming, they're going to see yeah. him coming from any direction. That's a good point. They do need to start getting some some vision up. CLG have had control of the map for quite a long time. Um, that little lull denied their vision on the side of TL here. Need to get some more vision. That one not hurting too much yet. Death cap is completed though. Good spike for Pole Belter in the mid lane. Very slow kill score, but intense game. Seems like the story of the day here. Yeah. Across all the games. You can also see how defensive minded Team Liquid are right now because Expecial rushed into the Aegis of the Legion for the magic resist very early because they knew they were just going to have to take some Ezreal poke early yeah. on rather than actually try and get speed boost from the Talisman and, and get the engage. He's opted for the defensive route and get the magic resist aura to try and buffer the team against this fed fizz and the Ezreal. Oh, Piglet flies oh, over the fish. onto it as well towards the end there. Catches on to Piglet. A lot of damage, but they thought it was actually a missed one. They didn't want to go onto it. Also wanting pressure on this turret. They may think they found what they wanted if they can get some deep rewards back on the side. Yeah. Like Liquid is pressured off enough though. He was able to land the Ezreal ult over the top as well, even yeah. with Janna standing right next to him. Ooh. This is good for Counter Logic Gaming. Starting to spread liquid thin here on the engages. That means the bottom turret is going to be open now for the team. Doublelift should be able to walk back up here and finish off on the other second tier turret in the mid lane. Yep. That Triforce for Fizz will make the start to drop quick. Team Liquid has to figure out how they are going to multitask here. Yeah, they don't want this to break here. If they give up another turret, yep. some more global gold for COG, and the lead does start to balloon. It's starting to become an untenable situation here once Ezreal gets a really takes off from here. So CLG, they have so much turret pushing power if they're able to out rotate. Yeah. You. I mean, their actual damage to turrets, I mean. I mean same, we can almost say the same thing for Team Liquid, right? It's just taking them so long to charge up. Now they have their two Triforces 26 minutes in, which would pretty much be doing the same thing if you had them at the right time. Unfortunate how far they were set back. Still 30 CS for Quas here, trying to make things work. Had that Glacial Shroud for quite some time, keeping himself a tad, tad tanky in these fights. But not Will enough. this Dragon be enough to force a team fight in this game? Yeah, not coming up, now. 27 minutes in, yet to see them fully commit. It looks like Team Liquid still not ready to pull the trigger. As CLG... Yep. All right, All right now, now, it's, now, it's, now it's starting to stink a little bit. 
got a Blasting Wand on top of, actually, I might, he might have used it right before he ulted, but he just drank a Sorcery Elixir as well. Yeah. So Pobalter has a bit of extra AP from that. So you know they have a surplus in money if you're buying the Elixirs here. You want to get these fights in your favor and get some big objectives to turn this game. 3,000 gold is just about the CLG has, working it very methodically around the map right now. Not really looking for kills, but getting the objectives that they want. Yeah. Team Liquid. I mean, it's even it's really hard for them to make even a teleport play because they've been bottled up in their own side of the map for yep. so long, it's hard to get deeper wards down. And it has to be CLG kind of walking over their trap to allow a good flank from Quas. But other than that, Team Liquid basically just have worse poke and a squishier front line. So they just kind of take it. You can't hope to even set up really a barren attempt here. Focus the other team in. CLG would be like, all right, let's poke them out. Sounds good to me. Things are getting tough here. But if the team could find their way out of this one, probably Team Liquid would be one of those teams on that list. It's going to be Dominate taking a bit of early damage here. A lot traded back to Xmithy. Kind of the out and in here would be Team Liquid's best chance. They go out, they try to go in. Is it enough? Phoenix gets bounced back. A lot of control coming from that Afro Moo. And Phoenix goes down. The Monsoon gave a bit of health back to Team Liquid and they're able to stay pretty healthy in the fight. Piglet going to be able to get another kill coming up for the team. Actually, that was over onto Afro Moo. He stays alive and it's still a back and forth. Two for two and all that in the choke point in the jungle. Well, it's not even up to Quas to get back there and kill Ezreal. Phoenix takes matters into his own hands with the Ghost Flash Victor to secure the kill yep. and take out the Ezreal at the back. More big plays here from Phoenix, but again, it's still just even two for two trade. Still G defend mid turret. Wonder how many more times that is going to happen and we're left with a stalemate in the mid lane. How many more times can you blow double summoners to kill him? That's true. It takes five minutes, Kobe. Yeah. Five minutes. Hey, he's got distortion boots, so. Yeah, less than that. <laughs> All right, so Smithy, Smithy starts it off. Uh, he actually gets the worst end of the trade, and Pobelter comes up. He's enthused with the, uh, oh. So Domine actually uses summoner for that too, I guess. Yeah, so that was two flashes and a ghost to be able to close that distance this time around. Um, yeah. Because Poe Belter saw how much damage his Q, he got a little hyphy on that play and walked up. But uh, learned his lesson. And he will keep chugging those Sorceress Elixirs as well. Yeah. Keep him going. That's a pretty expensive habit. <laughs> 400 some gold. 450. Not going to be easy to do all the time. See what everybody's putting in their inventories. However, as we move on, that Frozen Heart and Home Guard's Lucidities are finished up onto Zion Spartan, so he can be back into the game and possibly with the Home Guard attempt here. Might even be a little bit more scarier than, Qu scarier than Quas's at this point. Seeing a fish fly in. Lockets of the Iron Solari are going to be assisting both teams from the AoE magic damage in these fights with that shield as well on the end. Still looking for big plays to turn this game around. Condologic Gaming with definite map control, but it seems like Liquid is just on the cusp of being able to take it back in their control as well. And they're trying to wait, play defensively, soak up some gold, and wait for CLG to give them an opening. Mm -hmm. They don't really, uh, they're starting to get some deeper vision down. At least they've gotten their defensive line of wards up, but uh, Still going to be hard for them to pull one of those plays out yeah. because summoner spells all blown in the last time they tried. Teleport not available either. So Team Liquid do not have a lot of cards to play at this moment. No. And it's up to CLG here to try and make their control on the map more complete and start denying more wards from Team Liquid. Also, I think X Special is going to move into the Talisman build, sell off his oh, spell, uh, speed, spell thieves yeah. and try and build the speed boost because Team Liquid do need more tools in that fight. It's 
see the righteous glory being built up by Aphromoo, so he will Double lift, somehow man, match that speed. Nice explosive cast, dominate tunnels over the wall. He's got to know that he's out. The team has to know that as well. They're missing that crowd control. A huge upfront burst of damage thrown back in from Counter Logic Gaming, and Liquid is really considering this fight now. Counter Logic Gaming over to Baron. They have True Sight on Baron. Everyone from Team Liquid was chunked very low, but. CLG hesitate. I don't think if they're going to go for it oh, immediately, then they're not going to go for it at all. Oh. Okay. The hesitation, they've decided, they've made up their minds. They're going to commit to it. Okay. <laughs> Quash shows his head and they, they abort mission. It's a roller coaster. We can still go back up and back down again. Don't worry about it, Kobe. This one's not over just yet. It seems like both teams are going to call it off. Very, very close on Phoenix, though. Yeah. It hasn't built any. So 15 Magic seconds. Magic resist either to yep. yeah. protect himself that, against That it. is going to be quite painful. I mean, he's not working against too much. Zion's Barton's kind of tanky, but it's still going to hurt from po Pobalt. Good lord. Stacking up here. Dragon number four should go over pretty easily. Dominate's making his way down. How much DPS does Double Lift have? And it looks like he's got enough. Dragon number four, one of the biggest timers to be put on a team in the game. Number five now in the eyes of CLG. Something that Team Liquid will have to stop or at least attempt to. It's going to be a very tough point then. Being by, behind 4,000 gold now. The fight not looking in their favor. See if they can set up the map to work in their favor before they get to that point. It'll be about 40 minutes on the clock when we see that dragon come. Liquid and the rest of the team now towards the mid lane. A teleport play here for Quas, possibly. Could see him go back to base for the home guard, but no forward wards yet for Team Liquid could really make this a thing, unfortunately. Yep. Still looking their wounds. Mm -hmm. They have a small window you know, before next Dragon comes up where they can actually continue to... Uh-oh. Uh -oh. uh -oh. All right, well, that's one small cooldown unavailable for CLG. It's not exactly the opening Team Liquid need it's not bad. to 40, make a play, 45 but... 45 seconds on Chumbo Wonders. Yeah, exactly. It's so a very cool down big points. window. Double lift. He can jump over the wall, but still quite separated from the team for a second. Yeah. He is starting to play really aggressive mm -hmm. with his positioning. Moving up, and wow. All right. Let's start it out. They see no. Zion down bottom, but he's got teleport. That TP time, that's exactly what it takes, is time. And Team Liquid may feel like they have enough of it to pressure this, but there's still a bit of range here to be used by Double Lift. He's getting in some shots. Pobelter! Pobelter very, very low. Arcane shifts to the backside. Double Lift now gets popped up, gets the chance. Quas got him! Before the Monsoon hits it, they take down Pobelter. Quas finally gets that ult they've been looking for. His Ignite kill pressure is still up, along with Expecials. This could still be a very big fight. Big one readied up now for Piglet on Corky. Fires that off. The Monsoon is there for a safe fight, and CLG still has quite a few alts of their own. Just losing Pole Belter is keeping them off of this. Wow, Team Liquid with the Baron bait, draw Pope Belter into the river. Too and dangerous. even with Alistar and Gragas, they're able to make it happen, coming at him from multiple directions. Now they got position on bottom, and they're looking for kills too. CLG is just being routed around their own lanes through the jungle. Isn't even theirs right now with the way the Team Liquid's playing. And they're easy in, easy out after pressuring onto Baron. Oh, man. Man, Zion is in a dangerous Top over spot. The wall. Piglet follows. Piglet's going to be able to chase. The, uh, no red buffs are attacking just yet. Dominate tunnels past to get the smite on. It's going to be a long chase, and I think they might want to give up on this one because here comes the rest of Counter Logic Gaming. Quas is going to follow through, but it's for the exit. They still have to worry about Baron. Now they're the ones being pushed off. <laughs> the shenanigans in this game. Oh. Never ending, and we're still a rat baron here. CLG gonna start it off again. Aphromoo does not have Alistar ultimate. Back around. Neither does Zion. Dominate getting his tunnel game on. He's ready to go over. They don't have too much vision actually into that baron pit right now. Everything's been cleared out. Okay, top side wasn't 3,000 HP. Piglet, can he do it again? Wall. Is it gonna happen? Piglet also there as well. It goes over to Six Smithy. They're gonna be able to lock that one down. Piglet now getting hit up. Double lift crushes him. And the back and forth game of Baron is what cost the fight. Finally, 37 minutes. Not today. Not today, Piglet. 
Dominate and Piglet can't combine for the steal. They sacrifice their lives and mid turret for the attempt at the steal. And Team Liquid's base is forfeit. Wow. 20 seconds on the clock here for Dominate at least. Quas, Janna, or rather Hecro Majana now providing much wave clear. The monsoon does what it can, but you have a Tristana on the Nexus turrets. And it's going to be taken down quite fast to try for it to well as Zion Spartan Counter Logic Gaming taking down Team Liquid and definitely showing a true change in the slump for their midseason. CLG take down Team Liquid. Woo! One team fight to rule them all. I guess so, right? It was a little bit of a barren there. So back and forth. Just having a different set of composition showed a completely different team style fight of Team Liquid. While they had their, you know, AP mid, Phoenix, it wasn't that Azir. Phoenix's Azir controls the fight an incredible amount with the divide, the ability to keep soldiers up and keep them placed. The fight from Team Liquid did not seem like they could engage as usual. The chances they took, still the same Team Liquid, able to make things happen when coming from behind but they definitely extended a bit too much on that Zion Spartan chase. I think in and out on that one, and they would have been in a good position. Zion Spartan's little wild goose chase there really, really made the Baron happen for CLG. Sticking around there. A bit too long. Hmm. Quite an odd game there. <laughs> you could say that. I have to go back and look at the opening moments of it, actually. You could say that. I mean, it was surprising how long Quas was able to stay in the game to get himself built up, being I don't know how many CS down yeah. as CLG was able to create that early start to the game. Pressuring it a bit, though, they found themselves in the right spots at the right time. Maybe look at the mid game where things kind of slowed down. Yeah, the other team gets six, they get a few core items, and you have to consider that. But I still think teams can go a little bit stronger there. Not a flaw, just something to look forward to. <laughs> Not a flaw at all. That was a good game. Smithy happy with that play. Looking at Counter-Logic Gaming's past kind of comp. It's Team Dignitas versus Gravity. These times both almost a lock to the playoffs. Gravity are in Dignitas. Still a couple games to go to secure their spot. But it's a showdown of ice and fire, honestly. Dignitas in a slump. They've lost four of their last five. They were first place in week four. Now they're sixth. Yeah, and one of the reasons that Team Dignitas is now struggling, it feels like, is because when things were going well, they didn't know why they were winning. Kiwi Kid said that in an interview. And if you don't necessarily know what you're doing to win, then it's hard to fix problems when you start losing. And for Team Dignitas now, it's especially difficult because they've also been dealing with changes in the coaching staff. Rico, unfortunately, has to take some time away for personal matters. And over now will be Coach Brokenshard from their Challenger squad. Yeah, so I did talk to Brokenshard. He says that Rico is still involved, but he just they need a little bit of help here, so he's going to be here. He's coaching Dignitas mm -hmm. Europe, the Challenger team who's currently undefeated. So at least he's got some kind of a good pedigree this year. But of course, on the other side of this matchup, it's just everything looking absolutely amazing for Gravity. They are currently tied for the split's longest winning streak. This split, the, that record, with six straight wins. They also are holding on to first place. Team Liquid, their biggest opponent, just lost a game a second ago. So these guys are nearly a lock for a playoff bye. Yeah, and we mentioned earlier, they are through the toughest part of their schedule. So Gravity, they should have smooth sailing ahead if they can just remain consistent. Another small thing we want to keep our eye on is how Gravity handles this new patch, whether they do a Say to Devour Jungler, what items they build in the mid lane, because they've been one of the more unique teams, but now we're going to kind of get an idea of how adaptable they are and how quickly they try and take advantage of changes. Yeah, we'll be, see we'll be seeing if it's a, a fun one for us. So, uh, you know, we'll see if changes do occur, but one thing that probably won't change, according to Core JJ, is that Gravity is trying to set up all tech to carry. 아, 되게 그 팀에서 지금 후반 캐리를 완벽하게 맡아주고 있다고 생각하기 때문에 초중반에 나머지 팀원들이 이제 게임을 만들고 후반 돼서 알텍이 좋은 포지셔닝이나 공격적인 무빙으로 되게 게임을 잘 캐리해 가는 것 같아요. Yeah, honestly, Alltech has been one of the biggest boons. I remember when we first talked to Bunny Fufu about the change in AD carries, he said that uh, Alltech was uh, better than Cop, specifically at the laning phase, that he would have to learn a slightly better team fighting because Cop was so safe. But it seems like Alltech's just grown so well in the position, and he's been everything that Gravity's ever needed from that role. Yeah, highest damage in the league uh, for his team. 
and also playing safe. So two yep. thumbs up. Two thumbs up for Alltech. If I had a third sum, I'd put it up there as well. But we're going to check out the starting lineups. And on the blue side is Gravity here. Top lane, Hanser, Jungle Move, mid lane, Keen. Alltech doing great on AD Carry. Bunny Fufu -Foo on support with Coach Cop. And on the red side here, we have Team Dignitas. Gamsu in the top lane, Helios in the jungle, Shifter in mid lane, Core JJ, who we just heard from on AD Carry, and Kiwi Kid on support with new this week, Coach Broken Shard. Coach Broken Shard here. He's actually had some really interesting things to talk about. He was telling me about his uh, his challenger team and the crazy things they're trying out. They had played some some Zyra mid, and you know, they've been ready to bring out a bunch of crazy things. Maybe Dignitas will get to challenge gravity in, in the interesting picks department. Mm -hmm. Uh, right now. It, right it's now. Just, you know, Shifter just decided he was going to learn Anivia and Zyra for the mid lane when he hasn't played them all year, and it's just going to be a different thing than the toss. Unlikely. We'll see. we'll see. Very unlikely. Good prediction, Freak. Yeah. <laughs> Straight away. Please don't. Uh, all right, but it's going to be a fun one, absolutely. Gravity, only a few games away, sitting at 11 wins, only a few games away from guaranteeing a first round bye in the playoffs. Uh, they, I think, only need to win two more to guarantee that for themselves. Uh, that's about the right number for this one. We'll see. But we're going to see what happens in picks and bans. Azir, Kalista still off the table. We are on 513. Those nerfs to Kalista have not seemed to make her less popular than before. Still seeing her yeah. plenty. I mean, so much about Kalista remains true. Uh, being able to pull your support out, uh, ridiculous objective control, mm -hmm. slightly less scaling, but people weren't necessarily taking Kalista to six items anyway, so. Uh, even if it does change, it'll take a while before that happens. Uh, main thing I want to point out is the smart Nidalee ban by Team Dignitas. I feel like that's been one of Moog's most successful champions, but it does obviously leave through Shen, which will most likely be going to Bunny Fu. That's true, and Bunny's been an absolutely great Shen support here. I actually want to know if Moog can play more carry-style junglers with his Sightstone rushes. Devour junglers typically wanted to farm a whole lot, and uh, if you're running around warding, that might delay your Devourer spikes. So we'll see if there's any other carry junglers he wants to play here. Meanwhile, Dignitas able to grab up a couple of great AD carries. Corgi seems next in line behind Callista and Saber, so that got grabbed. Helios going to be just fine on Rek'Sai. Yeah, some nice quick lock-ins there by Team Dignitas as well, showing some confidence on the side right there. I mean, corky has been a priority AD carry pick mm -hmm. kind of across the globe in the last few weeks. Some hypothesis for that, obviously, Corky's always been pretty strong in the laning phase, but games have been trending downwards in game time, so we're yeah. seeing some more mid-game power spike-focused teams, uh, and Corky is huge for that. I think the real reason, Chad, is that Worlds is coming, and Worlds wouldn't be complete without Corky being popular, so I think it's just something in the air. When, one, when summer and fall comes around, Corky just, everyone wants to play him again. It's the one true reason. The one true reason. Worlds is coming. Corky must be played. But next in line, we're going to see the same matchup yet again. Tristana here seems yeah. to be a great laner. Braum also to, to uh, join in. And block some of the poke that would be coming out from Corky. Braum uh, coming in as an anti-poke in a lot of different team compositions now. It also means that we're going to be seeing Shen in the top lane. So no more buddy Fufu -Foo support Shen. Uh, the Trist as well is a lock-in that has been seeing more popularity lately. I had prophesied previously that Tristana didn't really have many areas of strength, wasn't winning the lane, but if you could get a lane swap and kill the turret, she's good at being a demolitionist. Mm -hmm. uh, and it really feels like those small windows of power are what people are trying to uh, take advantage of when they pick Trist. Yeah, absolutely. And we are sitting on 513, so the Rune Glaive had those small changes. It doesn't apply Ludens or Rileys anymore in like an Ezreal queue, but it feels like we're still seeing a lot of AP Ezreal. And you talk about Trist, I want to talk about Braum. I feel like he's both good and against AP Ezreal. If you consider that champion very popular, Braum rises in stock. And yeah, maybe even, it's a setup here. Even just last night, uh, Madlife played Braum against an AP Ezreal and was just consistently blocking the Ezreal ultimate again and again. Very effective. Incredibly effective at that. Jinx is another one you can helpfully block. But yeah, anything with a pass-through nuke just tends to get really wrecked by the Braum shield. But we're not going to see it on the gravity lineup. It's going to be a bunch of dive, actually looking much more like the old gravity from last split. Whole bunch of damage out in front. We've got Vi picked up here. And it's going to be, I guess, mid-rumble then for Keen. Yeah. And the real question will be, do we see Sightstone Vi from move? Or will he break his streak mm -hmm. of building a Sightstone in every single game? Uh, this also creates an interesting matchup for Shifter in the mid lane. Keen loves to throw people off by bringing different things into the mid lane. He's brought Rumble into the mid lane, I believe, once this split already, and it was one of their defeats. It was against CLG in week three. Uh, so Shifter, he's going to want to keep his distance and just try and farm out. We'll see what he does. Well, looks like keeping his distance could happen just fine with Ari. And Rumble being a little bit low mobility means getting picked yeah. on by Rek'Sai Ari is definitely a possibility here. <laughs> I, yeah. 
<laughs> to the economy. He's just like, click all the A champions, go down the letters. Got brand for a second. I don't think that's going to be very likely here. And we are going to see the Ari mid in from Shifter. This was a champion. We haven't seen him on a lot in the recent past, but one of his higher impact champions that we used to see back in 2014. I still remember his famous win over TSM back when he was on Coast. It's true. When he was hard carrying on the uh, late game Lich Bane Ari. But either way, it's going to be a high mobility assassin mid. And we got to see Incarnation play this in our first game of the day. He was 9-0 and on Ari. Ari is one of the champions who can see a comeback on this patch, uh, most likely with the Rylai's Crystal Scepter. It applies to 40% slow on most of Ari's abilities. So this will be a very interesting matchup to see if Shifter can break through the somewhat bruisery AP mid. Uh, not as many squishies on this gravity team as we saw when Incarnation played Ari in the first game of the day against his yeah. opponents. Uh, as always, an interesting draft phase when you have gravity in the picture. And now we get to see Shifter on an Assassin. We get to see Shifter on an Assassin. I'm a really big fan of that one. We'll see if he can break himself out of his normal habits of just playing very passively in lane and not making many waves. He used to be a much more aggressive player. We'll see if that happens here. Both coaches. Brogashard told me he wanted to do a funny handshake with Cop, and Cop didn't want didn't to. Didn't happen. Yeah, apparently Brogashard wanted to be a memer, and Cop was like, "That's I'm going to police that. We're going to shut this one down. No memes allowed in the Rift to me. I thought Broken said he was done with memes. No. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be real. That's Set never going to be the case. Broker Shard is never done with memes. But while the teams load onto the Rift, share your thoughts and share your game spoilers with us. Tweet at Level Esports. Let us know whether it's going to be hashtag GV win or hashtag DIG win to take this game down. I'll be the picks to your Lulu heart. I love that. Thank you guys so much. We're here into the game. Gravity versus Team Dignitas. I'll be the picks to your Lulu, so you're always near until she throws you on to someone else. But then you come back. Eventually. I mean, six seconds is not exactly a long time. Yeah, all right. Welcome sure. to yeah. Summoner's Rift. Do you remember the, uh... Ah, it's not a useful reference. <laughs> it's too much of a stretch. Gravity looking to set up a brief death brush early on in the game. See if they can track any of these level ones, and I don't think it's going to be a risk for really anyone here. All right, and they go to the jungle. Okay, so Keen tracks Shifter and the resulting 4v4 Gravity push in and will not kill that Trinket Ward. Mm -hmm. And Gravity has had some incredibly clever spawn. level ones in a lot of their games. Great jungle starts, oftentimes just letting move start out ahead of the enemy jungler. Uh, this time, they're pretty, pretty standard lane swap type wards where they just brute force invade to get the deep wards. Uh, I wonder if Gravity is going to put their own spin on this or if they're just going to do a normal double jungle type thing where they split sides with their strong side of lane. It just depends on the lane assignments. And right now, with not a lot of wards spotting Lane's where gravity's standing, standing, anyone could recall, anyone could walk back. Mm -hmm. Dignitas will see the bottom lane assignments if people do recall and head down, but those wards will not see anything. Gravity ping out. They know where the one defensive ward is in that brush by the raptors. Dignitas will be setting up a freeze for their bottom lane and letting their top laner and jungler just carry on through their strong side of the map. Yeah, because currently Gravity's not setting anyone into that lane to freeze it intentionally. They're just letting the wave meet. And they take the small Krug, then go. Well, so it's yeah, slightly I'm slightly not... different for sure. You know, honestly, as of about a month and a half ago, about a month, I think, uh, we'd been seeing the level ones change or the lane swap games change to where you knock down the turret on the second or third wave with everyone but your jungler. And in those cases, you don't need to freeze because you're trying to push the wave out anyway. And yes. I wonder if it's going to be the same move for gravity. And it allows you more freedom in your level ones because you don't need to be there. Yeah, and I mean, I guess gravity's now going to go over and take the other Krug. So they'll still just kind of do a 4VO uh, is the, the look. It, it provides a playmaking opportunity for Team Dignitas right now. They basically either get to do a free gank mid or take the bottom turret to match. But because all four were pretty much Careful. shown, Keen on a run left, but the charm's going to land. Shifter level two, the flay in there as well. That's easily first blood. I'm not sure why he flashed, but oh, hold on. He makes Kiwi Kid flash away. Well, he, Kiwi Kid didn't want to take the kill. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Two flashes then. Because Keen flashed away, I can't hit on that one too much. Top lane turret still taking damage. Move wants his blue buff, but Helios says hello. He's got smite, doesn't want to try to steal. 
Yeah, I mean, he also technically knows that there's no one there to support. Um, maybe a teleport could have came in from Hanser to stop, so just some subdued aggression there by Helios. I like the team. They're going to toss play, and I, I kind of dislike Keen for being pushed up that far when he under yeah. he should have understood the situation of how many people Gravity have shown on the top side of the map, how he is a melee mid laner, and how he needs to respect the roam in this lane swap situation. It's a very common play Absolutely. to roam your jungler support mid lane. Uh, while your AD carry is taking the bottom lane turret, Team Vingertoss pulls it off, gets first blood, and it cost them a flash on the mid laner, but that's a great start for Shifter anyway. Yeah, they equalized the turret kill. I mean, honestly, only good things to say about how Dignitas have played their early game here. As we crest four minutes in, life is nice. Another question is, where do people assign their lanes? We typically expect top lane is top lane, AD carry supports bottom lane, Dragon would be an objective at some point. Looks like that is the situation. But the displacement here is there is no defensive turret up for Gamsu. So uh, if Hanser overpushes, then he's overextended. But if, if the lane stays frozen up there, then Gamsu has no turret to fall back to. Yeah. And Altec has done this a couple of times as well. Avers Blade start. Uh, this time he actually runs into Hanser's lane, so I'm really curious where Hanser is going to find his farm right now, especially if Core JJ is able to freeze that bottom lane. This level 2 Shen uh, is very quickly, maybe Bunny Fu, Fu should have played top lane this game, because he may become a support Shen if he's unable to find farm. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. He lives though back into the mid lane, but without Flash, he's not going to find his gank here and feels safe. Good hook on the move, but nothing really gained there off the top Scuttle Crab being killed. It is worth noting, Altec has not learned Explosive Charge yet, so he's really trying to keep this lane somewhat frozen. He knocked on that initial outer turret without taking charge, yeah. and he's just... That's all he will ever do with Avers Blade, yeah. right? Yeah. There's no way he wants to walk up to Corky, especially as Corky's building towards that Trinity Force. The power spike is so different at this point uh, that Altec is just saying, when he finishes Infinity Edge and Static Shift, then maybe he'll fight. He basically would want to freeze until then. Yeah, and that's just going to be the case here. Problem is, though, of course, Corky doing the exact same thing and freezing, and unless one of these guys outscales, and I don't really give the edge to either one, it just kind of becomes a wash here. So then, what happens to the resulting 3v3? AD carries frozen, mid laner stuck in mid, and the Rome squad is Gravity mostly playing aggressively on that top jungle near their own AD carry. The reinforcements allow them to take away some wards, allows them to take away some of these jungle camps. Yeah, but again, Gravity has been so stellar with their rotations and their decisions of where to move on the map. That is a little surprising to see them open up this game uh, with Keen jumping in the wrong place. And now they just rotated four people up to the lane that is frozen uh, for not much good. Like, yes, they did invade the jungle, but it just opens up the jungle on the backside. That's, yeah. it's a conflict free move and you generally don't need to support that guy. Oh, and it opens you up again for some exploitation in the mid lane. And teleport. <laughs> TP in from Shen and literally nothing happens to anybody here. Dignitas able to walk away from under the turret. No one pulled aggro, but Keen actually charmed up. Low on health and not level six. Equalized would have been big. The oh. flash Q shifter is flashless and not level six. So Kiwi can now also get jumped on. He has no escapes either. And a trade kill comes back through. Nice one for Hanser. Gravity running away, good kill. Yeah, just as I say, Gravity wasn't making good rotations. They make a really nice one. Shen teleporting in as the dive arrives, so no one wants to commit because they're afraid of getting taunted under the turret to that teleport Shen. And by the way, here come Move and Bunny Fufu -Fu to finish the job. And since Helios had taken so much damage from the turret, they display the proper amount of aggression in order to close in on that kill. And I gotta say, impressive stuff by Gravity, because even though the first blood was given to Dignitas, which is about 150 bonus gold compared to a regular kill, it's Gravity who hold the gold lead uh, via wave control, taking down farm, taking down monsters and whatnot. So uh, Gravity the gold that they, they probably shouldn't have had. Nicely done. Yeah, this could have been a pretty clean dive, but it is hard to dive a level five rumble. Uh, oh, Helios could pretty tanky, and he's a door and shield. Helios, or too afraid to. Yeah, bit of a danger right there. And then it all starts with a nice flash cue for Bunny Fufu. He ends up also getting an auto attack on Kiwi Kid, which ends up landing with the stun. Uh, that's a nice aggressive play by Bunny, knowing how much damage he was able to take and being aggressive for the kill. And there's the Sightstone before Warrior upgrade on move. Wow. So it turns out the gold is from Average Blade. I just checked. It's 147 on Average Blade, which is like pretty much the exact gold that Gravity have, make, have made up. So there's the reasoning here. Dignitas, though, still the team playing a bit more aggressively. They went for the mid lane dive. They went for Dragon. Dragon's going to be theirs indeed. So uh, yeah, I guess it, it's it's funny because it's just the lane swap game playing even further. The turrets die, but then the lanes got frozen again anyway. And and so it's you know the mirror jungling where one team gets the top left, one team gets the bottom right. Well, now things get interesting because. 
Alltech has frozen the top wave, and Hanser is in position to freeze the bottom wave. Uh, so Team Dingertoss needs to make an aggressive move to unfreeze one of these waves, otherwise the gold gap will balloon. Team Dingertoss did the appropriate thing when someone is freezing top lane by taking the dragon, but they've lost this freeze in the bottom lane, and they need to find a way to get farm. Otherwise, it's literally just Shifter who's going to be able to get the farm. And that's a rough thing. We saw... Uh... Team Fnatic actually do this exact thing themselves. These two freezes, and actually these two champions, not champions, but uh, the two roles there, and they gave away to, uh, not sorry, not Fnatic, I was thinking of the wrong team, but um, in Challenger, it was a- uh, Renegade. Renegades did it, thank you, there we go. Got it, got it together. Renegades did advance Coast, uh, a team that was previously undefeated coming into that game, and they froze for 12 minutes straight, gave away two dragons, and then just won with a gold lead from their lane farm, so. Yeah. The question is, how well can Gamsi do this? How well can Dingertoss break these freezes? Yeah. Well, the game now is all about uh, Team Dingertoss. They sent Korja J in the top lane because he is in a power spike, knowing it's just an uh, Iris Blade all tech up there. So he can still farm. But the problem is, is he's in a very vulnerable long lane. So basically, if Gravity wants to maintain this farm advantage, they need to be able to gank people when they push past their comfort zone on these lanes. And they just haven't been able to do that. Uh, move unable to get in position before Core JJ can shove out the lane. Yeah, move might try soon. He's not far from six. I don't believe he'll get it off of this scuttle crown, though. They're not worth a lot of experience. Go check to make sure, but without the ulti, it's going to be. Oh, he does. Just just barely enough ah. experience. And that means well, game on. probably dead. That's exactly what Move needs to do. Ulti, Shenult as well. Braum Shield just, just because. And there you go. Hanser gets the kill. Nice pickup right there. No real defense at all, and no wards. Kiwika did not ward for that lane whatsoever, and that means down goes Corky. So unfortunately, the Shen ult was completely unnecessary. They wanted him farming in the bottom lane to maintain a freeze, unless they decide to make more plays with Shen, which they're kind of forced to do so now because they've abandoned that bottom wave. Uh, either way, textbook gank there mm -hmm. by Gravity. Core JJ needed to cover more distance before Move could just click on him with Assault and Battery. Maybe he could have forced more summoners that way. But either way, without the wards and when he's pushed up that far, as Gravity makes that rotation, that's what's going to happen. Yeah, and it looked like uh, Gamsu also kind of left the bot lane alone. He went back to the jungle to farm. So uh, even though Shen's not the bottom lane, neither is Nar. So as far as that kind of gold loss, it's, it's a moot point here. And it just means Gravity now winning uh, by a pretty sizable 1,500 gold here 11 minutes in. Gamsu is chilling down because there just aren't any wards. Like, Kiwikid hasn't gotten wards to help his teammates farm in this situation. Yeah, a distinct lack of vision by Team Dignitas. But that's also because they've been put in the spots where the wards are an absolute necessity. As Gamsu struggles to clear these, to even get his level 6 in the jungle. Whereas Gravity has put themselves in situations where they don't necessarily need wards. The turrets and moves they're making are near their own turrets. Yeah, super safe. But Team Dignitas is having to push beyond because they haven't necessarily managed the waves nearly as well as Gravity. And even smart by move here to actually smite his own wolf to get that the uh, the vision there. Just to make sure tricky things don't happen behind this turret that Altec is basically soloing or was. But now the entire team switched to the bottom lane. They went to knock down some turrets. They feel like it's good enough with the BF sword and pickaxe in. This will be the second turret kill of the game. Dignitas do, to their credit, answer this. So as far as like major map moves go and objective calls, I mean, Dignitas are fine, but the 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 micro kill sort of situations just tends to go Gravity's way. Absolutely. And as I say that, this app. Good flash, good knock, good everything actually. Shifter though, missing the charm, but the second FAQ should be enough. Gets the kill indeed. Both deaths keen. Yeah, very unfortunate overheat timing there by Keen as well. It would have been nice to have an equalizer due to the duration of that gank. Also to maybe flash within turret range, so the Team Vigantos takes turret fire. He flashed out of turret range, which allowed Team Vigantos to fall into a safe dive zone. Uh, nice dive by Team Vigantos, though, to make a play. They need to force moves uh, to get these waves under control. Yeah, and, and honestly, I do have to say that, you know, for the lack of wards, though, Dignitas is still doing a great job of actually finding these ganks and really pressuring these champions out. The Wolf Spirit, to the to the credit of Dignitas, like, the Wolf Spirit saw those guys in the top jungle, and then Keen once again failed to respect the fact that there were people to his left-hand side that could wrap around his turret, so... Uh, so maybe some missteps here by him, but... Uh, bot lane tier 2 did go down during all the craziness, so Alltech knocked that down himself. Dignitas, of course, knocked down mid-outer for their gank, so we still see more or less a trade of objectives, just one that was worth more from Gravity. And we're now one minute away from Dragon spawning up on the map, and look at the money, we can have a finished Infinity Edge Resort Grease for Alltech, yeah. and 
Trinity Force also ordered in for Core JJ. So both these AD carries actually pretty yeah. much online. Altec also maxed his rapid fire, so he'll be full attack speed coming into this. It'll be a very important thing to track in this match, just Altec's ability to stay in the back line safely versus Team Dignitas's ability uh, to kill him. Team Dignitas in their last six games has not been able to kill 80 carries. Uh, worst pace in the league. They've only killed opponent 80 carries a total of four times in the last six games. Ouch. Or roughly 7% of their team kills have been on opponent 80 carries. And it's with Team Dignitas playing fairly dive heavy team compositions. Yeah. They really haven't been able to kill opponent 80 carries and they've been getting crushed for it. That's even more important against Gravity, a team that relies on Alltech for more of their damage than any other team in the LCS. And also one of the safest Best AD carries as far as a death perspective. Only Piglet has died fewer times than him. And now Altec also has a good start. So that could be the decider in this game as we go for the next drag. We're seeing a whole lot of damage come out though. This dive could come around. Second dragon picked up. Kibiki taking a whole bunch of pain, but the target switched over. Move just gets evaporated for that one. And we're going to see the chase continue as Hanser does manage to knock down Kibiki. But Gamsu, whoa! Massive gnar ultimate right across the bow is the REQ. And this could be the exact fight Dignitas wanted. A quadra? A quadra kill for Shifter. Red buff is on. Charms up. Good flash by Altec with the flash. Q, He's got a pentakill for Shifter! A 14 minute pentakill for Shifter, and now all seven of Team Dignitas' kills. What just happened right there? We said Team Dignitas needed to kill the AD carry, or they'd have struggles. How about they just kill <laughs> everybody else and leave Alltech completely on his lonesome? That entire fight, though, I think was made by Gomsu's NAR ultimate. I cannot wait to watch that again. It looked like he got a four man stun and he caught Alltech mid rocket jump. And it was just beautiful. So the dragon taken down, right? Trinity Force yeah. spike AD carry loses done because the shifter's kill is also yeah. big. So first off, Team Dignitas forces the dragon. They knew they had to teleport with Shen, so Team Dignitas jumps on this fight early. Equalizer doesn't actually get them that low. And then Gamsu sat on this Gnar the whole time, right at the end of his Gnar bar. I'd say a poor jump there by Alltech, but just amazing timing there. Without that our ultimate stunning that many people on the wall. This was a close fight that Gravity was looking to clean up. That's why Alltech was rocket jumping in. And then Shifter, knowing he still has the flash, just crushing. What does he have now? He's going, looks like he's going Rylize with those next two items, but he is huge right now. And if you want to kill an AD carry, a seven kill Ari is a pretty good start. Yeah, I'm going to say that's pretty nice. So Dignitas, I mean, really capitalizing on the fact that they got Shifter ahead. That's two kills. They got from in the laning phase from Keen disrespecting the gank potential. Well executed by Dignitas. And then, yeah, having items sooner than you're supposed to in that team fight made a very large difference. So a lot of scary champions, cooldown boots. The choice for Shifter, interestingly, just kind of tracking has, as builds change in 513 with the AP item changes. He, he you know, uh, so, dodged Merlin Amicon and got cooldown somewhere else. This is an aside. I've actually, I've seen a lot of Aries go with cooldown boots. Froggen did it uh, in the playoffs last year in Europe. A totally, totally different set of circumstances. He actually had a six item build with no magic pen whatsoever. And you can kind of get away with it on Ari just because of the true damage component on the queue. Obviously, magic pen will be more damage overall. But if you're just worried about the rotations of your spells going through and through, because of the true damage, magic penetration is slightly deprioritized on Ari. And they're going for Ari. The hard dive by Shen, but move gets blown up the warrior vibe is not tanky enough and another Q comes through Gamsu gets the kill unfortunately for Shifter he's got assists now but still 100% kill participation this is looking like Team Dignitas from a couple of weeks ago four weeks ago when they were on that winning streak and they took down Team Liquid and who else was it in the same week it was very Team impressive Team mid yeah they took down T I'm ruining the point they took down <laughs> Impulse and Liquid in the exact same week and with Shifter on this Assassin right now, Gravity is trying to make these aggressive plays with Mu, but they're just running into a powerhouse in Team Dignitas. Shifter is just getting stronger and stronger, and Gravity isn't making the clever play. That was a brute force play, and those only work when you have a lead. Yeah, and unfortunately, the lead is just not here. Warrior enchant into Sight Stone. Mu does not have any MR at all until he just bought the Null Magic Mantle, so a squishy Vi unable to dive the far, far ahead Ari, even with the Shen Shield on top of him, so. Uh, the comp, I guess, would have worked, right? Shen, Vi, Rumble, be on top. People That's blow up, but yeah. definitely not happening here. So great execution so far by Team Dignitas. The kills have gone out of the right places, and we now sit at, I would say, a small lull. Dragon off the field. Turret's probably a bit hard to assault, and 
those lane freeze we saw earlier are not mattering much anymore. Yeah, and what specifically happened with Team Dignitas since they picked up Helios is when they get a lead in the game, they have very decisively closed out games in quick fashion. They've had trouble actually getting the leads, mm -hmm. but in games where they are able to do that, Helios' shot calling has been so on point. Oftentimes, Shifter has fallen behind in lane. Other people are struggling. Gamsu hasn't had the hugest games. But this time, Shifter was 20 CS up at the 10 minute mark and then picked up a Pentakill. So he is the one that created the lead with the rest of Team Dignitas. And now it will all be about how they close, which they have done well in their victories. All right, Dignitas looking to close this one out in not the super near future. We're only at a 3,000 gold game, a 3,000 gold lead, not the biggest, but certainly one that matters. It's been Dignitas setting the pace pretty well. Dignitas picking some very, very good fights for themselves. Already some very deep wards. Helios even warding into the base before they're even ready to assault these inhibitor turrets. So uh, interesting choice when you only get to put three down at a time. Meanwhile, Gravity putting some deep wards of their own, wanting to track the movements in the top jungle. Yeah. Want to check in on Shifter because he is the super fed member. 8.8k gold at 19 minutes 40 seconds. But he decided to go with Zhonya's instead of the Rylai's that we saw Incarnation build earlier. I like that because he's getting Vialted every single time. He's yeah, the only good zone, target. You can Zhonya's the Vi ultimate. And then as soon as you come out of Zhonya's, you just dash around, which that's most likely the logic for this one. Yeah, we'll see if Move can, in the future, then outplay that with his own Q, knock the dash, taunt from Hanser. Like, maybe there's second-tier combos that come out, yep. but uh, still a risk. Gravity look for the Death Trap. They're not going to find it, though. Nice try. They had warded up the jungle. They pinked the tri brush. Nothing found. Keen having to play a bit defensively, but it was going to be... Yeah, so this is, this is Q. Karen. They're expecting Team Dignitas to time the dragon, but Team Dignitas is on to this trick. I like the attempt by Gravity. If Team Dignitas was not respecting this, wouldn't have happened, especially because Team Dignitas didn't have amazing wards in the bottom side of the map. Yeah, yeah. But there is that ward they just placed in the Baron Pit to spot him. Yeah, that was, yeah, uh, that was Kiwi Kid running over. That was a suspicion ward. Yeah, basically because they didn't see any approach wards uh, for gravity in the dragon area. A lot of times it's not about seeing a team with wards, it's about seeing where they aren't with wards. Uh, and prior to that, that prep, uh, Team Dignitas did have breadcrumb wards, I like to call them, leading from Gravity's base to the Dragon Pit. And since Gravity hadn't shown up in any of those, those wards, they must be top deductive side. reasoning, they must be near Baron. Therefore, Team Dignitas did the check. And it was the correct thing to do, and it means that Dragon number three goes over cleanly to Team Dignitas here, who have kept control ever since that move. It was a nice sneak by Gravity they attempted. It didn't pay off, though. And Dignitas looking pretty solid. I mean, this is a week of teams proving themselves. Impulse, seven wins in a row now, six wins in a row for them. CLG, they stopped the slump. They've won three in a row. Team Dignitas, what if they've stopped their slump and they had the exact same season as CLG? Looked good, looked bad, looked good again. And yeah. if Dignitas can gear up for playoffs. And how tight would these standings become? Oh man. If Gravity ends up dropping this game to Team Dignitas. Everyone between 11 and Everyone 10 between wins. 9 and 11 wins. No, Gravity's already uh, sitting at 11. Yeah, yeah, but so they'd be the at 11. the top six teams would be within two games of each other with three to go. Yeah. Anything could happen in those top seeds. But yeah, I mean, TSM, CLG, and Dignitas. Oh, yeah, TSM lost. Yeah, okay, you're right. TSM's still at 9. Um, that was the team I was forgetting. So, okay, Shifter waiting around at a pink ward. Dignitas still trying to clear the ward vision away. Of course, Dragon gone for the next four minutes, so Baron the only neutral objective up right now, and they're starting to put up some wards to that effect. Double Sight Stone gonna help them, of course, move. Of course, continuing that trend as well, doing what he can for the ward vision game. Looks like Toppling gonna be the attempt right here. Red buff, Core JJ putting some decent damage on a Hauntzer. Maybe they can start working down to this turret, but Gravity already on the way to defend that. Static Shift just on a oh great boy. net clearing. Move was off on his own solo mission. Got one deep ward down, kind of. They're mainly just hoping to get some type of flank pick, but with the way that Shifter's built that Zonia's right now, very hard to close in on him. Yeah. Kiwi could also complete it face the mountain, so that's more shielding they can throw onto Shifter if a single target tries to get focused. But basically, Gravity just wants to stall the surrender as much as possible. Uh, 
move shouldn't be trying to force it. Oh, that hook should have hit, but it didn't quite move. Gonna be able to get away with the flash. Unfortunately, Kibi Kid missed a hook that probably would have ended Move's life right there. Yeah, Team Dignitas wants to maintain control, and they have a pretty nice start on the five Dragon Timer. In part due to the, the lane freeze that Alltech tried to pull off early game with the Avers yeah. Blade, it gave Team Dignitas a lot of freedom to get that Dragon counter started. And being three Dragons already, 23 minutes in, as well as having a lead, even if the gold may stay close, as long as Team Dignitas focuses on getting the objectives down or forcing aggressive picks, those are kind of their two different win conditions right now. Gravity's win condition would be to keep the farm even and prevent the five Dragons somehow by any sort of delay tactics. Well, we'll see if they can delay them, because they can't stop Dragon from respawning, so somehow getting Dignitas to not fight it would be the goal. It might be difficult, though. Altex sitting on two items. He's got a long way to go. It goes to item number three. If it goes for Last Whisper, it's going to be another 1,200 gold or so. He's got some time. Team Dignitas, though, still playing the wave clear game. No kills from them for quite some time. They've taken the Dragon without much impact, and really just Gravity with the double sight stone, keeping the wards up enough that you can't really surprise them. So, mm -hmm. brute forcing turrets is of course hard. Dignitas just keeping the wards up, sweeping away what they can. There's always the, the random chance that you get to sneak a dragon, or sneak a baron rather, but right now not on the table for these guys. Yeah. I would love to check. I'm gonna have a lot of fun looking over the ward stats after this game because gravity has been so dominant with their vision control, specifically just wards killed in a lot of their games, uh, but that's with a lead. So killing wards when you're behind is also a much more difficult task. I'm curious how many Move has been able to kill when he hasn't had an advantage on the enemy jungler and also hasn't been a tanky jungler or a Nidalee to easily escape. Mm -hmm. True. We'll see if that can make it uh, work for him then because in the team fights though, he has been too squishy, right? Being the, the fighter frontliner has been working out. Hanser though finally hits level 11. He's actually two levels down under Gamsu, though. This Shen has been a bit hindered here. Only 135 CS, even though he had a big lead from the lane swap game, from the freeze afterwards. It's Gravity putting all their eggs in the Alltech basket. 247 farm on him. Everyone's like walking out of the lane and saying, Alltech, yeah. here, farm this. Be level 13, the highest on the team. Yeah, Gravity's this is... really hoping it's him. It's very quickly turning into a one-threat team, which is something Gravity uh, doesn't no team really ever succeeds with a one threat team and only in very rare circumstances. And there's been many games this split where Keen has fallen behind, but either Hauntzer is on a carry, <laughs> okay. go get it, or Move is on Nidalee who can still provide a lot of damage, so at least they have a secondary threat. But with Move falling behind and having to go full tank after Warrior, and with Keen also being behind, plus Hauntzer on a tank, mm -hmm. not the greatest things. Yeah. Alltech will have to solo carry this, and that typically doesn't work. Yeah, I mean, we've seen CLG try that, and it wasn't exactly great. So Gravity hoping that the Tristana can do it. And honestly, this is this is not Season 4 Tristana. She doesn't have that same solo carry status. It's, I mean, it's still a marksman. Like, there's still obviously damage there, but yeah. the, the scale is not like a Jinx would have. No longer has over 700 range at level 18. Yep. Rapid Fire doesn't give as much attack speed for the same duration. Yep. You know, a lot of different things in this Tristana. We talked about Trist at the start of the game. Much more a demolitionist than a hyper carry. Mm -hmm. uh, really not even that amazing of a hyper carry. Transitioning a Trist versus a Corky, you actually have somewhat equatable late game yeah. power levels. But look at this, though. This would be the gravity stalling the fifth dragon. I don't understand actually why Team was wasn't in position for this. It felt like bad recall timings. Okay, this might does come through. A nice knockback from Tristana. Altec trying to run. Bunny Fufu tanking it, but he can't force the flash away. But a clean escape. Oh no, the chase is in. The flash charm lands. And down he goes. The quick pickup there. But good luck, because Helios is showing up as well. Down to half HP is Keen. Overheated. Ulti already popped. Dignitas at half health. Looks like they will not chase any further, but the Dragon Sneak's a big deal here. Yeah, that is a monstrous deal. It adds six minutes to the point in which five dragons could be taken. If Team Dignitas had gotten that, you're talking a 33-minute fifth dragon. Now that could push it back to around 40 minutes into the game, most likely 39 or so. As long as Gravity can continue this stall-out phase, that is incredibly important as far as Team Dignitas win conditions. Yeah, and, and Gravity, you mentioned the one threat, one threat team here. I mean, Keen is scraping together enough farm that he's got the you know newly buffed Leandri's Torment on this Rumble. Like, I, you know, he's it's not bad, honestly. Like, yeah. Rumble is quickly becoming a, a at least a threat. threat. Yeah. Um, Shen just you know squeaking together very small amounts of farm. His CS is growing very slowly, but 
whatever, being a big big dumb tank is okay. Move on his way over to a Randuin's Omen now, maybe a Frozen Heart, but Warden's Mail is here. I'm actually curious to why he's getting the Warden's Mail first and even got a Ninja Tabby with how magic heavy the Dignitas comp really is. I know Nard does yeah. some, but it's, it's Corky Ari, the Ari's fed. Well, it basically feels like move uh, is just trying to scrape together as many defensive stats as possible. Mercury Treads would obviously give him a little bit more mobility if he gets CC'd, but he has the Spirit Passage to try and prevent himself from getting one shot. Mm -hmm. And as far as like individual boots, how much damage can you take per value? Ninja Tabi are the best. True. Mercury Treads would have been better against Ari, but maybe he's going for something a little different. And they are having Buddy Fufu go over towards the locket here. You're seeing, or at least the Aegis, the Ruby Crystal and Null Magic Mantle are in the inventory. He's got a thousand gold, which means he can buy it pretty much right now and did so. Kindle Gems in, so. At least the Aegis is here. Dignitas are going for a Dragon Sneak, and they are on the correct yeah. side of the map for this one, but there's still great wards that spot that this is happening. A risk for Team Dignitas. The charm will not land. That was close. Keen could have died for that one. TP in for Gams, who gets almost nothing. Moves got to be careful. Oh, he plays the wrong way. Kiwi Kid with the misclick. You're not Bunny Foo Foo. Kiwi Kid misses the flash play right there. That is just a big flash cooldown burn because not only did Team Dignitas teleport in without creating a flank engage, which is what you would want to do if you're forcing a team into the Baron Pit during a break stall situation, but then they also burn the support flash, their second form of pick. Shifter also has no flash, so as far as getting a clean pick, they have to get a little bit lucky. Beautiful Scrying Orb by Altec. Yep, there you go. All right, Altec does go for a Scrying Orb himself. And there are even some boards in the back of the Baron Pit anyway. Honestly, I felt like they could have just tooled them around for a bit longer because there's still a ward to the top left that knows Dignitas isn't doing this. Like, there's no way Dignitas can sneak Baron in this way without burning a bunch of jumping tools to get over the wall and try to sneak it that way, but they're tracked here. Yeah. Bottom getting pushed, and there's no TP for Gamsu, so Hansu is not able to be equated with this Yeah, push. move has got to be so careful. Why are you walking into this brush? Move gets blown up. There's no one here to help him. Buddy Fubu forced to run away as well. Dignitas pull up the Baron Sneak yeah. that they couldn't have sneaked in the first place. It's exactly the type of move that Team Dignitas wanted. I'd only have to guess that Move didn't trust his ward in the far river, and he thought maybe Team Dignitas could have hugged the wall. Uh, but honestly, that's two kills that Gravity probably didn't have to give up. They're going to try and get turrets for it, but Team Dignitas did get Baron. They got Baron. They got a kill. Two turrets picked up, but guess what? They're all about to get caught out here. A ward for Kiwi Kid watching the rotations. Team Dignitas recall two of their carries, and they're going to walk back across oh the map. Kiwi Kid a bit by himself, gonna jump right onto him. He took the long road, the rest of the team took the short one. That's a really big misplay again. You take the high road, I take the low road, and I'll die to three people without you. Is that how the song That's goes? That's roughly Kiwi how the song Kid, goes. That was a really unfortunate play right there. He needs to either stick with his team or have backup. They knew there were three people there, and now Team Nigatoss tries to get a rotation, but they will be 4v5 if they overstay. Well, they don't overstay for too long, it looks like, because they're gonna knock down that tier two turret, get their fifth of the game. But Dignitas now winning in kills, winning in objectives. Tied in turrets, but winning in everything else. Looking oh, very boy. solid for the sixth place team, kind of up to, up to the first place one. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, with a 14 minute and 50 second pentakill on your Ari, I'm expect, I was expecting grab, or Team Dignitas to close this game a little bit uh, smoother, or even at least be able to extend their lead significantly. The Baron is a nice step towards that, but they haven't controlled the five dragons, and this point coming up now, maybe kind of a make or break point of whether they start losing their advantage. Keen is becoming a secondary threat. Shifter still has that massive lead, but Altec is also getting more and more powerful. Team Dignitas needs to either force a fight here or create the five dragon timer, and they are in position to do so. Baron buff to either force Gravity in, and if they win a fight, they can win the game off of it, mm -hmm. or if Gravity doesn't come out to fight, a fourth dragon. Yeah, a fourth dragon. Perhaps is all that matters here. And we're going to see them try to do it. There we go. Scrying orb used by Core JJ to make sure their warding is safe. The double sight still members running around and really just littering this southern jungle with wards here. It's going to be almost impossible for gravity off of their th three sweepers, only one of which upgraded uh, to get rid of. Seems unlikely here. Hauntzer unable to really do much in the last set of fights there. Still sitting on his teleport. Gamsu still doesn't have his, but good luck out split pushing a team with Baron buff. Summoner teleport used to show up in the mid lane. Down to half already. Hook on to Hanser. Well timed. This turret's already halfway dead. Yeah, and with Dragon in 14 seconds, I feel like Team Dignitas will move their priority to that now. Teleport down. Shen can still arrive. A very interesting move here. I think Team Dignitas is going to want to rush the Dragon, but Gravity is going to try and pull them away from that. They're trying to just trade the objective however possible. Let's see what Team Dignitas responds with. 
Oh yeah, top lane tier two certainly to fall, but looks like only a few members used from the bottom lane to knock this one down. It's just the Rek'Sai and the Corky, the rest ready to defend and make sure at least the inhibitor won't die, but these guys stopped to clear mid away. Almost a split call here. We're seeing kind of late recalls, but Corky's already going to be there. I guess with Baron buff recalls fast anyway, so not difficult for them. Actually, the right attribution of resources is mid shoved in, and Gravity's going to lose that farm. Yeah, so now 39 minutes and about 25 seconds is the moment that the fifth dragon will be spawning. Still relatively early on into the game. Yeah. And Gravity's going to want to stall that out. The nice thing is they took down six turrets, so they're keeping the gold as close as possible by trading that gold the subjective dragon yeah. for a, a, an entire side of the jungle as well as a turret. Well, we're at a 4,000 gold game. Gravity thankfully have knocked down one dragon themselves and an unequated dragon one is worth about 2,500 gold in stats if you just do the math on roughly what you gain here. So. Depending on the time. And yeah, I mean, just, just at this point in the game, it's roughly the math here. I mean, you can do the exact numbers, but it's good enough at this, at this stage. And... Gravity is hoping to play defense. Inhibitor turrets are notoriously hard to kill. And Dignitas trying to do just that, yeah. which seems unlikely, but... Yeah, not any poke at all goes through. Top lane's still unanswered. Gamsu has TP, but isn't going up there yet. It's very interesting the move built a Frozen Heart on Vi as well. You would expect a Randwins in this situation just for the yeah. flat health and all the mixed and true damage the team Dignitas is doing, but... Overall, that will slow down the auto attacks if you can stay alive of Nar, Rek'Sai, and It just feels weird. Like, you're against a Black Cleaver, and Ari is fed, and you have 200 armor at 120 magic assist. Yes. And not, not seem much. like the... And not very much health. That's the big thing. Is yeah. 2,100 health. Very low. Yeah. New look for move on this Vi. It's also interesting that Gravity's gone for their second Scrying War. They're, they have. They're, yeah. they're trying to prevent what happened at Baron last time. Uh, we were actually talking earlier about conditional trinkets because Alltech had been going sweeper in most of their games. Yeah. But that is when they are ahead because they want to sweep out enemy vision to find picks. Now that they are behind, they're more worried about just getting vision of the opponent team, especially around this forced objective of Baron, therefore second scrying orb. They will not be able to get picks themselves, but it's definitely a, a Baron stall tank. Yeah, and it should help them quite a bit, Dignitas. I don't think can safely just start Baron and ignore enemy champions without getting Equalizer on, so definitely something that matters. Now, one thing I do want to track is Keen's road to level 16, because rank 3 Equalizer is definitely a big deal. Oh, he's so far behind. He's 14.8, so he's got a level and a quarter still to go. Yeah. And I don't think that's going to happen before this Baron respawns here. Altec is 16, so the range is growing. He's already got four completed offensive items. Is going for a QSS or Banshee's last. Oh, wow. Bunny Fubu half HP without even landing all the skills. That'll do it. Yep. Shifter at 682 ability power. Getting up to that max item. Just one more. That'll happen. When you have seven kills at 14 minutes. Yep. I wonder what his last item will be. I'm going to probably guess Riley's. He didn't ever get Merlin Amicon, which is typically an item yeah. we see. I'm hoping Riley's. So because he's got cooldown boots already. Right. So his CDR is already up there. 35-ish, yeah. He's actually with blue buff at 4.2. So yeah, CDR for level blues. Pretty standard for the course here. Yeah, the next 40 seconds here will be pretty critical about how Team Dragon Toss decides to set this up. Uh, they need to get some deep wards in this jungle, but more importantly, you can see three of their four sweepers have been upgraded. So, and yeah. people have, people also have room in their inventory for pink wards. So. They're very heavily prepping for Vision Denial in this Baron. And this is a nice thing about this team comp. The Gnar can handle the Shen in a one-on-one, -on -one, so Team Dignitas yeah. gets the split push advantage as well. That's the rough thing is, you know, Hanser, I can kind of more forgive the extra armor purchase because he has to deal with Gnar in the one-on-one. -on -one. That's, of course, a physical damage top laner here. So we'll see if this can be salvaged here for Gravity, but Team Dignitas still sitting on this 5,000 gold lead. Setting up for this bear and the pink ward's on. There's actually, did they not see that ward in the back of the pit or are they just not? Oh yeah, move just put it down the pillar in a second. But Dignitas trying to black out the vision here over the neutral objectives. Last time around it got gravity to face check and die. But this time they have two scribers. So it'll be very interesting. 
Nar holding the mid lane. Gravity could theoretically try to shove in and press for You're just waiting inhibitor. for something to land, whether it be a hook or a charm. And well, Gravity, oh, that's going to be a Mega Nar. Hook hits Hanser. Mega Nar's there. Bunny Fufu in the front lines as well. Hanser taking so much damage. And the Shen dies at the very beginning. Core JJ, the first kill. Mega Nar puts him back they in got the range of the team. But oh, Altec gets one. And he's now found Gamsu as well. Altec to be the major carry. Jumps in, tries to get a kill. Can't quite do the damage. It's only a one for one. But so much damage was dealt here. Yeah, and we talk about secondary threats right there. That was all about Keen landing a good enough equalizer to force Shifter into an early zone. Zonias. That meant that move could then alt the Ari, and the rest of Gravity could pile damage down onto him. Now they're going for a very aggressive Baron play. Maybe all that just wants to kill. A bad flash of Korja Day gets exploded, but into the back line comes Gamsu. He's already knocked down one as Bunny Fufu falls with the help from Baron. But no AD carries a very big deal. All tech takes Woo. away the Scuttler. That actually buys even more respite. Yeah, Dragon and Baron both coming up. Fifth Dragon on the way. Keen is very low. Hauntzer would have teleport, but Bunny Fufu is down. They need to run to this Dragon faster than yesterday right now. It is spawned at this point, and Rek'Sai is there. How quickly can they rush this, and how quickly can Gravity collapse down? I think Gravity guaranteed that they would win the fight if it even existed, because no AD carry of Core JJ is a pretty big thing here. Gamsu not doing nearly enough damage with Helios. Gravity should be completely safe in taking this fight as long as they don't miss the smite. Your Helios wants to be around. Here's Kiwi Kid. Here's Ooh. the attempt. Good smite by Move. And they're going to catch Helios. The overaggression. He wanted Dragon 5, but died for it. Map control to Gravity. That might even mean Baron. Yeah, 50 second death timer on the smiter right now. And Core JJ just spawned. I don't think it's a safe Baron, but it's definitely something that they can force and threaten. Gravity trying to take control of this game back. It's a choice you just might make when you're down 4,000 gold, and Gravity says it is the choice we're going to make. There's no threat of a smite steal. There's only a threat of a difficult team fight here. 10,000 health there in Nasher. Core JJ's here. Kiwi Kid's here. The entire team is here. Blue Elixir's popped. Hook's going to land onto the tank, which is not the biggest threat here. Half HP still on Bunny Fufu, and Gravity turned back onto Baron. Half health on that. Move smite is up. Kiwi Kid Hook misses this time around. He's going to block enough damage. Baron Nasher picked up. Bunny stays alive. Dignitas not stopping it. But Gamsu's here with Mega Nar. Hanser not going to get stunned. Going to go They're for the taunt. For and Equalizer's massive. Move in the front line. And there's Alltech on the side. Knocks into the team. And in comes Helios. The cavalry has arrived. Shifter does not land the damage on a Bunny Fufu. And Move will get picked up. But not before Shen gets the ulti in. Is it going to be enough? Because Core JJ will get the kills after all. Bunny's still Still taking the front line, but Altec is running he out of front one line. Kill. He can't quite get it, and it's gonna be Gravity forced away with two deaths. Whoa, what a close game. This is now on a razor's edge. Two 40-second death timers for Gravity. Team Vingatoss does not stop the Baron, but they do prevent a push afterwards. So just a really, I'd say eventful last few yeah. minutes. Freak. Uh, let's just recap where the game stands now. So Altec doing his best to do all the damage. As we can see in this fight, no one in Gravity really chunking that many people on Team Dignitas. And this is the one thing that Gravity needed to take the Baron early for, is because Helios was going to spawn and he could arrive at any moment into this fight. Good flank position by Shifter as well. Anari, that's where he wants to be. But he probably could have maximized his damage a little bit more right there. He missed some spells. He didn't max out on just Spirit rushing into Azonias. And it delays this fight long enough for Gravity to almost pick up a few kills. Alltech on the meanwhile was just trying to cut through the tanks, but didn't have quite enough damage to get any of those guys. Just think one of those guys dies, he starts bunny hopping around, killing about three yeah. of them. Really, really close game now. And Gravity doing their best to come back from a very disastrous dragon fight at the 15 minute mark. Well, the damage from Alltech as well as the damage from 4JJ have increased now as Alltech's hit close to max build with the Mercurial Scimitar now done, so plus 80 attack damage. Infinity for Core JJ means he's got some very scary auto attack damage now as well and still an item to buy. Yeah. But with Baron on, this bottom turret, oh wow! Oh, that was the Tristana damage, charge. they stayed yeah. too close to the turret. So much attack damage on that Tristana, 520. Just destroys this. Demolition is here yet again. Bottom inhibitor taken down thanks to the Baron buff. Huge move. That is one of the big reasons. Teams like Trist. The yep. ability to just kill turrets in the shortest window of time, not necessarily worrying as much about the safety, but having that quick, quick, quick turret kill. We got ourselves a gravity team who's starting to gain control.
right now. Honestly, mm -hmm. because of the farm Alltech has been able to put out, uh, he's an item ahead of poor JJ, giving him the edge. And then Keen, just because Rumble has such efficient items on this patch with Leandris, he is somewhat matching Shifter's impact. Oh, his hold on, not right. matching that very well. Oh, but then dear. Kill before it can ulti. It's going to be a trade back. Those Helios does die. They stun. The knockup from Bunny means almost nothing. Gamsu is Mega Nar ready in the top side. Ponser overextends, gets hooked in, gets chunked out, gets killed off. Core JJ is a massive AD carry right now. And now Dignitas on the chase. The flash, the slowdown, the stun's going to land. Bunny Fufu going to be the next kill, most likely. Shields himself, tries to run, can't go far enough. Oh, he's gonna just barely get out, but the rocket is still coming. The kill's gonna come through. Gansu gets a third kill, the fight, a three for one, the Dignitas. Yeah, and a ping goes down to the inhibitor right away. Keen with a very bad play there, being far too close to the turret. You hate for it to be a story of the game, but it's like, how many times can Keen get punished before Team Dignitas wins? It's the mid lane, it happened twice, it's happened in a couple of team fights right now, and it happened right there after Gravity had regained advantage of the game. This is easily a mid lane inhibitor for Team Dignitas to match the one that Gravity pulled off in the bottom lane. Man, and in a team with three tanks, a Shen, a Vi, and a Braum, what business does Keen have being on the front lines and being hook bait there? Of course, no a great skill shot by Kiwi Kid and a great follow up by the yeah. team, but still, not something that should be happening here. He has no business there, Freak, especially yeah. in, a, in a Rumble build that does not have Zoni's out uh, Watching this one more time, he is in the front line. Oh, wow. There are also Baron of Minions on the turret, so it's very inexcusable of where you'd want to be as a Rumble, and it traps Gravity into a fight underneath the Nexus turret without a Rumble ultimate. You know, even if he could have gotten a Rumble Ultimate off on that turret, maybe they could split that fight and just get out. Uh, worst case scenario, with your yeah. mid lane Rumble getting hooked in and instantly killed before he can use any spells. Now keep in mind, leading into that fight, the gold had actually stayed exactly the same. Gravity got their second dragon, congratulations, but the gold was still 4.5k. The Baron buff was timed out. Of course, Dignitas just won a fight, so now they're sitting up 6,000. But this lead hasn't really ever gotten smaller. It's just been objectives traded back and forth. Gravity playing about equal with a deficit. We'll see if that can ever grow or shrink one way or the other. Move running away from Helios here. Looks of Iron is on. And Dragon number five, attempt number two for Dignitas as it spawns. Yeah. And max items on Shifter. He needs to have so much of an impact in this fight to take advantage of his huge lead. He's a full item or two ahead of the Rumble. Oh, the Stolen. spike comes in from move and the battle's begun. Bunny on the front line stops the REQ. A bunch of bursts come through Equalizer towards the front line. Helios at half, looks for Altec, misses the charm though, and damage keeps coming through. Helios one hit from getting stunned. The stun now lands and Altec gets some damage, forcing the flash away. Inside track on mid lane, Dignitas have to recall. What a clutch smite right there by Move, because if he misses that, they are full 5v5 into a team that would have recently received Aspect of the Dragon. So, massive, massive thing right there for Move to keep Gravity in this game, because they couldn't get any kills. They just push out the wave, and we go deeper. Gonna need another water for this game. Yeah, I uh, already drank literally a half liter just now. Um, we're gonna keep moving. Baron is in 46 seconds. Gravity got the last one off of a pick on Helios, and the resulting 5v4 worked out okay. Gravity now still swallowing a 6,000 gold deficit. There were no kills in that last fight, if I recall properly, so it was just a movement speed buff being acquired and move winning the Smite Wars so far. It's actually his... I think he's not lost a Smite War yet to Helios in this game. So, they've had about two or three. Maybe a sign of things to come. Alltech is, is more than maxed item. He's sitting on 1,800 gold right now. He'd also sold his ship for Phantom Dancer, so... He should actually be giving the farm over to Keen whenever possible. The only problem with that is... Keen has to put himself in somewhat risky situations in order to farm the waves. Very true. Therefore, we see Alltech CS grow and grow, nearly hitting 500 before the 15 minute mark. So crazy, crazy pacing on his CS. Yeah. And one of the big reasons it feels like Team Dignitas isn't back in this game is Shifter's being very protective of his positioning, despite being fairly tanky with his own. Is he's not providing any threat onto Alltech. The one time they've killed an AD carry this game was when they killed everyone else first.
but if they really want to do this, they need to either get some type of hook onto the main damage source, Gamsu needs to get in there, or Shifter needs to force him back, because nothing is really stopping Alltech from free hitting in any of these fights, which is keeping it extremely close. You know, when you hit an item build like this with a lot of attack speed, the steroids mean a little bit less. You just got so much baseline threat, so Tristana is still going to be very effective. Core JJ did go for the making of a Banshee's Veil last item, so a slightly lower ceiling as a champion. This is not Mercurial Scimitar. He and needs defense against the Rumble Ultra. Yeah, well, that means it's, it's attack to the top lane. Alltech, high offense here. This turret nearly going to go down. Doesn't mean E is on cooldown for a few seconds. He's saved Rapid Fire, though. So far, no way in for Team Dignitas. Turret goes down. Gravity able to walk away pretty safely, but it's still in contention. There's no wards watching Dignitas run through here. A bit of a risk, but not punished. Yeah, there he's split up though. Kiwi Kid has a chance to catch you a take flank. The high road, but the low road not hooked though. Flay will land. Hosser uses his taunt to get away. A few seconds cooldown on that one. Candle Gem to help that cooldown stay short. Bit more poke from Gamsu. Mid lane and hip still dead. A giant wave is barreling down the mid lane that Gravity yeah, needs it someone has to answer. To be caught. It has to be caught. This but they said two. Toss. It gives Team Dignitas the ability to go in and get vision control, but there's not many wards left in the wake of Gravity's rotation, but there's that Scrying Orb. They have two of them. Will we see a fight here? There was a ward in the pit anyway. The Scrying Orb seems like almost a waste of a cooldown here, but Gravity able to hook back to the front line. Oh, close one. Kiwi Kid missing his third hook in a row here, or at least dodged by Gravity. Mid lane, though, still pushing on its own. The middle inhibitor is back up, and it's getting slowly whittled down by some minions. Yeah, with Meganar right now, though, Really, Gravity wants to just hold out a little bit longer. They do not want Gomsu to be able to Meganar them right now. As soon as they see that Minionar, maybe we see there Gravity go. And Helios was still on the Baron. And he's at half. Bunny Poo Poo tanks the charm, takes a bunch of damage. Shifter cannot quite find the way in. Now he's going to look for a force of the flash. And there's Equalizer. The box comes up. Hotzer taunts up Gamsu. The Vi comes in as well. They will knock down Nar. No! He walks away. Yes, the charge gets him. Mid and Hib is dead. The minions took that down. But the chase continues. Altec wants in. He's not going to find it. A one for zero. But the base is getting attacked from Gravity. This is so tense right now. The Baron minions are providing pressure, but Gravity does not want to withstand this Baron. They know they have a death timer that they want to exploit. Maybe we see yet another smite war, or maybe they're gonna toss fights before it's a possibility. The health bars are low. Buddy Poofu at 800 health, now 300. Hogs from the front line move there as well. They're gonna get the first kill. That's a reset in the flash from Kane. They get Helios. One trade back though. Core JJ is still a big threat. It's a one for two in the aftermath of that one, but they've got a recall to defend their base. The turrets are taking damage. Top and <laughs> top exit turret down below half. Yeah, turrets are safe for yeah. the most part. They did lose their inhibitor, and Alltech is just showing everyone how fed he is. The problem for Gravity is he is not getting any more fed this game unless he sells his boots, in which case his mobility will decrease, so the overall effectiveness is negligible. This, this is a game freak. Yes, it is. 51 minutes in, Dragon now up in 50 seconds, and this is a time where we have major objectives on two different sides of the map, three major objectives that Gravity now has to try and keep pace with their own middle inhibitor, the Baron, and the Dragon. Any of those things going to Dignitas could spell doom for them. They start off before one becomes a problem. There is low vision. Core JJ tried his best to stop it. There are still death timers on Team Dignitas. Megan is best pick with impression. The TP comes in for Hanser. The smite got to come through and easily picked up. That goes Baron number two to Gravity, and they've caught Gamsu, who TP'd in the top side by himself and gets picked off for a very greedy teleport. Map's okay for Gravity. Dragon's up in 12, and Dignitas are there first. It would be unreal if Gravity could pull this move off with three things they have to defend against. They just got the Baron. There's a Shenalt up if someone else can make it to that fight first, and trying. there's a top laner dead. How many home guard boots can they move? Alltech tried to push the mid wave. He's on his way, but this time Core JJ is there to try and blow this down. Move, he's gonna have to pull off a miracle. Smite, Smite again. He's in so early. He's in early, but this is burst. He's got it again! Move again! Stops the Dragon 5, he will die. Hanser did ult, but it got canceled via the death. There's a 30 second window where Gams who's alive and move is not, but I don't know if Dick could do much about that. Are you kidding me right there? The second straight, just 1B team smite steal by move. Those things are so hard to pull off because Team Dignitas just needs to spike their skills at the same time and move has to predict when that will happen. But, 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 he died in that fight. They still don't have that many threats. There's giant waves barreling in, but they're the ones with Baron Buff. This is potentially a miraculous defense. Well, here's the funny thing, though, is Dragon 4 is on, meaning 15% uh, bonus damage to minions. Gravity's wave clear just got 15% better. 
Um, difficult hey, math, I know. That actually matters. It does a lot, actually. Especially for Keen, a guy who's still trying to complete his max items. Alltech did go for the second Phantom Dancer, so he is now a moving turret. He does. He's lost a lot of move speed for selling his Alacrity Enchanted Berserker Greaves, but he will gain the damage. Yeah. Man. 90% crit chance. You saw minions doing 1,500 damage. That's not realistic for champions here, as they don't have armor. But it's still very large crits coming out. Definitely a scary thing here. Um, and keep in mind, you talked about the fact that Alltech wasn't going to grow anymore. When we last mentioned that, move, or sorry, uh, Gamsu had a full item slot till to go, and, and Helios had a full item slot still to go. So Helios is out of the thorn mail, Gamsu's getting a Banshee. Core JJ also uh, got rid of his boots, so he is doing more damage as well now, auto attack wise, with the Phantom yeah. Dancer. So th there are definitely some hyperscaling builds coming in here. The gold is becoming uh, only relevant to the people that have not maxed their item builds at this point, which basically means Gamsu and Haunter are even. They have one item build left to complete, but it's mainly this keen differential. His equalizers have been very on point in the team fights, Gravity's one, however, and that is providing more of an impact than the 10 kill Ari. Uh, at this point, really just watch on where the focus is. Gravity's been killing frontline. Dignitas has been trying to do the same. This game will end if anyone gets backline access before the tank line goes down. 430 damage per second equalizers from Keen. Lasts for five seconds. Also applies Leandri's. 1,543 damage crits on the minions there for all tech. Yep. Because of the bonus he's being granted from the dragon buff. I mean, it is... Very scary here. Now, Gravity pulled onto the mid lane because that's where the, their inhibitor was dead, and they need to make sure that stays unpushed. Team Dignitas able to easily play a defensive line right here, though, and you can see how low the Gravity are to actually start something off here. Yeah. It's, it's a danger. They know they don't necessarily have the strength. Uh, their initiation is questionable move. He gets the Shen ult when he jumps in, but he's he can only be so tanky. He's actually going for a damage item as his sixth to go with his Ruby Sightstone. The move also needs to trade in for Cinder ult sometime soon. Tank stats definitely should matter a lot for him. At this point, 10 armor then means nothing. Oh, the hook hits Bunny Fufu though. That's gonna be the way in. And Bunny gets dropped at the very start. Can't even put out of Unbreakable. Out goes Gravity, out they run. But Gamsu pulls one back in and goodbye Hauntzer. It's a tanky Shen, but not tanky enough. Move chooses to go in and he buys time. Alltech picks up a kill. Stun comes through, Shifter comes in. Look for Alltech, does a ton of damage. And the chase down comes in. Team Dignitas, Ace Gravity. They get the hook. They break the tank line before Team Dignitas before Gravity can set up, and they just get that huge, huge win. Shifter then provided threat immediately on Alltech. That's what he needed to do in this game. 55 minutes in after having two fifth dragons smote away from them, they may finally be taking down the number one team in the LCS. Uh, I think it's gonna happen right now, Jat. Such long respawn timers and plenty of durable tanks in the front line. Inhibitor in the turret, in the turret, into Nexus. Dignitas, I think, for sure have done it here. From sixth place, they had fallen so far. They they used to be the league leaders. They used to beat the top teams. This time around, maybe Dignitas back on an upswing. They take down the number one team in the North American LCS, and Dignitas getting in shape just in time for playoffs. What an absurd game this was, Freak. That is a monstrous win for Team Dignitas as well. It was seeming more and more like Team Dignitas was going to be locked into that sixth seed. They had the worst record of the top six teams coming in and the most difficult schedule in their next four games to close the year. Well, they just beat the team that was number one and 11 and three, staring strength of schedule in the face and knocking it down. Now all top six teams are within two games of each other. Yeah, how strong can your schedule look if you beat the number one team and you're like, yeah, who, wh who's the next comer? I already knocked down the top dog. Like, yeah, who, 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 wants, who wants me now? TSM. TSM That's wants tomorrow. them now. TSM's gonna want them. TSM, honestly, in a sort of opposite direction of Dig Team Dignitas, of course. <laughs> Dignitas for so long had been a bit too slow. They got their Woo! wins because someone screwed up or because Gamsu hard carried. So congratulations, one of your players went off. But this was the first one where it felt like they earned it every step of the way. Lanes got frozen, Dignitas pushed in mid. They got so much gold in a shifter. Kiwi Kid landed so many hooks. It's a player who like kind of could only play Annie. You'd ban Annie and Kiwi Kid wouldn't do well. His thrash, decent, but this game definitely amazing. So many picks landed because of these hooks, because of these charms. 
Hey, Broken Shard. Undefeated. Nice debut onto the scene. He gets to watch this game. Uh, it was it was definitely crazy freak. The dragons being smote away two times in a row. It would have felt crushing if Team Dignitas lost this one after a pentakill at 14 minutes and 48 seconds. Probably the earliest pentakill we've seen in a North American LCS game. Yeah, I think so. Core JJ selling his boots, doing substantial damage in those late game fights, and mainly Shifter finally getting to Alltech, killing the opponent AD carry, something that Team Dignitas has not been able to do, but when they do, they take down the number one team. And what an impressive game here. So Team Dignitas now versus Team 8. This match is actually a very big deal for both teams. Every game for TDK from here on out is do or die. They need to win every single game left in the split to avoid auto relegation. Yeah, and TDK have had a tough road considering they still have to face Team Impulse tomorrow and Gravity next week. Rarely has one victory given fans so much hope as TDK's first game with their new roster did. They took down Team Dignitas when Dignitas was in first place, but then after that electrifying performance, they've lost every single game and are technically on course to match Coast 1-17 and 17 record. They need to turn it on now. We'll see if they can do it against one of these teams as a team you would expect them to get a win over or at least have a chance to do it. But while TDK are fighting to stay in the LCS, the stakes are just as high for Team 8. They are right now a half a game ahead of Cloud9, and they would like to get a win to keep that hold on to 7th place and avoid a trip to the promotion tournament. Also, technically, if they win every single game, they might be able to tie TSM for a playoff spot. Yeah, teammates still have to run the gauntlet with games against 1st place Gravity and 2nd place teams Liquid and Impulse. And... It would obviously be difficult, but teammate have shown improvement in recent weeks as they've gotten used to having Golden Glue in the mid lane when he took the place of Slushy. And teammate's laning phase, it's on par with a lot of the teams. They've just struggled a bit as to what to do in the mid lane as they transition shot calling from Cali Trolls onto Nian. Mm -hmm. And they have been improving as of late. It may, might, might be a late season surge for teammate. Yeah, I mean, teammate took down Cloud9 on TSM in the last couple of weeks here, so just maybe this does work out for these guys. But for now, we're going to check out the starting lineups. And on the blue side is Team Dragon Knights. Seraph up in the top lane, Kez in the jungle, Ninja in mid, Emperor on AD carry, Smoothie on support with Coach Sean behind them. Yep, and on the red side, it is, of course, Team 8. We have Cali Trolls in the top lane, Porpoise in the jungle, Golden Glue in the mid lane, Neon on AD carry, Dodo on support, and History Teacher as the coach. As the coach, indeed. So... As we get ourselves ready for picks and bans, you got to look at sort of the big players, I think, for these teams. And mm -hmm. the the late spring split surge for teammate that nearly put them into the playoffs was Slushy on one side and Porpoise on the other. And those two were hard carrying the team. Porpoise is actually still doing a lot of that same stuff. You talked about the fact that the early game of teammate is on par with a lot of these playoff teams. That has a lot to do with Porpoise, who has a million assists this season. He's got one of the highest clip participations in the league. He's doing so much work for these guys in the jungle of teammate. And as you mentioned, the Madaf and the Golden Glue, he's also been kind of holding up well. And those two have, I think, continued to be strong for teammate. Mm -hmm. As you can see, the last time these guys played, TDK was unable to ban champions due to some severe roster issues they've had. But they've had their full intended roster for the latter half of the split. This time, getting to ban things away. Callista, probably a smart choice. Nian has had some very good Callista games. Yeah, so TDK's sixth professional game with this roster. Unfortunately, they've only won one of the prior five. Annie Callista dropped away. We're still seeing her be plenty popular. The perennial Vlad ban against Seraph, and also its rise, I think 513 rise is, in my opinion, the strongest champion in the game. I don't expect many teams to let that champion go through. Teammate, one of them to ban that away. Seraph away for Nien as well. And we see another example of those two AD carries being banned out by the same team, usually. Yeah, definitely wanting to change the name of the game for the 80 carries. Interesting. I like the fact that they're putting Seraph back onto major damage dealers. Mm -hmm. Seraphs have been targeted pretty heavily with bans by a lot of the other teams, but they have not found success with him on Maokai so much. Yeah. Uh, obviously, they haven't found much success, but they're closer to it when he's on Rumble or Vladimir. Yeah, he's put a lot of those champions. Of course, no one ever lets him get Vladimir. Personally, I like seeing him on specifically split pushers. Like, he used to play a lot of Nidalee back in Challenger, and that was very strong. Uh, yeah, Rumble being a good damage dealer, I just, to me, I always want to see him be able to play with split push power. Like, even as Gnar went 4-0 and zero against Cloud9 a few weeks ago. But 
Rumble it's going to be unless Ninja wants to play in the mid lane. Teammate taking the time of their next few picks. Looks like a double tank front line for them. Alice for support. Gragas in the jungle. Shen and Nautilus still up. Yeah, and Alistair's one of those picks who's used to be like perma pick band, but he started to fall down a little bit as of late. Mm -hmm. uh, teams are getting better at respecting his turret diving potential and punishing him, punishing him when his ultimate isn't up. Uh, and solid picks back for TDK. Braum obviously being another one of those tank supports who's definitely seeing play now. And with 280 carry bands, the Trist is right for Emperor. Yeah, Tristana this time getting picked before the Corky. We'll see if that trades back forward. Nien is a very comfort pick level Corky player, so maybe we see that one come through. The Braum also rising up in stock. We might see those other, you know, popular tanks not get picked up. Kellatrolls was a big Shen proponent. You might see him pick that one up now that we know Seraph is not going to be on that top lane, and Sweetie's definitely going to be on Braum, so Shen can be picked up whenever, but it's going to be a Maokai. And Nien. Taking his time, says, yeah, it is going to yep. be Corky. Corky is the pick that makes the most sense here. Uh, it has been close to the priority pick for a lot of regions lately. It will be going into some Braum counter poke, though. And it also means they need to pick up a lot of damage in the mid lane with just some Alkai top. All right, so it means it's going to be the Jace mid here. Tristana and Jace, the sieging duo. That's going to be interesting here for Team Dragonites. It's going to be the... Fourth, no, fifth unique champion pick here for Ninja in six games. He's doubled up on Victor. Otherwise, bringing out the Jace that uh, the old TDK mid laner used to play a whole lot of back when they had Kyle in the Challenger series. So, almost a throwback there. A whole bunch of damage. Just a whole bunch yeah. of damage for TDK. So, what's the counterfeit going to be? You know it's Jace mid lane, you know it's Tristana AD carry. It's a lot of ranged auto attacks coming through. Mm -hmm. As you mentioned, teammate need a damage source. The hover is on Yasuo. Yeah, it's a little tricky here because if they go magic damage, then they're pretty much all magic damage as a team. Uh, there we go. Poke team with the Varus. Going to be a little bit difficult against the Braum. Yeah, so interesting. Double marksman up into Braum, always a bit risky. Double poke into basically poke and siege. So somewhat similar team goals. But Team Dragonites, as you mentioned, a whole lot of damage. Teammate hoping to get enough burst that Varus gets the attack beat from his passive off a killer assist. But a big front line for Teammate. Double Marksman behind it. See how well that works for them. Teammate hoping to go 4-0 and zero if they want a chance at the playoffs. As you mentioned before, they sit half a game above Cloud9, so they can also hold on to their LCS spot for sure. C9 hoping that TDK wins. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of wishing and hoping for a lot of these different teams. TDK... Definitely hoping TDK wins, trying to <laughs> salvage this season. Like we said, they need to run every single game as a victory to avoid auto relegation. Just a monster game, especially because Team 8 is trying to play to be safe more than anything. Obviously, playoffs are possible, but they really just want to win and secure their spot. And speaking of securing their spots, enemy, the only team that TDK could overtake. And enemy's roster or future games aren't exactly easy, so... And those teams theoretically could swap places for auto relegation. We'll see if TDK can make that climb. But guys at home, head over to Twitter to tell us who you think will prevail in this game. Tweet hashtag TDK win or hashtag T8 win to at LL Esports. Let us know how you think this one's going to go. It's going to be a very important match. Your standings very much on the minds of both these teams. Team comps on your screen. Lights now. And we're going to get ourselves into the game. Team Dragon Knights versus Team 8. <laughs> And I'm going to be very interested in the early laning phase right here. Whether or not we see TDK swap back with the Tristana. Because as far as the Corky being a bit of a lane bully, it feels like Nien would want, champion-wise, a pick against Trist. But the matchup uh, for teammate normally lane swapping doesn't play that way. Yeah, well, we got to see how the big players, the new guys of TDK, shape up. Because Ninja and Emperor may have helped in some aspect of TDK's game, but they've caused problems in others. I think that uh, when Ninja and Emperor came on onto TDK, um, it was expected to kind of change the team completely. But you can still see their main weaknesses. And also, uh, Emperor and Ninja both have a play style that's a lot different from what TDK was used to. So now they're they're jumping in, they're being super aggressive, and TDK is not following up. So they're going to have to work a lot together to figure out how to do this aggression safely and smartly. Yeah, and we've even seen it with some of TDK's games. They have some amazing plays from Ninja and Emperor, 
and then some really poor plays from Ninja and Emperor. Yeah. You never know what you're gonna get. That's true. Yeah. It's you flip a coin and TDK either wins or loses the team fight. Um, honestly, I actually really did like TDK's old style in Challenger, even though the players were arguably inferior to Ninja and Emperor. But when uh, Kyle and Luigi G were in there, it was the Seraph show, and he was the split pusher, and he would hard carry his team through the games. And, and though he has played some more Rumble games this split, it felt like Seraph lost a lot of what made him good when they started pulling him out of the team fighters, the Maokais and the Lulus. And, you know, if they adapt to the style and it works for them, then good for them. But I just don't see the same Seraph anymore when he's forced to play around the different team dynamics. Uh, starting with an amplifying tone. All right, that's a, that's a good way to start aggressively. Well, thing is, I've noticed um, no Rumbles are going Sork Shoes first anymore. They're always rushing Leandries really hard because it's such an important item to complete that I'm seeing them start Amp Tome or Ruby Crystal almost every game. Yeah, especially on this patch. Uh, obviously, Leandries Charmer used to give 50 ability power, now it gives 80, and it's only 100 gold more expensive when fully completed. Uh, if you're thinking about cost per ability power, you think to the Amp Tome, which is uh, 435 35. gold for 20 ability power. So it's about 647 gold of stats that that Leandri's gained for only 100 gold increase in price. Yeah. Like that to Rumble, who is the player who rushes that out of more than anything, was one of the biggest buffs out of the API optimization changes. And we'll see him do probably well for himself. Now, mid lane pressure was attempted, not gonna happen. We are in a lane swap game. Brom spent a little bit of time trying to harass mid, didn't happen. We might see TDK now group down onto this bottom turret. Looks like we have a different plan, though, from teammate, though. They've actually recalled, and they're trying to do that three-man defense under that bottom mm. tier, two. Uh, Nian will be by himself shoving in and denying under the turret. And we'll yeah. see if they can get that second or third wave of experience. It's going to be farm for Nian, but they're looking a little bit late to this. I wonder if TDK will rush them as they try running through, because that's a level one Alistair. I don't really see teammate being able to get up there, but they've gotten pretty close to the turret. No, TDK, they let them just in. just fine. The stun lands. Dodo's all right, and the wave's going to get farmed up after all. So, yeah, TDK did Whoa. not play far enough forward to track the movements and zone the team away from the turret. Teammate successful in getting 50% more experience they were going to otherwise. Yeah, that's a huge hold there by teammate, because now Nian gets to keep the farm on Corky. There's some elements to this. They have three tanks basically walking through, so they're a little harder to kill. They have a lot of CC. But even so, TDK even needs, either needs a deep ward in the lane, or, like you said, to play more forward to prevent three people from just walking past them. Uh, kept looking for the play. Unfortunately, Ninja missed the Q. It forces Golden Glue Summoner heal at the very least, but... Otherwise, a pretty safe Varus, all things and done. That said, though, this wave is pushed up, so he's got to be a bit careful about a repeat gank. He lost his summon spell for the last one and goes right back where he was. Yeah, just gets the early ward in the top lane as well. But speaking about Golden Blue, he's been playing quite well. Uh, so no surprise that Kez tries to put a little bit of pressure on him early on in the lane. Jason Barris show a lot of similarities in that mid lane matchup as well. Both long range physical damage pokers. So whoever gets an edge in that lane can fairly quickly close that into a much larger edge. Yeah. Early ganks, very important. We've even got their own forms of gank assistance, right? Varus with the ulti can lock you down for long enough to kill you, and Jace just does so damn much damage, he can follow up pretty well. Corpus walking around. He's going to take Scuttler. He will get spotted by Rumble's ward, and. That will not likely be a successful guy. Whoops! He stopped the auto about a frame too early and lost some mana in time because of that. All right, and there's an aggressive green ward there to see just where Kez runs around. That's the way you track Evelyn. You ward her camps as best you can. Evelyn, not the biggest friend of killing the Gromps, though, so you might not see her go for that camp that often. It's true. Hate spikes AoE. It's not help her very much with that one. It's interesting, though, how much damage uh, TDK is dealing to that bottom lane turret. Because I compare it to what Nien's done in the top lane, where he's mostly just been farming. There's a very real chance that TDK could get a one turret to zero advantage quite quickly. Maokai and Alistair not doing much to clear this wave. Uh, Kali Troll's not even specking extra points in a sapling toss for better wave clear either. So they're in pretty big danger of losing that turret. Sometimes you see Maokai's go sapling toss when they're trying to hold waves off. Not the case here. All right, so Nian, though, instead is going to play the freezing game. Looks like he may sacrifice that bottom lane turret, but he really wants Seraph to not get gold because though that push is happening, Kali Trolls is farming, and he's got double Thorin's ring, 25 minion kills. 
Seraf cannot really say the same for himself here. So, doing what he can to clear the waves away and the rockets. Explosive charge mostly used on the champions, and it does not damage the turret when it blows off a champion. It must be targeted on the turret itself, yeah. it looks like. So, not getting a crazy amount of damage done now. Yeah, honestly, Emperor should be saving that E for the turret. Because this lane is not necessarily that favorable for them from a farm perspective. Nien is so powerful with his levels over Seraph that he is getting a big gold lead if you're just comparing what Maokai can get at the turret with support help versus the other way around. So TDK need to pressure this turret down and give Seraph a little bit of assistance as soon as possible. Yeah, well, they managed to keep the team on that side of the jungle. Good counter jungling. Kez got some wards done. Kez got some stuff done. And the wraparound does mean it goes down. There's the first turret. Now we've got Nian up in the top lane once again soloing. The freeze was broken, but it's still 60 CS to 18. So Seraph held down for a while, but Rumble has low item requirements and getting solo XP is still plenty good. Nice two from Porpoise. Level only four for him though. And loses the Raptor buff he just got. Yeah. But will he clear the pink ward? Sometimes yes. it's nice for a Raptor. I'm, I'm always mixed when a Raptor buff triggers on a pink ward because I'm like, well, I could have seen this ward anyway if I walked through that brush. Mm -hmm. But you wouldn't always walk through that brush unless the Raptor buff had triggered you. Yeah. So even though it cost him his Raptor buff, he got the pink ward that he may not have checked otherwise. Of course, you should always check that brush. Of course you should. But yeah, expected value-wise, it's definitely positive. Yeah, just like you should always check the pink ward that can get stuck behind your red buff. But no one does. Nope. So if you get a Raptor buff, it tips you out. It's nice. Yeah. People actually throw that one a lot because it always tips them off because of the Raptor buff. <laughs> like that yeah. ward doesn't stay anymore because it keeps triggering. You're like, I know that ward. I put it one. I put one by blue buff. It's actually like right by mid turret. No one ever checks that. Yeah. It'll stay up for like 15 minutes. Very unlikely for a Raptor buff to still be on you by the time you're there as well. Yeah. So I'm giving away my strats. If you play me in solo queue, check that brush. You'll fill my wards. Huh. You'll be waiting in that brush. <laughs> yeah. Just kidding. It was a bait. I played you. The long gone. <laughs> This is why I cast LCS, to prop my solo queue MMR. How's that going for you? Uh, not well. I'm the <laughs> lowest rated of uh, almost all the casters. Great. Look at this. Mid lane has not been tilted. The main thing that we need to pay attention to, obviously, is this turret discrepancy. So TDK killed that turret so early, yeah. and I'm really wondering when Yen is going to match that off, because the longer he stays in that top lane farming, the more objectives TDK can take. Yeah, just like this dragon. And the thing is, the way it's paying off, like the AD carries to all the exact same farm, and Seraph is only down 11 minions under Cali Drolls. Is the turret worth 11 minions? I feel like that answer is no. And Team 8 not making the best of choices in the early game here. Definitely. Even when they went for like the, the, the turret hold, Cali Trolls is actually less experienced than Seraph right now. Like even that's yeah. not giving them an well, It's because they were they were holding CS, but they were helping out with the support to do so. True. So the, the experience was going to be a little different. Now you have to worry about a level 6 Rumble teleporting into any play. Obviously, the Maokai teleporting in would be threat as well, but the Rumble is much scarier at that point. Mm-hmm. Haunting Eyes Rumble, definitely even scarier now. Dragging off the field for a while means he's probably going to be okay. Nian is getting some decent damage down. You can see Seraph getting lower and lower. The Sheen from Nian, he's going to knock this turret down with two more attacks. But he will have to wait for the next wave. There is no jungle to stop this, so Nian should be getting this turret down guaranteed. Seraph will ult the next wave most likely. Ah, uh, yeah, you're right. So just kidding, it won't happen next wave. A lot of more time bot. And maybe Kez will show up top lane and turn that around. I believe he is now spotted. A lot of damage on the Kez. Ulti comes through. They gotta be a bit careful. Go to lit at 300 health. Emperor comes in for Porpoise. He's gonna flash away and stay safe. Oh, Nien. Backdoors it. Yeah. That's actually a pretty smart play because he would have had to. He knows Seraph would have been back for the next wave anyway. Oh. Now he ends up getting the turret. Nien doesn't Stop. bounce this wave. This seems very strange to me. Almost every professional team ever will, will let that wave freeze back into their turret. Dodo. Not six, but he's gonna live. And this means that Seraph gets to freeze. There's no dragon coming up. Like, maybe Maokai can turret die, but Seraph not freezing it. I don't actually understand the thought process. This is why they're not top teams, Frank. Because honestly, I don't see re like legitimate good reasons for why they wouldn't be freezing these things, other than they just want the farm now, and then they want to go do something else. But uh, the, the freezing that we've seen for pretty much all the other top teams all has to do with this wave manipulation, and neither of these teams are trying to take full advantage of it. 
No unfortunate things here. Now, at the very least, though, teammate did manage to equalize that turret game. TDK put their time and effort in getting that dragon on the bottom side of the map, and they got it, to be fair. So uh, that's still an objective gain by them. But Nian did eventually answer back that turret. And even though I mentioned the XP disparity not being there between Kali Trolls and Seraph, Nian was, last I checked, one level above Emperor. So this Corky actually is now, yeah, basically 1.2 levels above. He's just barely 9 versus Emperor being a minion away from 8. Um, so that does manifest there, and teammate do have a high level AD carry. Yeah, and Corky, of all the AD carries you want to be high level, is definitely the one. Especially when you get level 2 up. Ooh. Out in range. Ooh. That hurts. Yeah, he didn't judge it properly. Kali Trolls does have early home guards, though, so maybe expect some home guard flank plays with teleport up as well. But with no flash, that strength of that play is diminished. Nikkei has spotted by a couple of wards here. TDK still playing the poke game. Emperor getting poked back himself. The Q lands from Corky. Golden Glue does not have his blue buff right now. I believe it's going to spawn again in a about a minute or two, and then he'll have that once more. Nian not quite at Trinity Force, but he's not far away. He's about 300 gold having that item in his inventory, and that should happen in time for the next dragon coming up. The first one, you know, a little while back. And if Emperor's not playing the Demolitionist role, then I might like Nian's champion a little bit more than as these team fights unfold. But we set up a very tied game. Gold's the same, only difference being one dragon. Yeah. And if we're thinking from a playmaking potential, uh, teammate would have the better initiation. They have Alistair, Gragas, Varus, and Maokai, who already build home guard with an incentivization on initiation, uh, versus TDK, who, as far as hard CC goes, needs to wait for the fourth auto attack after Brahma applies to pass it. So the amount of initiation is so different for these teams. Yep. A lot of slows for TDK and a lot of damage. It'll be an interesting balance between TDK finding the right fights. Because there's so much damage on TDK that if teammate over engages uh, to just find a 5v5, TDK might be stronger in it. Uh, so therefore, teammate needs to use all these tools to find odd numbered fights and get picks. Absolutely. And I think there's a good chance that a, that a game that looks like TDK winning is going to be a low kill game because they can just play the poke game and, you know, knock down towards knock down dragons. And yeah, as you mentioned, those rare occasions, yeah, we'll see what they turn into. All right, Cali Troll's gonna shove in this top lane. It's really not being answered right now. Seraph not collecting the farm. He's going over just now. So it looks like that'll be just fine. Blue buff steel did work successfully. Ninja managed to grab that there. So Golden Glue out of mana, trying to stack his mana moon as best he can, but forced to recall here. He wouldn't have had to if not for the steel. Dragon up in 45 seconds. Trinity Force is here for Nian. He's recalled in time. He will be in position. Double Sight Stone is in the inventory and fully charged from both Dodo and Porpus. Kez actually getting his blue right now. He's not going to have a recall to have wards again in time for uh, yeah. potential dragon fight. That's true. Uh, he's also pretty low on health, so I'd imagine he's just going back to base and hoping to make it back for Drake. And they're definitely not timing this properly, but that's because he got a little bit manhandled by the blue buff. He ran out of mana while doing that. Uh, and he needs to go back and get his room glaive, it looks like. And at the very least, Smoothie can ward for him. Fully stacked Sight Stone on the Braum here. Ignite and Ulti are up. In fact, pretty much all the tools all are, are available on both sides. The only lack being teammate not having a blue. But they're going to be first to Dragon. Now, they had beaten TSM just a week ago by having actually very good Dragon Control being there first. TSM had bad recall timings, and teammate just said, we have wards, give it up. Mm -hmm. And now they are in position. Seraph would have to teleport in. Seraph does not yet have level 11. That's what he would want. But remember, teammate has the initiation potential on this one, and they actually don't want to trap themselves in a Dragon Pit against a team with superior damage. Very interesting game teammate has to play here. They're going to play for the mid lane right now. Eve is on the flank. Dodo staying on the right-hand side to zone her away. That will happen successfully. But mid lane not taking much damage. The poke still landing. Honestly, That's a Jace lot of poke. Knocked him a bit low. Varus and Corky, and look at that. The Varus Corky poke isn't really landing. The Jace hits that do land do so much damage. Sarah was able to slip push the top lane. He's not getting answered. No one's there. Kali Trolls tried to bully the mid lane around, but it didn't happen. Yeah. So top lane outer went down. The poke that Ninja's landed is turning this into TDK's favor. Ninja. Still full health as well. Got a pretty decent mana pool. Lands Oof. another two-man poke. And Seraph's approaching level 11 more and more. Teammate through their 
bouncing back and forth, not wanting to trap themselves in the dragon pit, has just created the very unfavorable situation for themselves in which maybe they give up the dragon. And it's looking more and more like that. Kez's late recall not getting punished here. Gonna push around Dodo though. And look at that. Jumping in to knock Alistair away. Headbutt says give me some space, but Dragon, at least the ground is controlled by TDK. The ward's still scattered back and forth across these teams. Only two sweepers, only two pink wards for TDK. They can't get rid of all division. Yeah, definitely not. But they have all the waves under control, so not a lot teammate feels like they can do right now. Right, but I mean they had to send Porpoise up top lane to deal with the Rumble. Now it's a non-home guarded teleport that is cancelled. Seraph will still have his to come down with. Yeah. Woo. And Seraph is about one minion away from 11. I actually want to see him knock down a minion wave up there just to make sure he's got rank 2 equalizer. It's literally, like, even Scuttlecraft might almost do it, but teammate actually, uh, for them stopping Dragon, get the, you know, a little bit of chance to push down mid lane, but they gotta be afraid of this Rumble who's roaming down from the top lane. Kelly Trolls has to walk to even have a hope of being in the team fight. And yet again, TDK could always go back there, but because TDK had to go defend mid, now Team A control Dragon, and they're actually gonna knock this down pretty fast. A bunch of recalls came through, TDK recalled back and gave Team A control. Poor recall timing, for sure. I mean, they, they still have the gold lead, but Team A is able to equalize the Dragons. And it's crazy too, because Team A didn't even have a teleport to threaten any of that. Exactly what TDK would have wanted, would have been to come down and trap them in the Dragon Pit, but they did want to buy their items as well, and they just picked a bad time to do so. I don't understand why Seraph walked down, though. He could have kept that lane pushed up, and you just send one guy back at a time, and you can guarantee it's still a 4v4. Wave clear, easy enough. Golden Glue, despite not having a blue buff, was able to stay out on the map the entire time. And he's going to be just okay here. So, small goldly though, still for Team Dragonites. They knocked down that top lane outer turret. They're getting a lot more farm. Seraph now plus 22 over Kali Troll, despite the fact that, team, that teammate tried to freeze him out of the lane for so long in the early game. Seraph's gotten it all back. Yeah. And he is going to be able to buy into some pretty nice items soon as well. The home guard rush is interesting, is maybe to try and just match Cali Trolls a little bit, but Leandri's being done just now. That's a nice Leandri's timing with his level 11. Uh, it would be nice if the Dragon was up to fight over, but maybe they try and force a fight within the jungle of Team 8. Keep in mind, it's still a teleport disadvantage, so a risk for Team 8. There's always a chance. Rumble ends your team fight. Smite's coming through. There's the engage. Rumble's coming in from across the wall. Team 8 stuck in a 4v5. A pretty good equalizer, but Porpoise is going to jump away, and no, the first blood comes through. The rest of the team able to flash out, and oh, just barely. Emperor trades one back. Still, though, first blood the teammate, and Maokai's still pushing. Yeah, TDK force is really hard, but that's the type of force you'd like to see over a dragon right there. Not able to quite close him down enough. It seemed like Seraph uh, put his Rumble ultimate down going vertical on the map where he needed the horizontal one to yeah. stop the retreat from teammate. And then maybe he could have wiped the floor with them, but it is just a one for one with first blood going to teammate and not much really done when all said and done except different teleport timers now between the two teams. All right, so here we go. 1300 gold still the game. Mid lane gonna get fired down that will get chunked out. Emperor, bam, burst them out through part of a menu wave. All three out of turrets now down. TDK's picked them up. Teammate have a little bit of progress on various other turrets around the game, but as far as the current lead goes, 2,000, TDK looking pretty decent. Yeah. TDK will want to try and close on this very small lead. They have, looking at this again, uh, they just rush past the blue buff, hoping the teammate would be distracted with taking it, but then as you can see that rumble ultimate, just with the way the teammate is running away, if that was placed in that corridor, they'd be much, much lower on this one. Amber picks up the kill on the backside, and teammate. Yeah, it looked trapped like... a bit in the team fight. That was interesting too, because that's the team that doesn't have the initiation forcing the fight, yeah. and it was very hard for them to close down and actually get the kills. It was Flash Evelyn, Ult, Flash Brommel. Those were literally their best engaged tools on the team, and it was. Yeah, he slowed him a little bit. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind, slows don't stack in this anymore. So like Equalizer, Brommelty, and uh, Evelyn all compete for the same status effect, and they don't really get slowed down that much Whoa. anymore. And for a rocket jumps away from a headbutt pulverize. Lost his red buff, it looks like. Porpoise stole it away. Yeah, good steal by Porpoise, okay. Yeah, I think Seraph was thinking if they if they escape up towards the base gate, it's the right equalizer, but teammate just walked right towards the turret instead. 
and it ended up not being a good equalizer. I don't know if it was the right choice or not, just what his thought process looked like. Mid lane once again under fire. Her equalizer is back up from cooldown, as is all ults except for Emperors. Nian chunked down to half. Really good Jace poke coming through. A lot of cooldown reduction on Ninja with the Brutalizer. And the loot's Lucidity. Looks like TDK making the call to say, hey, let's knock down top lane. Let's control this side of the jungle. Keep in mind, Kali Trolls does have teleport, though, so he could match the push up here. The rest of the team coming up. Yeah, it's interesting that Kali Trolls has been kind of the attempted demolitionist. Now, kind of one of the slowest split pushers possible. You, you would want him to threaten initiations with Home Guard from base, but he has been the presence in other ways. It is kind of actually working for Team 8, though, if he can knock these turrets down. He tried getting the interior in the top lane, didn't quite get it. Now, at least he'll get the outer in the bottom lane, uh, but he will have to be willing to make that teleport play and stop the siege from TDK. Well, the first, oh man, the first explosive charge knocked that turret down to 60%. Looks like the second one could be the turret itself. Smoothie trying to keep his turrets alive and a nice equalizer gets Nian incredibly low. Dodo pops the ulti on him. Onto the as well. turret. The teleport comes in for Kalidos to buy a bit of time. Doesn't want Ninja though because the two marksmen of teammate are too low to fight. This teleport means nothing. Wow, so at least he gets the reduced teleport cooldown for going to a turret, but very rarely do you see a home guard Maokai make a play by teleporting onto a turret. It, it seems like they were just hoping to defend and dissuade that push because they can trade now one turret for zero and their yep. red buff. Overall, that is still a positive trade for Team 8. All right, so the split push worked out. The TP timer was used successfully enough. Yeah. Team to keep the turret alive is a big deal, but now uh, we have teammate have nearly killed the top lane tier two of TDK. That was an earlier Maokai split push, and TDK have nearly knocked down teammates' top lane tier two. Both these turrets are pretty much one minion wave away from getting knocked down here. Mm -hmm. Both below half. Yeah, 800 health and 600 health. Teammate's the one that is a little bit lower. Oh, and they think about initiation. And Here's the odd number fight. Pulverize, and it was a. Overheated Seraph, who didn't have an ulti anyway, so a nice pick up there. The engage did land. Kelly was able to run. Dodo able to run as well, and more poke from the march. But Emperor wants in. No crit. Oh! Shock oh, that land, man. though. And that's with Dragon up as well. Dodo gets sniped. Someone probably could have blocked for him, but no one wants to walk in front of an empowered shock blast. He didn't expect that one to land, it looks like. So interesting choice here. Seraph will have teleport up, so delaying these next six seconds means TDK can guarantee five members. All in all, teammate will not challenge. Dragon 2 does go over to Kez. Doesn't even have to smite it. And teammate once again on the back foot, down a thousand and a half gold, down a dragon. Yeah, and this game has started out fairly slow, Freak. I think we are expecting a very long game as well. TDK has played the longest games in the LCS. Team 8 close behind them. TDK average is around 43 minutes. Team 8, 40 minutes plus. Uh, and w if the pace of this is any indication, four kills, 24 minutes in. And seemingly, one of the reasons these teams play long games is they're not good at forcing their advantages, right? Cali Trolls, he's had home guard for forever now, but he hasn't forced any home guard TP plays. Seraph has teleported in, but he could not trap anyone off with his equalizer. So there could be a lot of just extension of this game because they're not playing as crisply as a top team. Yeah, very true. So capitalizing on your advantage is definitely a very big deal here. Either of these teams could absolutely win this game. And in fact, both teams would really, really like to. A loss means you're guaranteed to not get something. If teammate lose, they are guaranteed to not make playoffs. If TDK lose, they are guaranteed to be relegated at the end of the split. As soon as they had joined the LCS, they are just as quickly out. Winning keeps those hopes alive, and we'll see if that happens. Pushing on in, 1,400 gold lead. Teammate once again looking to knock this turret down. They have to give some respect to the counter engage yeah. of TDK, but keep in mind that is a very soft engage. And oh my God, Emperor, too far up, gets caught out. Corpus finds the team. They go in and knock down Seraph. A terrible equalizer and a double kill for Nian. Mid lane outer goes down as well. Oh, and that's exactly the initiation the teammate wants to accomplish. They had Dodo off on the side to prevent Kez from coming in. And then Golden Glue found another nice ultimate. This is the time the teammate can choose which team fights to fight, and they get the pick. Very, very massive. That's the second kill in a row, I believe, that teammate got because Golden Glue landed an ulti. And in fact, two of those last three were onto Seraph himself. So 
very, very nice stuff here, teammate. Finally able to get the gold back in their favor. Mid lane tier two, of course, died during that push as well. And yet again, Nian is the beneficiary of these games. He's up with the most kills and the most farm. Yeah, I mean, just looking here, Emperor and Seraph had trapped themselves against the turret, so there's no juking that could happen. It was really smart of Golden Glue to recognize that position on the map of where a skill shot could not be dodged and land the tendrils onto a couple people there. Then they just dive in with their chain CC afterwards. Beautiful stuff here, man. We're sitting on now Team 8 with the lead and feeling good. Ninja with the blue buff, but Golden Glue on this Varus, a much better poke champion as far as poke itself is concerned than Jace. Ninja's got other strength on that champion, but can't poke quite as well as Varus. So, Golden Glue able to push him around the map and no lifesteal really to speak of on this Jace means he's got to recall yeah. and home guard and head somewhere else. We're gonna see a lot of home guards yeah. in this high poke, low sustain game. Another thing that's kind of interesting on this patch is with all the Rumbles wanting to rush Leandries, it is heavily delaying them almost ever getting a Zoni's Hourglass. Right? The olden days, you'd see the Sork Shoes and the Haunting Guys, or if you're like Seraph and worried about CC, the Mercury Treads and the Haunting Guys. But then you'd almost always see a Zonies as the next item right away. And it allowed the Rumble to play more aggressively, get in the front line, and pull off the Zonies Flame Spitter play. But now with Leandri's Rush, he wants to finish the Rylize probably to get the, the synergy going between those two items. Yep. And he's going to be never getting the Zonies, but that might be what he needs. Well, we're going to see him jump right now to Kali Once again, Seraph overheats without ulting in, but the front line is here. Dodo lands the stun, knocks back TDK, but they're right back into the chase. A good counter engage though with the Varus ulti. Dodo able to walk back, and the roots are going to mean just enough. Dodo with a sliver of health. I think literally like five off the Shock Blast walks away. And honestly, Another underwhelming equalizer by Seraph. That was a haphazard initiation by teammate. Didn't really pick the right target to go onto, and it was totally open to a counterattack, but TDK doesn't get any kills. And now another teleport onto a turret. He's gonna need backup. He's there by himself, chunked incredibly low. 800 health left on Kelly Jules, pulls a summoner heal in, and Dodo, now first running without the ulti kill, goes to Emperor, the resets are in. If Emperor is gonna jump forward, it would be about now. But he knocks down Porpoise, gets the jump in, goes right backwards. Poked out, but it's still two more kills picked up for TDK and the turret. Yeah, that's Tristana, the demolitionist, takes down those turrets so fast. And Cali Trolls lost the defense of his turret very quickly after teleporting in. Uh, he, he wanted to teleport in right away to save so his teleport wouldn't get canceled by the turret going down. But in doing so, he arrived well before the rest of his team. This is honestly a turret the teammate should have just called the quits on and said, see you later, because now they don't have a clean initiation onto TDK, and they are open to the counterattack. Emperor and Ninja free hitting on the backside. Yeah. Shot blast to finish. And Kalyazel was actually still down for about four seconds when he TP'd in. The ulti came up partway through that fight. Taking 20% less damage and then being able to burst someone for about 400, maybe maybe could have made a very big difference in that fight when you layer that with some Varus arrows and Corky rockets. So, unfortunate there for Kali Trolls. I think he used it to farm a little bit earlier and punished for that cooldown still being down. More poke onto Ninja. Yomu's Ghost Blade done now on this Varus. On the not, sorry, it's Jace. I, yeah, I misspoke. There was a Varus arrow came by and I got confused. I mean, they build the same items. Yeah. So, snap at anyone. Wondering if Ninja's gonna close with an Infinity Edge or a Bloodthirster. It'll be an interesting choice because Infinity Edge, a lot of people say is the correct item for Jace. And if anyone ever gets close to you, you can get some amazing hypercharged crits on them since your three quick auto attacks do 110% damage. That amplifies with the Infinity Edge crit, but they're against Poke, so the Bloodthirster is greatly needed for the sustain. Yeah, the choice is going to be interesting. I'm actually a little bit surprised he finished the Yomus before even getting as much as a Vamp Scepter here. Yeah, which would make you think he wants Infinity Edge. Yeah, true. He wants the damage build. Nian chunked down below a 1,000 health here. Dragon is alive, keep in mind, with both these teams very close in gold. It's more about how they position and what they can gain before it starts. Good poke from Golden Glue. This Varus, 2, 0, and 3. He's started almost all the fights they've wanted. He's got 100% kill participation. And he's only down 60 CS. Yeah, he's but, getting destroyed farm wise, but they're giving it so much to Nian that it's... It's true. So much of this area. game has just been a poke battle in the mid lane that these CS numbers are fairly dishonest to who is winning or losing each lane. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really just been everyone grouped, and it's a conscious choice here to get Nian more and more fun. 
Yeah, it's, it's like a small lead overall to TDK if you count it all up, but it means that Dragon still goes to Team 8. They just snuck it in with the AD carry and jungler. TDK would rather push the top lane. They chose to do this instead of fighting for Dragon. Seraph is up here prepping the wave, and here comes the team to knock it down. Yeah, this is the one that was sitting on 600 health oh so long ago. Please finish it. There, yeah, I mean, they wanted to make sure they grabbed the red buff and then played defensively. TDK thought they had enough damage. They were right. But that means they left mid lane open. Nian gets to push that one in. That will again force a response. Yeah. I want to see more aggression out of Team 8 with their ability to start fights, especially with the Maokai to do home guard teleports, because if they're waiting and sitting back, I feel like for the Jace to power up to get max items, I'd be very worried about forcing those late game team fights if you are Team 8. Mm -hmm. Especially since they haven't been able to control the Dragon well. Home guard flanks with the Maokai to get picks. One of the main ways they would be able to theoretically pull ahead of this game. Yeah, and we've actually seen that happen, right? Team 8 have done a good job of getting home guard flanks and getting flash varus ultis and whatnot. Honestly, TDK feels like a team that could really benefit from just playing around the middle of the map and then just running to a random turret on the side lanes. They've got a Tristan and they've got a Jace. They are probably two of the best, I think maybe like literally the two best demolitionists in League of Legends. There's a good chance those are those two right there. So if you ever get in a turret fight, it goes TDK's way, absolutely. And even Seraph can just hold you to defend a wave. So uh, splitting turret trades, I think, actually tends to go TDK's way. It's something that teammate actually has to keep in mind if they ever try to make a choice. An aggressive one is if they post up on a turret that can sometimes be very easily answered by a cross map play. Yeah, and one of the poke discrepancies we're seeing here pretty heavily is Smoothie's blocking a lot of stuff with Braum. Yeah. And there is no thing to equalize that on the side of Team 8. So even though they have the Varus Corky and some nice theoretical poke champions, Team 8 is winning the poke battles, which even more forces Team 8 into finding quick, decisive initiations. Because if they dance around and wait for a fight, they're probably going to get poked off. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And so the, the matter is, you know, the poke land, the poke getting defended, the poke making a meaningful enough impact right now. Top lane getting pushed in by Nien. Teammates still trying to play the map as openly as they can. Both top laners have teleport, but no one's in the bottom side of the map right there. No one's getting that extra wave of experience in gold. And we can see the, the wave clear potential, right? Top lane gonna get cleared out by Rumble, which means teammate gonna have a bit of a hard time pushing any farther, but TDK able to knock down mid with relative ease. Yeah, that's... When the wave shows up. We're in a bit of an awkward situation. Ninja and Kez were not as far up as the turret killers were. Oh yeah, and the wave gets cut off again. So that mid lane pressure doesn't actually happen at all. And they pulled the rest of the team. They left Seraph alone up there who had ulti to clear the wave. There's even a window now with no equalizer to try to start a fight. Yeah, we heard how Team 8 was talking a little bit before the game about how TDK is out of sync since the new members. That was a perfect example of that. Now Team 8, this is a dangerous play if they get spotted out. Also because Emperor is off on a split push, so TDK wants to stall, but it's hard because they have no rubble up. This could be a Baron for Team 8. They headbutted him out, the Baron cost. gets picked up. Really nicely done. Team 8 look for the objective, and they get that one. Explosive Cast pulls the team in. They catch out Smoothie. That's a kill picked up, but the Inhibitor nearly dead. Kez does not get away from the Rockets, and the end grabs that kill. So Inhibitor in shambles, but a 5v3 with a Baron buff for Team 8 to answer. Yeah, I mean, that's really what Team 8 was trading. It's an Inhibitor for this new Empowered Baron buff, and can they get an inhibitor of their own. That is now two death timers on 28 to 30 seconds, and they're just going to end up recalling. Looks like no one was around to help the end. I guess afraid of the respawns, but with Seraph not having ulti, and Kez and Smoothie dead for long enough, I'm not sure why that team didn't just join in on that left side of the map, but that's the choice that Team 8 made, and they will once again yeah. play it slowly. And it, we have to reemphasize how much is on the line for these teams, right? TDK needs to win out to avoid auto relegation. If Team 8 wins out, they still have a chance at playoffs, but mainly they're looking for that seventh seed and Cloud9 looking very competitive for that spot. So for all the sloppiness you see in this game, for the closeness, the Dragons being, being even as well, there's a lot of pressure on these guys and that could very well be impacting their level of play here. Either way, it's still anyone's game. A Baron for inhibitor trade, you could argue that back throughout time and say whether it's been worth it. Different philosophies across the board. Mm -hmm. The fact that it was pretty much an even trade just means the teammate now needs to devote time to that bottom wave, and it delays the game more than anything else. The team with Baron has to devote time to clearing the minion wave, therefore the other team gets time to farm. And it ends up being kind of an equalized goal trade, unless 
teammate could somehow find a fight and use those empowered minions to get an inhibitor of their own. See if they can make that happen then, because right now the siege isn't happening. Seraph's ulti is up to clear if he needs it, and right now Ninja and Emperor are able to knock these down pretty cleanly. The thing is, Tristana is actually a pretty good defensive wave clear if you can't stop her from auto-attacking. Explosive charge and auto-attack basically clears the back line on its own, and you can see teammate not even trying to pressure. They sent more than just Calicrol's bot lane. They're not stopping Emperor from clearing these out. They're not yeah. even poking. I mean, Calicrol doesn't do that good of a job killing super minions uh, as a full tank Maokai. True. It's really just one of these, these game-stalling things, and TDK is actually trying to use that to their advantage here. Uh, they already chipped away at that mid-inner turret before, and maybe they're just trying to get the position so they can get some wards and notice teammate walking in for our next dragon. This will be dragon number three for each of these teams. They've both been picked up sort of off oh, of the interesting Emperor. choice. The Emperor really low on health. Kelly Trolls wants him and gets knocked back into the team. Golden Glue stuck on an equalizer, forced to flash away. He is no longer in this battle. Call to 4v5. Emperor versus Kelly Trolls. They can't quite hit him. He jumps away to safe, but here comes the cleanup as Golden Glue rejoins the battle. And it's a cleanup crew for Team 8. Four kills picked up for one. Whoa, and it was all about Emperor getting caught at the very start of that fight. Cali Trolls, without necessarily the backup of his team, caught someone who didn't have the backup of their team. And this very strange team fight opens up. Now maybe a window for TDK to knock down an inhibitor, even though their Baron buff has expired. Yeah, teammate with the plenty of time. Kez could not possibly hope to defend all of this, even with his Blasting Smite. It shouldn't happen here. So a full health inhibitor turret should be getting dropped dangerously low. The Cannonman is there. Dragon number three picked up. Porpoise will recall. He feels safe just to wait for his team to knock us down by themselves. A big wave top lane will be answered and cleaned up. And there is the inhibitor, Jap. 38 minutes in. Teammate, have some inroads. TDK might look to chase this. They have some pretty deep wards that Seraph could teleport in from behind if they want to cut them off. Plus, they know Teammate had to send base they defenders. The ward. Here comes Seraph. Cali Trolls could match with a teleport after he clears the wave. He's down to half. Seraph walks right on in, gets rooted up into place. Here comes Kelly Trolls as well, but they do not have a Gragas. And it's going to be enough to get that team out. The TP threat enough to disengage TDK. Good disengage right there. So big time fight by teammate. They need to manage their waves. They didn't lose any turrets. They did pick up the CS and they picked up the third dragon. All very positive things for them. They're not in position to win the game yet, but they're definitely on the right road. Now TDK for... Two of the last three have stolen away teammates. Red buff up there. Emperor, if he can keep himself safe, he can do a lot to apply those red buff slows and damage and be a good backline marksman. Jada does look like we will be seeing the lifesteal build from Ninja, so yeah, none of the uh, real crazy AD carry DPS coming out from him. Just wait for the sixth item, man. Bloodthirster and Finley Edge. Okay. I'd like to see it. I don't think it would happen. Oh, Bloodthirster already done for, for this Varus here. Golden Glue for now holding onto a pink ward. Maybe he'll go Infinity Edge. You see that fight one more time? Emperor. Yeah. Yeah, very split up as they take a pink ward down. Super chaotic start. Emperor, also because Golden Glue added with the start of that poke, it, it's honestly just total chaos. Seraph goes chasing a kill off on one side, but he's not able to finish off Golden Glue, and that's actually very critical as we come back into this fight because Golden Glue then can snipe Emperor on the back side of this as the rest of teammate kind of runs through because it started with such a nice pick on an Emperor. It was one team with an AD carry running away and another team with an AD carry on the offensive. And the offensive AD carry was able to win. Nian's yeah. been free farming this whole game, all right. farm devoted for him, and he got to free hit in that fight. Huge swing. He's 100 CS over his next teammate. Like, this guy has got all the money. Actual gold twice. he's 2,000 above Golden Blue, 3,000 above Ooh, Kali. Great equalizer this time, though. Beautiful, absolutely. A couple of shields used on Golden Blue will keep him alive, but yet again, he might be out of this fight. And Ninja is one poke away from killing him. Guess the location, but Golden Blue's already run away. Wave should be cleared cleanly enough. No, we get a bit of damage coming through, but careful, Porpus taking some damage. And yes, this turret will fall indeed. Well done, TDK, to knock that one out. Yep, Rumble Ultimate for a turret is the basic trade right there. Man, still a very close game in, in pretty much all the objective ways. And the scaling of these teams is also fairly similar, right? The Jace versus the Bears, the Corky versus the Tristana, even the Maokai versus the Rumble. Yeah, very true. And the mid laners serve incredibly similar purposes. And the teams all play long games. Yep, and the names both start with team. So much synergy Just here. So many things. 
can't even come up with anything else to say about this, but honestly, uh, both any carries are Yordles. Really? Yeah. That's Tristana true. and Corky. Yeah. Cool. yeah. All right. Yeah. The jungles are different genders. Such a game changer. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay, but you know what? Baron's back on the field, though. Teammate got the last one. They traded their bottom inhibitor for it, essentially, but it worked out. And now sitting on a 3,000 gold lead, their biggest lead of the game. They're looking to maybe get Baron number two here. Look for the flash. The can't get, but the knockback comes through. However, no kills picked up as a result. Ninja able to cleanse and run, run, run away. Golden Blue still has the ulti. No flash for Porpoise, though, so his engage tool is gone. Flash is up for Dodo, though, so maybe he can make that happen. But his Righteous Glory is on cooldown, so is Kali Troll. So those engage tools also went down. Yeah, now you don't need all the engage tools if you can make them walk at the, you. The instant they got hit by a Scrying Orb, they started Baron instead of falling out of the pit. So they are really forcing something big here. Smoothie very low. Have HP in the Peel back line, a lot of roots. Ninja the caught up that has Flash, uses it. Equalizer chunks the bottom line. Golden Blue running away, caught up by Seraph. He's gonna still knock down Ninja first, trade it back, and Kez is on the run. It's still a one for one. Smoothie though caught up, looks to be an easy kill. Seraph looking for more people to kill though. Nian on the backside, half HP. Still getting hit up, forced the Valkyrie out. Kez and Emperor looking for more. Oh. The Flash from Kali Trolls just barely keeps him up. The Pulverize Hunter. Dodo is a very angry cow. Emperor cannot find the target. Seraph can, though, try to knock down Alistair. Get some Kez now on the chase. But Nienna's already knocked down Smoothie. He rejoins the fight. Kez is low. So is Seraph. TP re-engaged for Kali Trolls. Means a bad thing for TDK. Kez rooted up. Knocked down. An ace for teammate. What a crazy fight. And Kali Trolls, because he escaped with just a sliver of health, finally uses that home guard teleport to the best of its ability. And now teammate can probably go for a Baron, but will they even trade this for an inhibitor? There's so many, there's two cannon minions. They're gonna trade Baron for an inhibitor again. Oh, this time around, Even after an a ace. lot of time because teammate have a bunch of waves, both mid and top, and they've got 30 seconds on most of the respawns. It's only Ninja alive. Teleports down, Kali Trolls will walk top lane. And Ninja actually will just barely keep the mid inhibitor afloat. So that one will not die to minions. For top now. lane turret. Very, very low. Actually, that might die to the wave itself. It's getting chunked. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that is another big wave trying to kill that turret. Freak this game. It is. The, uh... We've had two crazy games. We had three quick games to start the day, mm -hmm. and now we're probably going to get back to back 50 minute thrillers down the stretch. All right, so fourth dragon yeah. upcoming for teammate. Start the five dragon time. I think Team 8 is one of the teams in North America who achieved five dragons but still lost. Or they either had the opponent get five dragons and won. One of the t no, enemy got five dragons against Team 8. Team 8 was able to win. Yeah. So they know all well that five dragons is not a catch-all for victory, especially in close games that go very late. Yeah. Do you remember the stat, Jack? There have been like six dragon five losses in professional play this split. Yes. I know you did the math. This split across the LMS, LCK, EU, and NALCS. Yeah. The record's like 50 and six or something like that. It's, uh, I don't have it exactly with you, but it's something like 36 and four or 37 and four. Definitely. Very indicative of winning. But if, yeah. you're, if you're going to get an upset, uh, a lot of the times it's going to be in the much longer games where items are more equalized. Uh, the opponent has also got one dragon or so and the kills are close, but there's, I haven't finished my research, so I don't want to talk about it yet. <laughs> Sorry, chat. I brought the spoiler up, but still, it's teammate looking maybe pretty happy. Actually, a good equalizer. Buys a lot of time, but Kez in the flank gets evaporated. He went in too soon, and the teammate frontline holds steady. Ninja trapped up, getting shut down pretty hard. A two for one so far as Kelly Trolls did die, but it's still too big of a frontline. Seraph, one of the last remaining members, a triple kill for Nien, now in a duel, Ooh. but gets tripped by Emperor. The big shutdown means Emperor Emperor keeps his team's hopes alive. Teammate was so close to locking TDK into auto relegation, but Emperor just smacks Nian. And now those super minions are doing it. some work in the base of Teammate as well. Emperor just needs to delay the recalls wow. for those minions to do stuff. One of the Nexus turrets has already died. He wanted some more cleanups, but he's not going to get any more than that. Golden Glue playing the defense in his base. A 6,000 gold lead, but. There's always a risk that your structures die and you lose the game when you didn't mean to. Still, two inhibitors down is a good thing for teammate here that should allow them to hold map control for a very long time. And maybe set up that dragon. Jeez. 
More craziness. Even more craziness. So it's been two Barons to teammate. That inhibitor has been cycled down a few times. But now the teammate has double inhibitors. It's going to be a larger thing. Teammate was so close to finding the game win right here. Another equalizer comes down. They were trying to time it with the flank, but it really doesn't land on many people of teammate. Uh, at that point, Porpoise and the tank line of teammate is very strong at being in there. They close down on pretty much everything. It's just Emperor who has been free hitting on this time, and yet he tries to duel him. But yeah, that was. Oh, just I think a couple of big crits. I, I don't think the last deck was great. I think it was Explosive Charge and a different champion blew up near him. Oh, really? I think. I, I I didn't track it closely, but I think the last attack wasn't a crit. It was Explosive Charge on, I think, Alistair. Help you. And I was told yes. Corky walked into an Explosive Charge from Alistair to get away from Tristana. That'll do it. Yep. 10 and 1, yet all the farm that he has been able to put into himself with his shot calling has been beneficial. He almost closed the game right there. Yeah. Monstrous game from him. Teammate still in strong positions with two inhibitors down. This is almost a perfect scenario because them having a down inhibitor doesn't necessarily matter since the lane they are pushing is convenient with their goal. So it's basically the same near impossible defense of TDK trying to stop two waves of super minions while defending your third inhibitor. Yeah, one of the best ones to defend those minion waves would be Emperor on this Tristana, so at least there's the chance for it, but Still very, very difficult. The tanks stacking armor. Thornmail, Frozen Heart, Randu, and Zoman Ninja Tabby for Kali Trolls. Good luck getting through the 430 armor Maokai, but the Equalizer might help this one. Kaz the front line. They got Golden Glue. That's a big one. Porpoise running away with explosive charge on him. Smoothie putting the shield up the front line is not going down. Kali Trolls knocked back in the front line, holding up pretty nicely. But there's a big four man pulverize from Dota, but there is zero follow up, which means Dota's on the wrong place. And this one gets picked up. Maybe it's the comeback win here. TDK knock up two kills. Red buff on Emperor. The crowd chanting oh, for him. The flash up. auto. It slows down the End. Here comes Kez, and that's going to be nothing to do for Cali Trolls. He does trade back, though, as Smoothie loses his life. Keep in mind, mid and top still have Super Minions mulling into the base. They could kill the Nexus by themselves, so TDK has to respond, and they will send uh, Seraph to do that. Yeah, this is so intense. Nien is actually attempting a hero oh. mission on the backside. There are really long death timers 50 minutes in. This is and a there's, one. there's only one Nexus turret for Team 8, so these three can definitely push through Porpoise if they knew that Corky wasn't there. But because of the threat, it's just going to be the inhibitor. Kez has 226 armor. He could have definitely tanked the Nexus turret. Chooses not to, though, and they will play a well, safe game. Yeah, Nien was going to be back. Of course, as of course. Well, so it would have been a difficult team fight. Just speak to the play that TDK just made there. Uh, it is the only play they have in that situation, because if they allow the siege to begin on that bottom tier turret, the super minions would arrive, and they'd eventually have to pull someone off and lose a 4v5. So basically, teammate uh, was not successfully able to control their flanks, and that's why they got jumped on by Kez uh, right at the start of that fight. Golden Glue went down, and that's how yeah. this game continues. Golden Glue went down with Flash up, but he's got a Banshee's Veil now for himself to keep that in a slightly better spot. We can see that fight one more time. They've got so many pink wards. Double pink wards because they're so worried about the flank, but the ward that is approached from is even farther back, and then Kez is like, Flashes. screw your flanks, I'm gonna flash over you. Oh. At Man. Teammate tried their best to control yeah. those flanks. Yeah, they did. But there was such a deep ward for the home guard teleport, an unexpected ward that ends up allowing Rumble to flank position. Um, from there on, I mean, without the damage from Golden Blue, it's just really difficult for them to stay in. And oh, oh my god, my god. And it starts caught. with the Emperor dying, but a beautiful equalizer buys a lot of time and a lot of damage. But Smoothie will follow his lane mate down. And oh man, a body slam flash in the pickup. Ninja goes down, the inhibitors actually have respawned, so it will take a little bit of time for Team 8 to make this happen, but 2v5, good luck, TDK. Yeah, and that should be game. Sorry that we weren't, we're in a replay when that happened, but things happen in LCS all the time. Team 8, they will have minion waves. There are three dead, no wave clears here. This looks like Team 8 taking the game. Seraph caught up, pops the Zonias. Kez still running around, looks for a golden glue, but can't possibly do enough for himself. That's gonna be the ace. You know what, they don't need the ace, they just need the Nexus. Kaz last man alive, teammate keep the playoff hopes up in 51 minutes. TDK are locked into 10th place. They will be swapping place with the number one challenger team at the end of the year. Wow. What a bloodbath that was. 26 kills to 12. A very unfortunate 
but somehow fitting in for TDK in a 50-minute game with a pick on the 80 carry to end the game. Nian, incredibly powerful this entire time, making sure the farm stayed on him. 416 CS, 11 and 1. When teammate wins, Nian is usually really, really powerful. Yeah. And that is true once again, as they technically keep their playoff hopes alive. All right, well, teammate, their only chance is to win their next three against Gravity, Liquid, Counter Logic Gaming. Of course, that'll be difficult. Team Solomid has to go 0 and 3. Then they'll have a tiebreaker. That's that's the only possibility. Otherwise, though, only three games to play, and teammate sits one game above Cloud9, and I believe two games above enemy esports. So this is looking maybe a bit hopeful for teammate here if they want to keep that seventh place spot. It's where they ended last split. They would have hoped to do a little bit better. Unfortunately, that didn't happen, but. Yeah, it's been a. They can try again for the next time as the team transitions, right? New mid laner, new AD carry. Yeah, Kelly Carlson said he'll be retiring at the end of the year as well. So, you know, a roster still to change, but we'll, maybe we'll see growth. Yeah, very trying splits for both of these teams. Seraph is second stint in the LCS. Unfortunate ending. There was that glimmer of hope when TDK took down Team Dignitas, but. Now they are locked in to that 10th place seed. Ninja and Emperor could not arrive halfway through the season to save the day. Because no. it takes time for teams to gel. I mean, of Team course. 8, they have had a much more difficult split than they even had the first time around. But as the split has progressed, you can tell they're getting used to having the end. They're getting used to Golden Blue in the mid lane, and they are improving as a team. Looking at their second half of the split here, they're actually four and two in those games. Now, of course, they have Gravity, Liquid, and CLG left to go, but they're